The Dream Groom, Texas Titan Romances, written by Taylor Hart, narrated by James Foey. Chapter One It was the best of times, it was the worst of times, thought Scar Walker as he pulled himself out of the ocean water. He'd surfed all morning and it felt good, dang good. He hadn't been back to San Diego in over two years. He certainly hadn't surfed to Coronado Island since high school. Being back in San Diego held mixed blessings for him. Yesterday, he'd been in a series of long meetings with the contractors, the architects, and the project manager for his Kincaid-funded Sparring for Vets project. It was a dream for Scar to be able to make his idea a reality and he loved being in charge of it. Unfortunately, the staff he'd found in San Diego didn't quite share his vision yet. Scar had kept trying to make it clear it wasn't just a regular gym. This gym would be a hangout for military vets, of which San Diego had a lot. There were many guys who needed somewhere they could go to spar and chill, and they needed a different atmosphere than they would find in most gyms. The architect did have a good idea to put a juice bar and a coffee shop in it. At first, Scar had balked at the idea. He didn't want the vets to feel like they had to buy something if they came in. After talking to Anthony Kincaid, his friend from Texas and the gym's main financial backer, they'd decided to offer free coffee, with other items for sale if the guys wanted fancier stuff. The money could go to paying vets to work there. Yes, that sounded like a great solution to Scar. Judging up the beach, he looked over at the U.S. Naval Base, where the government did BUDS training, and thought of the six years he'd spent as a SEAL. They were the best years of his life, and he missed them. He grunted and rubbed his left shoulder, thinking that the bullet wound was more than an injury. It symbolized the end of being a SEAL. After the injury, he'd been given the boot, they had all but said, thank you for your service to our country, now go figure out your own dang life. He lay back into the sand, feeling the rising sun start to heat his bodysuit. Surfing had been a solace for him his whole life. Getting up early and surfing the public beaches had been his tonic for being poor, for a mother who'd left them and then died of cancer, and for a father who'd turned violent when drunk. He reflected on his current circumstances. After being a SEAL, if he hadn't been able to join the Titans practice team two years ago, he didn't know what he would be doing with his life. His brother had always wanted him to come home and help with the tour company. No way. Never gonna happen. Too much family in his life was not something he could handle. His thoughts drifted to his brother, who lived roughly 20 minutes away in Carlsbad. Scar would be seeing him for breakfast. They hadn't parted on the best of terms after their father's funeral two years ago. Sitting up and shaking himself back to the present, he stood and stripped off the rubber suit. Staying in it too long after surfing was death to a newbie's skin. He reached for the gallon-sized carton full of fresh water he'd brought with him and chugged it, then poured the remaining water on his head, down his arms, and over his whole body. He gathered up his board, put his suit over his arm, and slipped on his flip-flops. He trudged back to the beat-up 1969 Mustang he'd pulled out of the storage unit. His father had loved this car. Scar sighed and stopped short of the rack on the back, slipping the board in it. Without caring who was around, he began stripping down to nothing. The beach was pretty empty at the moment anyway. He took out another gallon of water and drenched himself. He put on a different pair of pants and a t-shirt. There was a delicious bacon, eggs, and waffle place nearby. After dressing, Scar got the old car fired up and eased his way through the streets, taking his time. With the sun just barely up, it was perfect, bringing back memories of hanging out with his brother on the beach. Bonfires and volleyball, it had been fun. Then he remembered joining the Navy, 
and his brother telling him he would hate him for the rest of his life. His brother had pretty much kept that promise. At their father's funeral, Scar had hoped they could mend things, but his brother had still been angry that he'd left him all those years ago. Scar roared into the little lot of an old mom-and-pop diner and shut off the car. His stomach growled and he couldn't remember the last time he'd eaten. As he strode in, he noticed the place was busy. The ambiance wasn't stellar. The door stuck when he pushed it open, and there were clear signs that bacon grease was constantly cleaned off the walls, off of everything. But it smelled heavenly. That, combined with the maple syrup, made any visitor ignore the possible health code violations, which were as prevalent as the aroma of bacon. Sitting at one of the tables, he closed his eyes and waited to be served, going through each discernible scent in his brain. The coffee was strong and poignant. The waffles and syrup were sweet and crisp. Ah, the taste would be perfect. The bacon was always crunchy and cooked exactly how he liked it. The eggs never disappointed, fluffy and seasoned just right with salt and pepper. No runniness about them. Scar hated runny eggs. Brandon? Scar opened his eyes and felt the annoyance from two years ago descend upon him. His brother refused to call him anything but his real name. He nodded and replied in a formal, clipped tone. Stephen. His brother sat, flaring his nostrils. Glad you finally left a note after Dad's been dead, what, two years? Great, they were starting the fight right off. Scar didn't put any gasoline on the already ignited flame. His brother was shorter by two inches, but he was built. Even though he was younger and they'd once been best friends, Stephen never listened or valued anything Scar said anymore. What do you have to say for yourself? Already Scar regretted leaving that note yesterday. This was clearly a mistake. His brother narrowed his eyes before turning to the menu, which consisted of one laminated page. Let's just order. We're already here and I wanted to see you anyway. This took Scar by surprise. Why? He heard the pop of a pen top, and his eyes flitted to the waitress. He did a double take. She had fire red hair and bright green eyes. She was beautiful, and Scar had been around quite a few beautiful women. What can I get you? She asked without preamble. Unable to stop himself, he flashed a smile. Wow, a woman who gets straight to business. I like that. Her eyes met his, and she glared at him before turning to his brother. What would you like? Without missing a beat, Stephen rattled off his order. Eggs scrambled, toast, wheat, bacon, water. He shot Scar a superior look, then picked up the menu and put it in the holder on the side of the table. Thank you. Her eyes swung back to Scar. She looked bored already. What would you like? Coffee, black, bacon, greasy like a pig's backside. He laughed at his own stupid joke, uncomfortably aware of his brother's gaze. Eggs, light, waffles, fluffy like a cloud, the maple syrup, smooth like... She rolled her eyes. Scar shifted a bit in his seat. His brother didn't find him funny, and he didn't know what he'd done to tick the waitress off already. He flashed her his best smile, the one he'd practiced in the mirror to use on the media, though he would never admit it to anyone. It was the one he would use if he were ever to accept an award or be recognized for saving the team from failure. With a beautiful woman serving me, what more could a man want? Scowling, she didn't write, but simply surveyed him. Listen, soldier. You may be looking for a good time, but you can stop looking here. There were lots of vets around these parts. She was obviously hit on by them quite a bit but he wouldn't let her shut him down in front of his brother. Sweetheart, I was a soldier, but believe me, you wouldn't be my idea of a good time. She stuck her chin in the air. Well then, we're agreed. With that, she slipped away. A slow rumble of laughter sounded from across the table, and his brother wiped at his eyes, grinning like the Cheshire cat. 
Man, I'm glad to see you still haven't lost your charm. Scar cursed at him, regretting this meeting more and more. His brother just laughed harder. The waitress hurried back over to put a glass of water and a coffee on the table, not meeting their eyes. Thank you, Stephen said. Scar just watched her rush off to bus another table. She grabbed two glasses and a stack of four plates before heading to the back and disappearing behind the swinging doors. He hated to admit the woman was attractive, and maybe her pissed off attitude was too. Yeah, Scar could appreciate the allure of a feisty woman. Turning his attention to the other customers, he saw some obvious tourists tapping away at their phones. They must have found a local's favorite and wanted to give the place a try. Through the front window, he could see heavy machinery lounging, ready for construction. Maybe they would give this place a facelift and try to pretty it up. It made him sad to think about it. Why did things need a facelift to be prettied up? He just liked them real, the way they were. It was stupid how many press people asked him about the scar that went from the top of his left eye, down his face to the bottom of his left cheek. What had happened? They wondered out loud. Sometimes he would make something up. Other times he would tell them to mind their own business. He clutched a fork and started fishing ice out of his coffee. So how long are you here for? His brother asked, breaking the silence. Focusing on Stephen, Scar lazily twirled the fork in his hand, still scanning people walking in the diner. He'd been trained to be aware of his surroundings. It was a habit he was unable to break. Three weeks, four tops. I'm working on a project to help military vets. Really? Stephen crossed his arms, looking irked. So you're not here to see me at all? You're just here for some pipe dream as usual. It stung, his brother bringing up the fact that they hadn't seen each other. Give him an enemy to take down, a ball to get down the field. But don't make him do this. Why had he left that note for his brother yesterday? I wanted to see you, idiot, or you wouldn't be here. The words came out rougher than he meant them. Or had they? Okay, maybe he did mean them that way. I don't know, Scar, Stephen said the nickname with an edge to his voice. We have crap we've needed to figure out since Dad died, but you, he gestured sharply, left me to figure out the business all alone. Scar's heart rate spiked. I had an attorney draw papers and send them to you, giving you the whole company, but you never signed them and sent them back. Stephen rolled his eyes, lifting a hand with a dismissive wave. Whatever. And then, since you weren't saving the world as a Navy SEAL and trying to get yourself killed, you decided to go and join the Titans practice team. When are you going to realize it's not cool to go get the crap pounded out of you every second? Didn't your injury in that godforsaken place teach you anything? Scar took a minute to evaluate Stephen. Was he really this upset about Scar's well-being? That would be a change. Instantly, he dismissed the thought. Stephen had never respected the accomplishment of becoming a Navy SEAL or making the practice team for the Titans. I sent you tickets both times we came to San Diego. You never showed up, bro. Because it would have been such a huge inconvenience for you to get your butt down to the dock? Not the point, Scar said, wishing again he'd never set up this appointment. It is exactly the point. Dad gave the company to both of us. Just at that moment, the waitress appeared with a couple of their plates. She didn't seem to be listening, even though he didn't know how she could not be listening. After situating it all, she held up a finger. I'll be back with the bacon. She rushed off. He and his brother held each other's eyes for a brief moment, and he watched as his brother pulled in a long breath. You have to keep your voice down, Scar said, trying not to sound patronizing. Stephen reddened. This was exactly what he'd always done. Stuff his anger. He picked up a fork. San Diego is your home. We always talked about what we would do with Dad's business. Do you remember that? How it was our dream? How we would raise our kids together? This reminder of the past ticked Scar off. 
He stabbed a bite of egg without paying any attention to it and shoved it in his mouth. At the first bite, he realized the eggs were over easy. He hadn't wanted over easy. He almost spit it out but managed to swallow. The waitress was back, sliding the other plates next to them. How is it? She asked, not looking at him but at his brother. Great, Stephen nodded. You got my eggs wrong, Scar said, shoving the plate a bit toward her, all traces of his earlier flirtation gone. She jerked to face him, glancing at the eggs. No, I didn't. Uh, yeah, you did. You said light eggs. That means over easy. Scar was seething now, not just at her, but also at his brother and his talk of dreams. Light means not burnt, rubbery, scrambled eggs. He pointed at his brother's plate, like his. Narrowing her eyes at him, she picked up the plate and turned on her heel. Fine. Scar's heart rate kicked up a notch as he watched her go. Nice, his brother said. Scare off the poor waitress, why don't you? Couldn't you just give her a break and eat the eggs? No, Scar Walker can't have his eggs messed up. Scar refused to pin his brother to the wall and throttle him. He wouldn't give his brother the satisfaction. Instead, he focused on his waffles, dribbling the syrup onto them. Whatever. At least this breakfast would be over soon. For a few minutes, he and his brother ate in silence. The waitress brought his new plate of eggs to him and didn't say a word. Neither did Scar. Was he being a jerk about it? He didn't care. Finally, his brother pushed his plate back and said, So... Not knowing how to respond, Scar was tentative. So? What did his brother want? He looked rigid for a moment, then let out a long breath. Maybe we can just try to be normal or something. Scar frowned at him. Stephen lifted a hand in expectation. Act like brothers or something. Scar let out a light laugh. It was ridiculous thinking they could have a normal breakfast. Wasn't that what he'd wanted when he'd left the note? To have a normal conversation with his brother? Stephen was the one who'd come with a chip on his shoulder, but he didn't point this fact out. Okay. Okay. Stephen let out another breath. Scar didn't know if he could stand all this breathing. Stephen gestured to him, searching for something to say. So how is it playing with the Kincaids? Scar was a bit shocked by the question. Did his brother really want to know about his football career? He tried to answer it as normally as possible. Wiping his mouth, he flashed an arrogant smile. They're good guys, but I'm gonna push up to first string this year. He winked. Zeus is going down. A slow smile crept onto his brother's face. He put his fist out. Well, yeah, you are. You're a walker after all. Scar fist bumped him, a bit amazed by this turn in conversation. For a few moments, neither of them spoke, but he sensed Stephen had something else to say. Finally, Stephen leveled with him. I'm glad you left a note on the boat. Granted, I'd like to have your number, but I'm glad you contacted me. He sighed. Things are happening. Life is changing. I still have hope that we can change too, bro. This caught him off guard. His brother was making peace? Scar studied Stephen's face again. He looked older somehow, like a lot older. What's going on with you? Scar asked, hoping he wouldn't regret it. Stephen picked up a napkin and systematically ripped it into tiny pieces. Just found out Carrie is pregnant. Carrie had been Stephen's girlfriend since high school. Shocked, but not wanting to respond the wrong way, Scar plastered on a smile, hoping it didn't look fake. That's great. Letting out a skittering breath, Stephen put the last vestige of the napkin down. Not really. I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to be a father. I'm planning to ask her to marry me. Stephen's tone was carefully level, but he was terrified. 
Scar saw it in the way he ran his fingers through his hair, and then swallowed, picking up the water with a shaking hand. You're gonna be fine, Scar said, meaning it. We can't do worse than dad, right? He thought of all the times his father had hit him for no reason at all. Stephen scoffed. That's what I've been telling myself. Scar continued to eat, not wanting to think about his father and the bad childhood they'd had. He and Stephen had stepped up to run San Diego cruises. He'd been 16 and his brother only 15 when their father had turned into an alcoholic. You got this, bro. Listen, I'm sorry, but after the funeral, I just couldn't stay. I left you to manage it all, and he trailed off. His brother waved a hand. I'm not interested in the past, Brandon, but I would like to be in your life now. I know it might not be in San Diego, but you could come by and go out on a tour with me while you're here. Tell me about your project. He gave him a lazy smile. I'm sure it involves you wanting to save something by sacrificing yourself, but I'll listen. Holy crap, were they actually getting along? Feeling hopeful, Scar thought about the fact his brother didn't have his phone number. He'd actually left his phone at the hotel because he was going surfing. I'd like that. Let me give you my number. His brother shrugged. I left my phone in the truck. Scar got up and took a pen off the hostess stand then scrawled his number on a napkin. Here. He shoved it at his brother. Call me so I have your number. I'll come by and we'll talk. His brother grinned. Sounds good. Do you remember what mom used to tell us growing up? Scar had mixed feelings about this line of thinking. You mean before she left? Yeah, before all of that. Tell me. Lately, I've been thinking we have to try to take the best from mom and dad and what they left us. Do you remember what she used to tell us after we fought? Love is simple. You love each other, you forgive each other. That's how it works. Wash, rinse, and repeat. Scar hadn't thought about that for a long time. The waitress was back. She ripped off a paper from her pad and directed her comment to Scar. Your beautifully scripted receipt, sir. She dropped it on the table between them. Her words were clearly intended to mock him, though he wasn't sure how. His brother laughed, reaching for the receipt, but Scar beat him to it. No, bro, when I'm home, I pay. Please, it's the least I can do for leaving you with everything. Acquiescing, his brother stood. Yeah, it is. He hesitated, then smiled. Especially since you run with those big dogs on the Titans now. Woo! He made a fist-circling motion. Unable to hide his delight, Scar grinned, standing and high-fiving his brother. I have a tour, so I'll catch you later. Great. Scar watched him go and decided maybe things could be different. Later that night, Scar's phone rang. He didn't recognize the number, so he didn't answer it. Only naive or lonely people answered phone calls from unknown phone numbers, right? Whoever it was didn't leave a message, and after a bit, an uneasy feeling settled over him. He couldn't get the number out of his mind. Even as he watched Sports Center on the hotel TV, he kept wondering who would have called. On the SEAL Force, he was known for his intuition. These days, it was what made him good at being a quarterback. He had intuition about more things than a human could concentrate on at a time, and it made it possible for him to get the ball down the field, while avoiding 11 elite athletes doing everything possible to rip his head off. A thought popped into his mind as he was getting ready for bed. Maybe it was Stephen. Duh, yes, of course. He picked up his phone and called the number. After two rings, a woman answered. Hello? Her voice scattered his thoughts. H hello Who is this? She demanded. Who is this? Scar asked with a bit of military snark in his tone. You called me a half hour ago. He kept his voice stern. She hesitated. Is this that jerk from this morning? What, did you get my personal number to call and give me crap about your eggs? 
the feisty red-headed waitress's face popped into his brain. Is this? Are you that waitress? He scoffed. You called me first. No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. I'm calling you back. I did not call you. With that, she clicked off. Chapter 2 Shayla eyed the soldier from yesterday when he walked into the diner, the one she'd accidentally called last night. She didn't know how his number had gotten into her apron, but it was annoying. Even better, he was seated in her section at the moment. What can I get you to eat? Her voice was canned, the one she used for all of her customers. Hey. He said it in a tone reserved for closeness or friendship. Allowing herself to meet his eyes, she pushed away the fact he was hot. Way hot. She tried not to sink into those blue eyes, like the ocean sky in the morning when it was clear at Hotel del Coronado. She loved the ocean by the resort. When she was 17, that ocean had inspired her promise to herself that she would find a way to live in San Diego on Coronado Island. And she had. She managed a polite smile. Good morning. The side of his lip tugged up, and she wondered if he would say anything about the phone call and argument last night. He passed the menu to her. Eggs, bacon, and water. Please. She lifted her eyebrows, surprised at the please. He hadn't even made a crack about the eggs. Walking away, she tried to deny the fact that the man was handsome. It had been a rough three years after high school, working a full-time job at the coal mine and waitressing on the side, but she'd saved enough money to cover her first two years at San Diego State. Not only that, but enough to live on Coronado Island. Granted, she lived in a dump, but it was worth it if she got to be near the ocean, to walk on the beach every day if she wanted. Too bad she was already a month into her time in California, and hadn't gotten to do any of the things she wanted to do. The summer class she'd started ate up a lot of her time, and what little was left went to work. Still worth it. It didn't even matter anymore that her boyfriend Jason had dumped her the day before she'd moved here, so she'd had to come by herself. Sure, the breakup and last-minute change of plans had been hell. She was still figuring it out, and she was proud of herself. Living her dream meant everything to her, and she was doing it. So what if she was a bit lonely? So what if her parents and family in Kansas thought she was crazy? So what if it would take forever to save the money to do all the things she wanted to do around San Diego because her car had broken down on the way here and she'd had to blow most of her money to fix it? She didn't care. She would figure it out. Rushing to the computer next to the kitchen, she put in his order, and wondered why she was even thinking of her parents or Jason or any of that garbage. She greeted two other tables filled with families, then dropped a water with lemon on the soldier's table, and once again tried not to notice what he was doing, staring out the window at the ocean. Even though she flew around the restaurant, her attention remained on this guy. He was older, definitely not a new soldier. There wasn't a bright and shiny look to him, his jawline was hard, his features chiseled. That scar down the side of his face was interesting, something he wore with pride, a battle wound. He wasn't trying to hide anything, and she could respect that. Sure, he had a bit of anger to him, and he was kind of a jerk, but she couldn't imagine what he'd probably gone through in his life. It was clear that he could tick her off in an instant, but today, he looked different somehow than he had yesterday. Delivering food to another table, she saw the soldier's food was up. She steeled herself for the inevitable confrontation, then picked his meal up and took it to his table. Thanks, he said, but he didn't look at the food. So did you ever figure out how you got my number? She pulled the napkin out and put it on the table. I guess it got mixed into my receipts and ordering papers. She didn't apologize or admit she was wrong. There was something about his surly smile that wouldn't let her say it. With two fingers, he pushed the napkin back. You keep it. Embarrassed, she grabbed a pitcher on one of the side cupboards and filled his water. I don't need your number. 
You know, most girls would cry for that number. He took a bite of eggs. Apparently, these ones were more to his taste. Just looking at his cocky expression made her temper flare up. Well then, I guess you can sell it and make some money. Or better yet, give it away for free and see all the tears of joy. Of course, she noticed the way his t-shirt stretched over his muscles, and the way every part of him seemed to be ripped, although he didn't need to know that. A boyish smile softened his face. True. Turning away from him, she focused on the other tables, checking one family out and then bussing some tables. She glanced back at him to see him watching her, much to her annoyance. Rather than deal with his scrutiny, she busied herself with getting the silverware out of the dishwasher and rolling them into napkins. When she came back, the first thing she noticed was the soldier was gone, and there was a fifty on the table. Guiltily, she looked around. She felt bad about taking the whole fifty like she was doing something wrong. Sure, it was San Diego. Sometimes very wealthy people would come in and tip fifteen, even twenty bucks on a small ticket. However, this would make his tip almost forty dollars. After she picked up the fifty, she noticed the same napkin as before. There were other words scrawled next to the phone number. Call me if you're interested in talking. The words felt foreboding. She didn't know if he meant them to be comforting or not. It was strange. Taking the fifty and putting it with the rest of her money, she cleared the table, looked out the window, and saw a blue Ford Mustang convertible pull out of the parking lot. She wondered if he would come back the next day. At that moment, a man with a beard, surly eyes, and a tucked-down hat walked in and bypassed the hostess station, heading for a booth in her section. A weird feeling crawled up her spine. She didn't think she'd seen him before. She didn't like that guy. They passed each other, him brushing a little too close while she tried not to make eye contact. A whiff of body odor almost made her gag. She stiffly walked up to the manager's station, which doubled as a hostess station. Bob, the owner, stood there, a pencil in his hand and the crossword in front of him. That guy in three, I'm sorry, I don't want to wait on him. Bob pulled a toothpick out of his mouth. His cheeks were ruddy, his hair greasy beneath his hat, and his dark eyes traveled to table three. Mm. Creeper? She liked Bob. He was a no-fuss kind of boss. You show up, you do the work, you get paid. End of story. Except you better show up and you better do the work or he'd fire you in a heartbeat. He picked up a pad and pen. I got him. Breathing a sigh of relief, she headed to the back to the silverware that still needed to be rolled in napkins. She thought about the exam she had it for that afternoon. She was prepared for it. That's what she really loved about the early morning waitress job. It still allowed her to have time to study and go to class. For now, she was only attending community college. She hoped after a year she could get approved for in-state tuition and attend San Diego State full-time. She wanted a degree in business and had dreams of owning her own boutique stores one day. She'd been raised on a farm, but she'd always helped her father manage the accounts and even think of new ways to bring in money for their family. When she walked out of the kitchen a few minutes later, the creeper guy was gone. She picked up water and filled her tables, then moved to Bob, who answered her question before she could ask it. The guy just took off, said he wasn't hungry. Weird, she said. Bob's eyes creased with concern. You tell me when you're leaving. I want to walk you out. Even in the light of day, Bob would be a welcome escort. Chapter 3 When Scar returned to the Hotel del Coronado, he took a moment to appreciate the place. Even though he hadn't gotten as much done on the project today as he would have liked, he really enjoyed the hotel, which was saying a lot, because he usually hated hotels. When he'd been a lowly officer in the Navy doing his buds training, he'd run past this place every day, but he'd never dreamed he'd be staying here. The hotel had been around since the 1800s, and it was a bit posh. 
This was by far the best hotel in San Diego. The staff was amazing, the beach was pristine, and best of all, the gym was impressive. He changed into his workout clothes, thinking that he'd punish himself for five miles before starting in on the weights. After doing the treadmill, Scar felt the fog begin to lift from his mind. He got off and went to the weights, focusing on some band work. He always brought his bands. He strengthened his shoulders, pecs, and delts, finishing off with some lunges and deadlifts. Not enough to be sore tomorrow, but enough so he wouldn't feel bad sitting in a meeting all day. The one thing that never bothered him about being on the practice team was all the physical training it demanded. That was part of why he liked it so much. He had to keep in peak physical shape, which wasn't a chore for him. Getting back to his room, he realized it was barely eight o'clock. He didn't know if he wanted to go out or not. On his phone flashed a text from Dave, one of the architects and a fellow former SEAL working with him on the project. A couple of us are at the sports bar, the end zone, watching the game. Come over. So he did. He went to the sports bar and met some more ex-military guys. It was fun connecting with them, telling them about his vision. Some of them scoffed at it, but most wanted to be part of it. It made him feel like his life still mattered. After three sparkling waters, Scar caught a familiar flash of red hair in the corner of his eye. Scanning the room more intently, he saw her, the feisty redhead from the diner. She sat at the bar with another girl laughing. He noticed she was done up for a night out. Her hair was piled on top of her head and she wore more makeup. She looked so different from the morning. She didn't look like she was trying to catch guys, though. She looked like she was just having a drink with a friend. Before he could think of what to do, she got up, nodded to her friend, and turned to leave. Wait. No. Adrenaline surged in him. He wanted to talk to her. Thinking quickly, he stood to leave. Gotta go. See you guys. The men shouted their disappointed goodbyes. He was out the door in no time, but he couldn't see where she was. Then he got a feeling. That gut feeling again. The same sense he'd felt last night after that unidentified phone call. The one that told him something was about to happen. He heard what sounded like a muffled yell and took off in that direction. As he turned the corner, he couldn't believe what he was seeing at first. It was the redhead struggling against a guy as he pushed her roughly up against the wall, his hand over her mouth. Without thinking, Scar rushed forward and pulled the guy off of her, lifting him off his feet and throwing him to the ground. He turned to her. You okay? Looking very not okay, she nodded. The guy on the ground started moving like he would get up and run, but that would not stand. Scar seized him by the scruff of his shirt and held him up. What were you doing? Let me go. The guy struggled to free himself, kicking out and scratching. Scar slammed a fist into his face. Before he could land a second punch, he paused, noticing that the redhead was running away and called after her. Taking advantage of the distraction, the guy scrambled away from him, running toward the beach. Scar was torn between wanting to finish kicking this guy's butt and wanting to check on the girl. He made a command decision to chase the girl and sprinted after her. A gray car swerved around the corner ahead, prompting Scar to jump out of the way. He saw the girl at the wheel and their eyes connected, but she didn't slow as she peeled out of the parking lot. He watched her go and sucked in a breath. What had just happened? Why hadn't she stayed and explained or even anything? The look in her eyes and the feeling in his gut said something was very wrong. His gut was never wrong. His Navy brothers used to tease him that he was the trouble whisperer. It hadn't been a name he appreciated, especially when they called him Wisp for short, until he'd gotten the nickname Scar. There was something about trouble that seemed to find him, or rather, he seemed to find it. Frowning, he muttered a quick prayer for the woman and headed back to the hotel. Chapter Four Later that night, Shayla sat on her bed, 
gazing through the window at the ocean. She thought about the guy who'd saved her. She probably should have stayed, filed a police report, something. She had fled instead. She was too shaken up. It had been the B.O. guy from the diner. Starting to shake, she closed her eyes and tucked her legs up beneath her. If her parents got a whiff of this, they would want her to come home. This had been a concern of theirs. She was going off to the big city and heaven knows what would happen to her. It had been a serious topic of a lot of conversations when they were trying to decide if they would let her go. Many times she had reminded them she was nearly 21 and they didn't have a say. Now she was a bit freaked out. Why was the weirdo guy after her? Wishing for the millionth time that her ex-boyfriend Jason would have come with her to San Diego, she imagined what it would be like if he just showed up tonight. She barked a laugh at the thought. He wouldn't show up. After all, he'd made it pretty clear he wanted to stay in Kansas. Somehow that didn't seem to matter. Old habits died hard, and she wanted to call him. For comfort. With a sharp breath, she pressed his number. It rang three times before going to voicemail, which meant he'd declined her call. Rejection and sadness squeezed her heart as pain came back all over again. Jason had been her best friend since they were little. He lived on the adjacent farm, and they had ridden the bus together every day. Over the years, it had naturally blossomed into a first love. She had been sure she would marry him. She'd been wrong. Staring at her phone on the bedside table, she thought of the soldier guy. A swarm of questions buzzed in her mind, so she did something she never thought she would do. She called him. Not knowing what to expect, she was surprised when he answered on the first ring. Hello. His voice was soft, and she wondered if he'd been asleep. He didn't sound like he'd been asleep, though. She felt like she was at one of those fast food Mexican places where when you get to the front of the line, it doesn't matter if you know what you want or not, because suddenly you're put on the spot and discombobulated. Hey, she said. For a moment, he didn't answer. Then he let out a breath. Are you okay? It was weird to hear a near stranger ask that question. Still, he deserved to ask. He'd saved her. Yeah, I think so. Good, he said gruffly, almost matter of fact. It was like, okay, you're fine, so now the conversation is over. At least that's how she felt. What if he had a girlfriend or a wife? So what if he had given her an outrageous tip? At least he didn't seem to be with anyone else. He wouldn't be glad she called if he was, right? I had to, well... Thank you. You're welcome, he sighed. Why didn't you stay and file a report? She should have known he would ask that. After all, he looked like a vet, and she had figured him for a straight-laced type, though he looked rather dangerous. Look, she didn't owe him an explanation. I need to get some sleep. I just wanted to make sure I... What did she want to make sure of? This wasn't just a polite call, no matter what she said. Are you really okay? He said again. That guy looked determined. She shivered. Yeah, I am. How did she tell him that she was scared and that she was alone? Thank you. I have to go. She pressed end. Her hand still shook. She hated it. She hated that the weirdo guy was out there and she hated how it felt to be shoved up against the wall. A tear leaked down her face. She hated that she wasn't going to sleep at all, and she still had a five-page paper to write for her English class that was due in two days. She needed to start it tonight and try to get most of it written, because tomorrow, after her short waitressing shift, she had a three-hour class. She would have to finish the paper after that. Sucking in a long breath, she did the only thing she could think to do. She bowed her head and prayed for help. Chapter 5 The next morning on the way to the diner, 
Scar found himself still keyed up from the incident the night before. For heaven's sake, he'd survived Navy SEAL special ops missions in the most volatile places on Earth, and he'd probably still be on missions if not for taking that bullet. His arm ached at the memory. It usually didn't, but he found that when he was extra stressed, his body would manifest it at his weak spot. Walking in the diner, he rubbed that shoulder and searched for the redhead. Today, he would get some answers. It frustrated him that he hadn't been able to sleep very well last night. Visions of the guy doing awful, horrible things to her had circled his brain like vultures. He wanted to demand they get that police report filed today. He didn't wait for someone to seat him. No one was at the hosting booth, so he picked up a menu and walked to the same place he'd sat yesterday. The place had an amazing view. Holy hallelujah, it was gorgeous. Big waves were rolling in and crashing dramatically on the shore. Coronado Island was pristine and beautiful. He felt hugely grateful he was set up in digs at the hotel. He hadn't wanted to stay in nice places while on these projects, but Anthony had insisted, acting like it was an insult if he didn't stay at the best. Dude, you served our country and you created this project. Let us take care of you now. The idea that Scar needed someone to take care of him was laughable. He'd been taking care of himself for forever, but what could he say? He liked creature comforts, even more so since joining the Titans. How ironic. A job that demanded utter grit from him also gave him a taste for being pampered. He sat at the booth and didn't even look at the menu, knowing he would get eggs and bacon. He'd ran his five miles that morning and had done some Tai Chi, finding that he needed the soothing mental comfort of the strokes. He'd taken out his bands and done his functional training for his shoulders, biceps, and triceps. Even if taking a couple weeks off from the intense training was good, he still needed to work his shoulder out. The redhead meandered over to his table. Hey, water, eggs, and bacon? For the first time in the diner, her tone was not snarky or aggressive. Looking up into her green eyes, he saw vulnerability. Are you from here? She smiled slowly and his heart kicked up a notch. He hadn't seen her smile. Not really. Only glare and be snarky and a bit pissed off, but oh gosh, the smile was heart-stopping. Kansas, she said. That was not what he'd expected. Why are you in San Diego? She gazed out at the ocean. Since you saved my life, I'll tell you. I worked for three years to accomplish my dream of coming to San Diego and living on Coronado Island. Growing up, I had these friends that would come to Coronado Island every summer. I would see pictures and they would text me. All I wanted was to come too. I... The dreamy look faded. Since my father and mother farm, we never had the money. So I decided to make it happen myself. I did, even though it's not exactly what I thought. Her smile turned to a half frown, then turned up again as she met his eyes. Thank you again for helping me last night. Scar watched, befuddled as she scurried away with the menu. He had never experienced this before, which was funny to him. After hearing her confession and seeing the dreaminess in her eyes, he was realizing he could fall in love with her. Which was plain dog stupid, right? His heart pounded. He found himself utterly confused, bewildered, and feeling sickly sweet thoughts, like he wanted to bottle the innocence in her eyes. The past two years of being third-string quarterback for the Titans had been interesting. Sure, he had some cleat chasers. Yes, the name disgusted him, but that's what they were called. Try to be with him. He'd been careful. Only one had gotten close to him last year. Then she'd shown her true colors and it had ended. Just now, after speaking to this woman, he'd felt a real connection with her. Hearing how she was trying to live the American dream, seeing her chin up, and learning that even though she was afraid, she was doing it anyway. It made something in his chest relax. He was able to breathe. It felt like his sacrifice for his country might have been all worth it. 
for American girls like her working and saving and doing what they wanted with their lives. Thoughts of the punk who tried to hurt her pulsed through him, as did the need to ram his fist into the guy's face again. It wasn't right that the guy had gotten away with almost hurting her. Scar thought of how he could find the guy and pound him and then turn him over to the cops. The girl came back with his food, placing it carefully on the table. Scar couldn't stop himself from staring at her. The smattering of freckles on her nose and cheeks. The way her fiery red hair fell in wisps around her face because it was tied up in a messy bun. Okay. She smoothed her apron down. Do you need anything else? Scar hesitated. Do you know the guy from last night? She wandered over to the table next to his, picking up some plates. He comes in periodically, but I wouldn't know where to find him. I think he's homeless. Scar looked around. He hadn't noticed anyone suspicious. When she looked at him, he saw the fear in her eyes. I told Bob about last night. He's the manager. He says if he comes in, we call the cops. No questions. The news bolstered his confidence just a little. Good. She shook her head. Please, just, let's just let this be, okay? Clutching the fork in his hand, he stuffed a bite of eggs into his mouth and pointed the fork at her. You don't let sleazeballs like him run unchecked. It doesn't help anyone. She hesitated by his table, looking vulnerable and nervous. Look, I don't need a bunch of cops involved in reports. I just need to finish a paper for my summer class. Seriously, he's just a sleazeball. It's part of the job. No, it's not. He leveled her with a stare. If he shows up anywhere, you call me. Scar wanted to lecture her more, wanted to ask her a million questions, but she rushed off, picking up more plates and carting them into the kitchen. Chapter Six It had been a crazy day. Her summer class moved at a fast pace. At the moment, Shayla wanted to know who the heck cared about Romeo and Juliet and tragic love. Shayla flopped face down on her bed. It was almost 10.30, and she'd been up since five. More importantly, she hadn't really slept at all the night before. Her thoughts went back to the previous night. The only good thing about being so busy was that she couldn't focus on the bad. Now her mind drifted to the guy who grabbed her. Trying to retrain her thoughts, she thought of the latest personal development book she'd read. What you plant in your mind is sown in the physical world. She loved all those kinds of precepts and principles. It was the thing that had helped her accomplish her dream thus far. Changing her thoughts, asking different questions, focusing on the good. She thought of the soldier's dangerous, gorgeous face. She realized she didn't even know his name, yet he cared. He had been sort of angry, but also protective. It was stupid how she created this whole backstory for him. He was military, flew the scary kind of missions, killed people with his bare hands. The other night, when he'd thrown the stalker off of her, she'd thought he might kill the guy. He had looked that fierce for a moment. Dang, the man was handsome. There was no way he would be interested in her, right? Besides, she wasn't even really over Jason, was she? Locking that nagging inner voice that told her she really didn't have a life between work and school, she rolled onto her back before sitting up. She needed to finish the stupid paper. Her professor wanted it emailed to him by midnight or he wouldn't accept it. She cracked open her laptop and reviewed the philosophical argument she was making for Romeo and Juliet, but she couldn't find the right words. She needed to prove that Juliet was justified in killing herself. That was the argument. She could argue that. Juliet was in love. Love is blind. Juliet wouldn't be happy without him. Could she prove that? She didn't really believe that, did she? Wasn't she happy without Jason? Yes. No. She was fine. Her head hurt. Her phone rang. Without looking, she knew who it would be as she answered. Hello? Hesitation. Hey. 
It was funny to her that there was a familiarity already. I don't even know your name. I know, he said. I don't know yours either. I've named you Kansas in my head. Liking that he'd been thinking of her, she smiled. My name's Shayla Castle. Okay, your real name doesn't disappoint either. This pleased her, which was stupid. Okay, so what's yours? Brandon Walker. My friends call me Scar. She bit back the obvious question. Your name is nice too. Another story for another night, he said. What? You want to know about my Scar. I'll tell you another time. It put her on edge, thinking this would be a normal thing, them talking. She hated how much she actually liked that idea. He let out a quick exhale. I wanted to check on you. How's it going? Thanks, I'm fine. You could have texted. Nah, we have this thing happening. His voice was soft. We do? She found herself smiling. Yeah, we do. Neither of them spoke for a few seconds. Well, thank you, she said, her heart pounding. The mystery of that scar still taunted her. What are you doing? His words were stilted, and his discomfort made her relax more. I'm arguing the merits or justification that Juliet had for killing herself when she thought Romeo was dead. For a beat, he didn't answer, like he was weighing his response on his tongue. She was stupid, plain and simple. Life is precious. Killing herself was a huge waste. Shayla disagreed. She was in love. She was heartbroken. He barked out a laugh. Life is worth more than love. She was reckless. She was too young to be messing around with a thug like Romeo. He shouldn't have married her in the middle of the night. He would have gotten his throat cut if her father had known. That's why he did it in the cloak of darkness. That was a valid argument, actually. She smiled. Cloak of darkness, really? Should I put that in my paper? Hey, I won't complain if you feel the need to quote me. His voice had gone husky. Intrigued, she pushed aside her laptop and leaned against the back of her bed, thinking how this was getting interesting. Why can't you tell me about the scar now? He sighed. You have no filter, do you, Kansas? The way he said Kansas sounded so good. Feeling a bit bad, she shook her head. I'm sorry. It's fine. Seriously, another night. Let's talk about your paper. Sure. She went back to the topic, even though she really wanted to know now. Juliet had pledged her dying love to Romeo. Juliet trusted Romeo. Still stupid and childish. Was it? Because by Romeo's actions, we see that Romeo loved and trusted Juliet. He didn't let it stand. She didn't die by herself. He died too. He grunted. So sacrifice for love is always worth it? Always she said softly, feeling more convinced as she said it. That's why it was pretty awesome you jumped in to help me, even though I don't deserve it and you didn't know me. But I didn't love you, Scar pointed out. He said it so bluntly she was thrown off balance. I jumped in because I believe in humanity, goodness, honor, and duty. She found herself liking this man. A lot. Love of country before love of self. You do what's right because it's the right thing to do, he said. I had SEAL guys who proved that to me, over and over. Her respect for him went up a notch. You're a SEAL? He cleared his throat. Was. Got shot, discharged with honors. I had the option of being regular military, but turned it down. What do you do currently? Play football for the Texas Titans. This was unreal. She wasn't really into football, but Jason had loved the Titans. You play professional football? He scoffed. I pretty much just get throttled most of the time. I'm on the practice team. She considered what SEALs did, then tried to imagine what it was like on the practice team. 
So you're obviously masochistic. He laughed. What are you doing in San Diego? He cleared his throat. I'm actually in San Diego for three to four weeks working on a project to design a facility for military vets. It's a program that focuses on helping vets through sparring. There will also be counselors to help them and a coffee shop where they can hang out. No one would show up just to be psychoanalyzed. But if we can get them in for sparring and socializing, we can really help the ones who need it. She cleared her throat. I have to admit I'm a bit intimidated by you. No, he said, sounding shocked. Don't be. How old are you? She blurted, regretting the words as soon as they tumbled out. Sorry, the no filter thing. She cringed, knowing she sounded like an idiot, and was grateful for the distance of the telephone while talking to him. Ah, you're breaking my heart already, Shayla. Her heart rate kicked up a notch. Was he going to answer the question? I'm 28, he said. How old are you? 21, he sighed. Is that okay with you? Feeling uncertain, she said, yeah, that's fine. I mean, whatever. It's not like we're dating or anything. He chuckled, a wonderful sound. That dispels any intentions I had. Butterflies rushed through her and she knew she'd be blushing. Checking the time, she saw it was almost 11.30. I gotta go. Paper is due by midnight and I still have to finish it. Okay, he said. Can we talk tomorrow? Happiness surged through her. She pushed it away, not wanting to think it meant anything. He was way too old for her. Sure. Well, then I'll talk to you tomorrow. Chapter 7 It had been a rough day. Scar had gone from meeting to meeting, barely taking a lunch. Unfortunately, it hadn't included the diner that morning. Maybe that's why it had been bad. He hadn't gotten to see Kansas. When Scar finally staggered into his room at the Hotel del Coronado, all he wanted to do was go for another run, get some food, fall on his bed, and find something on TV to fall asleep to. He had just collapsed onto his bed when his phone rang. It was her number. His spirits lifted as he answered. Couldn't stand not to hear my voice? Sorry, I need your help. His head shot up from the bed, and he was on his feet in three seconds flat. What? She sighed. Never mind, this was a bad idea. I just thought because I live down from your hotel, you might be able to help me. Taking action, he scooped his wallet off the couch and had his running shoes on in no time. Where are you? I can get to anything on this whole island in roughly 20 minutes running. I might even be able to wrangle a bike and be there faster or grab my jeep. What is your 20? Your location. Never mind, it's dumb. His gut was already on high alert, and he felt certain something bad was happening. Then she screamed, and he launched into motion, running out the door. Where are you? The townhomes by the Naval Air Station. Her voice was childlike and shaky. I swear someone is outside my place, but it's so dark. I know exactly where you are. What color is your car in the driveway? 135 Hamilton. Gray car. Scar bypassed the elevator and took the stairs, rushing out of the lobby and heading to the boardwalk next to Coronado Beach. The phone was pressed to his ear. Shayla! Nothing. Jogging down the hill, he looked at his phone. Dead. He cursed. Before seeing the incident the other night, he never would have believed a guy would have assaulted her right there outside of the bar. Just remembering it made his blood boil. He kicked his pace up a notch, feeling the sweat beginning to trickle down his back but he could manage this for ten miles if he had to. Getting onto the boardwalk, he barked out, Move! He sprinted past swarms of civilians who all seemed to jump out of his way. Finally, he reached her house, taking her porch steps two at a time. Shayla! he yelled. The door flung open, and there she was. A red robe wrapped around her, her hair up in a messy bun, tennis shoes on her feet. She looked younger than twenty-one at this moment, a bit shaken, Desperate. He usually didn't do desperate women. He was too old for that and didn't have time to deal with all of their concerns every second. Now, though, he wanted to pull her into his arms. Are you okay? She nodded. 
His eyes scanned past her, looking for an intruder, but she pointed to the side of the house, indicating a tangle of bushes and trees. Scar was tentative, sensing something was lurking there. She stayed on the porch, watching and waiting, holding up a flashlight for him. Suddenly, a possum burst out of the bushes and lumbered across the street. Shayla let out a yell, dropping the flashlight. Then she burst out laughing, and Scar joined in. Her robe came open as she bent over with laughter, and all he could focus on were her legs, little boxer shorts, and fitted t-shirt. Obviously, she was relaxing for the night, but he couldn't stop his eyes from trailing up her body. Her red hair once again hung in wisps around her face, and he longed to have her take her messy bun out and see her hair flowing free in the wind. Wait, was he really thinking that? He shook his head and looked away. She came off the porch, picking up the flashlight and snuggling the robe back around her. I'm so sorry, I didn't have anyone else to call. Staring at the gorgeous girl, Scar felt something ease in the center of his chest. He tried to shrug it off. Actually, I was just going to work out and then go to sleep, so you did me a favor. I needed to run anyway. She cocked an eyebrow. Thank you. You saved me from a possum. Her lips turned up in a huge grin. Standing up straighter, he put his hands on his hips. There'll be no possum eating women when I'm around. He wanted to ask more questions to put off their parting, so he took a chance he hadn't taken with a woman for a long time. Want to walk? The moon was out, and now that his eyes had adjusted, he thought a walk on the boardwalk would be nice. Shayla looked at the ocean and then back at him nervously. I'm sorry, I have to finish my schoolwork. I thought the Romeo and Juliet assignment was done last night. It was, but I have another paper due in two days. I like to get a jump start on them. There was something about this woman. Why had she called him that first night? Why had he magically shown up at the sports bar the other night? All he knew was he wanted to get to know her. Hey, come on, an hour walk on the beach. He turned on the charm, though it was softer than how he used it most of the time. Come on, Kansas, you're not refusing the beach, are you? He tapped his chest. I'll even buy you a hot dog. Her lips turned up. A hot dog? It seemed like he was gaining yards, so he kept going. Might even buy you some cotton candy, too. This made her fully smile. Am I 12? He laughed. I would say you may look like you're 12, but I'm glad you're not. For a few seconds, they seemed to be in a face-off. Then she let out a breath. Okay, one hour. She started climbing the stairs, going back into her townhome. You can come in while I change if you want. It felt like a loaded suggestion to Scar to come into her house. He reminded himself that she was Kansas, not a cleat chaser. He could tell it was a kind, innocent gesture. Scar wanted to tell her she shouldn't be asking strange men to come in her home, especially after the bar the other night and how jumpy she was. He followed, evaluating the sagging wood and the step that felt like it would break. He saw the siding that needed replacing, and as he opened the screen door and pulled it back behind him, he noticed it didn't latch properly. When he got inside... He saw it was clean, but bare bones. There was a table in the corner holding what looked like it must be all of her books. The couch in the small living room was worn but clean. A simple afghan covered it, adding a kind of grandmotherly touch. There was a single chair facing a small television that looked like it wasn't even hooked up. I'll be right back. She rushed down the hall. He waited, still evaluating the living room, when he caught sight of a wall covered with different posters and paper and a list. Slowly, he walked toward it. It kind of looked like it was a very detailed FBI or police case file. As he inspected it more thoroughly, he realized it was a map of San Diego. All the things on the list were different places around the city. It had things listed like bike around Coronado Island, hike Torrey Pines, and visit Old Town San Diego. 
There were notes to see the lighthouse at Point Loma and take a helicopter ride around Oceanside. Was it kind of like a bucket list? Mary Jason on the beach. This piece of the bucket list slapped him in the face. Who the heck was Jason? What are you doing? She was back and her tone was clipped, but not angry. Sorry. He backed away and put his hands up. She'd put her red hair into a ponytail and wore spandex shorts, running shoes, and a white t-shirt. She looked amazing. He caught a whiff of some scent. Suntan lotion? It perplexed him because it wasn't sunny. What is that? He asked, pointing to the wall. Nothing. He shook his head. No, it's something. Is it a bucket list? As much as he wanted to ask about this Jason, now wasn't the time. She grabbed her keys and moved to the door. Let's go. They left the town home, walked across the street, and then hopped on the boardwalk. The naval base was on their right. It made him think of his buds training, all the hours being waterlogged. He dismissed those thoughts and focused on her. Tell me about yourself, Kansas. I told you it was my dream to get here. My family thinks I'm crazy. I saved for a couple years after high school to be able to come to San Diego. I want to go to the community college for a year to get in-state tuition and then go to San Diego State. She looked out over the ocean and smiled. I'm lucky. Even though I'm terrified sometimes, I'm here. It amazed him that she was so young and determined. That's cool. So who is this Jason you're going to marry on the beach? She exhaled. You saw that? He nodded, even more interested since she didn't seem to want to tell him. He's the ex-boyfriend who dumped me the day before he was supposed to come here with me. Ouch, he said. Honestly, he was glad Jason had dumped her and now he wanted to know more, but that probably wasn't what she wanted to hear. She kept walking in silence. He took the break in conversation in stride, mulling over the other things on her bucket list. You got quiet, soldier. Her voice was quiet. He smiled. I want to hear more about you. They walked for a while, and it wasn't long until they arrived at the Del Coronado. She stopped and moved a few steps away from the path, staring at the hotel. I told you how my friends always came here. Well, she was my best friend, Charlotte. Charlotte and her brother were twins. They lived next door. Every summer, they would come visit San Diego since their grandmother had a small house here. Her parents would always stay a couple of nights at this hotel. She would come back with pictures and stories about it. She would build these amazing sandcastles. She would bike around the boardwalk here, they would swim in the ocean and always bring back these amazing sand dollars. As he watched her tell this story, something in his chest loosened and relaxed, and he connected to this woman. She looked beautiful as she shared her childhood memories. Charlotte and Dane, that's her twin brother, would come home and show me their pictures. All I wanted was to come to San Diego and see the beach and go on those bike rides around the island and build those sandcastles. She sighed and lifted her shoulder, a rueful smile on her face. The vacation my family did each year was the fair. His heart skipped a beat at the thought of the little girl yearning for the beach and getting dragged to the fair instead. In my senior year of high school, Charlotte's parents asked if I could go. Dane had some track camp and couldn't make it that year. After much cajoling and promising to do extra chores, my parents finally agreed. Her eyes lit up at the memory. I came to Coronado Island and I biked it. We built sandcastles there, she pointed out to the shore, right over there. We played in the water and picked up sand dollars. It was perfect, just perfect. I told myself that one day I would move to San Diego and I would live on this island. His heart hammered inside his chest and he smiled at her. And you did it. I did it. There was fire in her eyes, a fierce pride. Then her lips turned down. 
but it's not Kansas. There are times, like the other night, when I don't love it. Sometimes I wish I had my family. Stupid, right? He caught up to her, his mind going through many options. You need to learn fighting skills. She smirked, probably thinking he was joking. Really? Yeah, fighting skills. Maybe, I just... She turned and searched the ocean. I thought it would be different. It's still good, I just thought it would be more like the vacation. But like all grown-ups do, I discovered between school and work and studies, I can't just play at the beach all day. Plus, on the way out here, my car broke down, so I don't have money for fun right now. Do you need money? It was strange he was asking her this, because he wasn't the type to just give money away. She waved a dismissive hand through the air. No, I have savings that I've stashed away for San Diego State. She held up two fingers. I work two jobs and scrimp like crazy so that money cannot be used for anything else. I'll finish this summer class, work the next couple of months until August, spend another year at the community college, and apply for in-state enrollment status. He grinned, liking her work ethic and determination more and more. That's efficient of you. How come it sounds like you're taunting me? Because I am, but in a good way. You have learned discipline. That's admirable. She laughed. Well, I don't think I have the kind of discipline you have being a seal. He imagined her younger self coming to San Diego, being free, loving it. I guess we both have good discipline. They passed a bike rental place, and he asked, So you haven't biked the island since you've moved here? She looked caught. I don't have a bike. An idea took shape in his mind. He pulled his wallet out. Let's do it now. What? No. She walked faster. Why not? He caught up to her. I'll have you know I've never biked it either, and I grew up in San Diego. She frowned at him. Are you serious? He chuckled. It's crazy, but biking this island has never been on my bucket list, yet it kind of sounds fun. No, I couldn't. I don't have my money with me. He was already jogging over to the place. Your company is your payment for my security services tonight. She followed him reluctantly. My company is my payment? Yep. He paid and they got the bikes out. So let me get this straight. You come help me, and you pay for the bike ride, yet this is somehow a payment to you? He winked at her. Come on, Kansas. Don't overthink it. Chapter 8 It had been crazy to call him, but she had been scared, and she didn't know who else to call. After he'd arrived, and it had only been that possum, she'd felt stupid. As she watched him pull his wallet out and sign the form, then gesture for her to come get the bike, she was elated that she was going to ride around the island. Truth be told, she was also excited that she was doing it with him. This man was seven years older than her. He'd been a SEAL. He was working on a project that would change the lives of American heroes, and he was also a professional football player. Yes, he was more than a bit intimidating. The scar on his face actually made him more attractive. She wanted to know the whole story, but chastised herself. She shouldn't even be thinking things like this. The guy wouldn't be into her, would he? She hadn't had the money to buy a bike, and she hadn't wanted to pay for a rental. She didn't need money to walk it. Almost every day, she'd walk different parts of the island. So now, she took off confidently, but when she turned back, he was right with her, a large grin on his face. Ain't gonna outbike me. She laughed, pedaling faster, relishing the air on her face. She had to yell ahead to have people on the boardwalk get out of her way. She maneuvered in and out of them, then took a sharp ride up to the road that led to the bike path in the middle of the Coronado. Every time she glanced back, he was right on pace, grinning at her. They got to a crosswalk where they had to walk across and wait on the light. She got off and pushed the button. There were so many things she noticed about him. Yes, he had the scar that went from nearly his eyebrow down the side of his cheek, but he also had a dimple when he smiled. 
From the other night, she knew he could look fiercer than she would have thought possible. But at this moment, his expression looked as free as she felt. He stood next to her. This is nice. She grinned. Thank you. What can I say? I like people who dream. Before she could stop the words, she asked, I know you're building that facility to help vets. Is that your dream? The light turned and they both walked across the street. Once on the other side, he hopped on the bike and stared at her with a goofy grin. Yeah, it's one of them. He cocked an eyebrow. Maybe another one is you. Chapter 9 Had he really just said that to her? He took off in front of her, not going so fast he would lose her, but going fast enough. Sure, he hadn't biked the island before, but his navigational and spatial skills for knowing where he was were in full force. Plus, this island wasn't very big. He headed west and found a tourist bike path. Hopping on, he waited for her, meeting her eyes with a challenging smile despite his nervousness. There was still time to deny what he'd said. Tell her he was messing with her. Something. When they stopped at the next stoplight, she grinned widely as she pointed to a tree. Look. Scar peered at its branches. What? She laughed. The light turned and she got on and kept going. A lemon tree. He shook his head and smiled. Since he'd grown up in San Diego, he wasn't necessarily impressed by that. She was from Kansas, though, so he could imagine how it might be exciting. As they rode on, Shayla taking the lead, she pointed to another tree. A magnolia tree! He laughed at her delight. She pointed to different flowers and named them all, and he felt like he was seeing through the eyes of a child. It was innocent and fun. They stopped at another light, and she said, Which way? I thought you'd done this, he teased. Her face reddened. I'm not very good at navigating. Let's hit the beach this way, he pointed to the right. Then we'll come back around. The light turned and they kept biking. This time he led the way. Out of the blue, he found he liked pointing things out to her. So he showed her a bird of prey flower, a salvia pozo blue that attracts hummingbirds. The whole experience was ridiculously fun. And by the time they landed back at the beach close to where she lived, both of them were smiling and laughing. It felt like one of those scenes in a movie, where they are at the carnival and the boy and girl are hand in hand. Why was he thinking of carnivals? Maybe because she'd said the fair was her family vacation. They sped down the boardwalk. The moonlight showcased couples walking and holding hands on the beach. One couple had a child between them and they were flinging him up into the air as he squealed with laughter. He realized this was what his life was missing. A woman, a family. He thought of his brother having a baby. He remembered what his brother had said about San Diego being Scar's home. Maybe it was. The past few months, he'd worked harder and harder on the Sparring for Vets program, but something had felt incomplete. Right now, as Shayla almost wrecked at the bike place and they both laughed, he felt complete. This moment could be the most perfect moment he'd ever had. After checking in the bikes, they walked back to the boardwalk in the hotel. Sorry I made you miss your workout, she said quietly. When their eyes met, he felt another zing. His hand brushed hers and he considered holding hands, but he wimped out. Hey, I can miss a workout. I usually do two a day, but it's good to not always push so hard. As they approached the hotel, he smelled food wafting from the restaurant and realized he was hungry. Glancing at her, he saw her staring at the restaurant. Hey, you want to grab something to eat with me? I guess the hot dog guy and cotton candy shop is closed at night. Her eyes sparkled at the idea, even as she turned away. Nah, I better get back. Hey, come on, it would be nice to have company. I usually do everything alone. I think I enjoyed biking around the island because I got to see it through your eyes. Guess it's your bucket list too, she said, smiling. He lowered and lifted one shoulder. 
Take a beautiful woman on a bike ride around an island? That sounds good. She scoffed. Yes, it sounds like a very Navy Sealish bucket list type of thing. Have dinner with me. He wanted to sit, talk to her, have dinner, and stare at the ocean in the background. He didn't want to go and drink another protein shake. No, no, no. Hesitating, she smiled. Another time. She nodded to the path and started walking. Tonight, he said decisively. You had me rescue you from the possum, remember? Have dinner with me. She cocked an eyebrow. You're telling me I owe you? It was a challenge he accepted. Yeah, I am. It's how the real world outside of Kansas works. Her nostrils flared a bit, and he saw some fire in her eyes. Actually, I thought the world worked like people helping people, doing what's right because it's right. She would throw his words back in his face. Now he felt guilty. I'm sorry. Why was he acting like such an idiot? She sighed. Thank you for everything, but I need to get back. He didn't want this to be over. He needed to be with her, like they were down by three and the other team had the ball. I'm walking you home, Kansas. That's not negotiable. They walked briskly, and she didn't talk to him. He hated that he felt like he'd ruined this. Whatever it was, it had been amazing. Thirty minutes later, they arrived at her townhome. Thanks again, she said, before shutting the door firmly behind her. Scar wanted to bang on the door and demand that the woman hang out with him. He thought better of it, turning and staring at the ocean, feeling like he'd seen it for the first time. Chapter 10 Shayla lay in bed, staring out the window at the waves. It had been one of the things she wanted, a room with a view of the ocean. Although her mind wasn't anywhere near sleep, she realized it was almost midnight. She couldn't get Scar's face out of her mind, nor the way his gray t-shirt had stretched across his shoulders, and the way his bicep, tricep, and all the other muscles she didn't know how to pronounce had stretched and contracted. The guy was ripped, and she thought she'd seen some tattoos on the edge of his shirt line. Her thoughts went back and forth between Scar and Jason. She noticed Jason had tried to call her back a day later. It was strange how, even though part of her still loved Jason, tonight she wasn't hoping he'd show up. Stupidly happy that she wasn't pining over Jason, she stared at the moon without really seeing it. Her phone buzzed. Turning on her side, she checked it. Sure enough, it was Scar. Are you awake? Happy he was texting her, but not wanting to seem overeager, she texted him back. Quit texting me. You like it. Why was he so perceptive? She tried to quell the manic butterflies in her stomach. He texted again. Can I call you? Ah. She didn't want to talk to him, didn't want to hear his sultry voice. She thought of the scar on his face and the dimple in that same cheek. Yes, she replied. Her phone rang. She let it ring three times before answering it. Hey. Hey, he said slowly. For a moment, neither of them spoke. It felt intimate. What are you doing? He asked. She had to smile because the question reminded her of conversations she'd had with boys in junior high school. She decided to be honest. Staring at the moon, thinking about everything. Hesitating, he said, I had fun tonight. Thanks for going on the bike ride. She felt bad because he'd paid for it, but they had both enjoyed themselves. She decided to ask her question anyway. You never told me the story of the scar. She snuggled into her pillow and shut her eyes. I didn't. His voice was wistful. She waited. Are you going to tell me? Are you going to say please? He said teasingly. She relented. Please, 
He cleared his throat like he was launching into a grand story. It was my second year in the SEALs, a special ops mission. I'm leaving out a lot of classified details, obviously. We landed on a pirate ship. A guy got me with a knife right down my face. She flinched. What? It was unbelievable enough to think he'd really been a special op SEAL, and even more unbelievable to think he'd had a knife cut down his face. I deserved it. I wasn't paying attention. He coughed. Never made that mistake again. He said it so dryly, so matter of fact. What happened to the other guy? When he didn't answer, she knew. You killed him? Not able to release that information. Her mind flitted with questions. How many people have you killed? He let out a short laugh. No way. Her heart thundered. She sat up in bed and turned on the bedside lamp. It was ludicrous to her that he'd killed someone. She thought of his eyes, the pain, the darkness, the walls in them. Holy. He was actually a government-trained soldier. He'd been deployed to keep the country safe. She pulled her knees up to her chest and ran a hand through her hair. We shouldn't talk about this. It's not exactly pillow talk, he said quietly. Pillow talk? You know, nighttime talk between couples. There's an old Rock Hudson and Doris Day movie about two people who meet because they share a party line. They bug each other and end up talking on the phone at night to each other. She frowned. You watch old movies? I can't watch an old movie, he sputtered. No, of course you can. I'm just trying to put you together. This guy, she said, rambling, who gets in a fight with the waitress over how much his eggs are cooked, who scares off a creeper at the sports bar, and who rushes over to save me from a wild possum. He sighed, but she could hear the smile in his voice. Well, we didn't know it was a possum. This same guy insists he pays for the bike ride around the island and watches old movies. This same guy also orders me to have dinner with him as if he couldn't get a million dates. Oops. The words were out before her brain could catch up. A million might be high, but at least 500,000. Okay, she'd asked for that. Who is annoying and cocky, too. Kidding, sheesh, maybe just a couple of hundred. She laughed. Exactly. This is the same man who watches movies with the name Pillow Talk? She wondered where he was. Was he in bed? Sitting, standing, inside, outside? Completely distracted, she wondered if he had a shirt on, which was stupid. Why was she even thinking about that? My mother liked old movies. We watched a lot of them before my parents divorced. Again, she couldn't stop herself from prying. Is your mother in San Diego? Nope, he said quickly. She's dead. This was like a punch to the gut. I'm so sorry. It's fine. It was a long time ago. She didn't know what to say, but now she wondered what other problems he might have that she hadn't even imagined. I guess that was a conversation killer, he sighed again. It's what I do with women. Always know how to end the convo. I'm really good at that. It was funny to her that he sounded so military all of the time. It was also interesting to hear him sound vulnerable about women. She wasn't going to make fun of him for it at this moment. She wanted to ask something else. So how many conversations have you ended? Oh. Part of her wished they were in person right now so she could judge his body language. Part of her worried that maybe he was a player type. He did play professional football after all. I had a girl who broke my heart after high school. She dear johned me after my first year in the SEALs. Said she found someone else. Ouch. Yeah. I also had a woman I dated for about six months last year who told me she wouldn't stay with me if I didn't get rid of the scar. No. He let out what sounded like an awkward laugh. Maybe you don't want to date a Scarface either. No, she said quickly. I mean, I never said I would date you. Her heart raced. Did this fabulous-looking, older, slightly intimidating guy really want to date her? 
but that has nothing to do with the scar. He roared with laughter. Before she could fully recover and figure out what to say, he asked, so what's the deal with you, Kansas girl? She turned off the light and lay back down, wondering why the nickname was growing on her. Hold on. She snuggled and lay back in bed, pulling the covers up. Are you getting comfy? His tone had turned softer. Yeah, I'm lying in bed pulling the covers up. That sounds nice. Where are you? In bed, on top of the covers. Don't ask what I'm wearing. Rolling her eyes, she laughed. Ha ha. Now all she could think about was what he was wearing. She wanted to ask if he had a shirt on, but she wouldn't. I don't have my shirt on. She giggled. Why would you say that? He laughed. Because you were wondering. No, I wasn't. She denied it, glad they weren't face to face, so he didn't have to see her turning red. Gym shorts. She didn't comment on that, but knew her face was flaming red. It was weird he'd said it, like he was responding to her thoughts. She shook herself. He was probably wondering what she was wearing. Grandma nightgown, bunny slippers, and hair rollers. It was what her grandma always wore. He laughed. Okay, guess that's the visual I'll have of you. Good, you should have that visual. Fair enough. He hummed. Tell me more about you, please. Shayla collected her thoughts. As you kind of know, my parents are both farmers. Mom stayed home, but really worked side by side with dad. I have one older brother and one younger one. They love torturing me. This elicited a laugh. I don't know why I told you that. Pillow talk, he responded like that should explain it all. Right. Continue. It was actually relaxing, she realized, not to have to worry about being close to him. He was so distracting when he was around. She thought of the dog tags he wore around his neck and the way his jaw had clenched when he'd thought there was an intruder. She thought about how she was talking to him like this on the phone. Kansas, keep going. I, she hesitated. As you know, I had a boyfriend I thought supported my dream. Right, the boyfriend. She quickly added, not that that's relevant. He didn't speak right away. After a brief pause, he said, I'm sorry about your boyfriend. It's hard to be alone and start over. You're living your dream, though. You should be proud. A skittering laugh came out of her. I don't know if proud is how I feel at the moment. Just trying to keep my head above water. Make a few bucks waitressing, get through the summer class and keep the local possum from killing me. You're doing good. It was stupid, but hearing those words actually made her tear up. I miss my parents. She felt weak admitting it. Which is funny because I fought with my dad about coming and doing this for forever. He thinks I should still be in school in Kansas and then marry Jason and relocate to our hometown, work in HR at the local power plant and have a passel of kids. She sighed. I don't know why I'm telling you that. There was no answer for a bit. I shouldn't be talking about... He interrupted. Do you want that? What? No. But no one else understands, she said quietly. You're doing exactly what you should be doing. I know. I know you know, but you're doubting yourself. Stop doing that. It made her smile. He sounded commanderish. Thanks. Her voice cracked. I just hope this is what God wants me to be doing. Another long pause ensued. She wondered if he even believed in God. Well, Kansas, why don't you ask him? What? Pray, silly. He said the last word quietly. It made her smile. He had a soft side. There was another moment of silence. I better go, she said slowly. I have to get up at five. Why did she feel like she owed him an explanation? It was strange. This thing between them was completely new for her. I'll see you tomorrow, he said casually. Would she see him tomorrow? Sounds good. Night, he said.
Nein. Chapter 11 Scar walked into the diner, nervous flutters pulsing through him. Would he be lying to say he'd gone right to sleep? Yes, the truth was that when he'd gotten off the phone, his mind had been going a million miles an hour, circling around this sweet girl who cared if she was doing what God wanted her to do with her life. He'd been raised Catholic before his mother passed. He was 14 at the time and never really practiced, blaming God for the whole fiasco. After some of his missions, he had gone to confession. Truthfully, it was the only thing that had helped with all the secrecy and the... He shuddered, thinking about the hard things he'd had to do. As he got to the host station, he gave Bob a half grin. Same seat today, sir? Bob asked. Scar nodded and Bob moved him to the normal seat overlooking the ocean. He couldn't see Shayla. He sat and didn't pick up the menu. Bob was back with a glass of lemon water. The usual? Scar looked around. Where's Shayla? The manager grinned. She had car trouble today, so she had to deal with that. Scar hesitated only briefly, then stood. When did she call in? He hit Bob with one of his tell-me-or-die looks. Bob put his hands up. About 5.30. It was 7.30 now, and Scar knew she had a class she couldn't miss. He moved past Bob. Rain check, Bob. I'll be back tomorrow. Scar pulled up to her townhome and saw her beneath the car, a jack holding it up. It all looked very precarious, and like the car would tumble down on top of her in one crushing blow. Parking, he bolted from his car and jogged to her. Kansas, what are you doing? He asked, bending to try to see. Her feet stuck out from below the car. What are you doing here? She hollered. He dropped down into a push-up position and stared at her. I'm here to help you. She made a face. I got it handled. He could see the oil pan was about to drop right on her. Forgetting about keeping himself clean, he edged his way beneath the car, catching the oil pan right as it started falling. She looked at him, with oil smudged on her face, and let out a little amazed giggle. You totally just saved me. Again. Liking the way she said saved more than he wanted to, he waved her away. I thought you had a flat tire out. Why are you doing the oil? I fixed the tire. Then I thought I should change the oil filter while I was under here. He sighed. Farm girls. It was great that she wanted to do it by herself, but it was obvious she needed help. Move, Kansas. At first, she glared at him, but then she sighed. Are you sure? I can't pay you. Don't you know that God helps good people? She gave him a quizzical look. Like you. With a furrowed brow, she scooted herself out. You say it so angrily. Quickly, he finished changing the oil filter. It had been a long time since he'd done mechanical work on his cars but he'd grown up fixing everything mechanical, so it came back fast. When he came out, she looked him up and down, frowning. How did you not get any on you? She asked like he'd performed a rare magic trick. Talent, Kansas. Talent. He flashed her a grin. Thank you, she said softly, sincerely. He couldn't explain what it meant to him to have a woman truly appreciate such a simple thing he'd done. Just one look into her gorgeous green eyes told him this woman cared about whether or not God liked what she was doing with her life. She was heartbroken from being broken up with by her boyfriend. She was stunningly beautiful, even when she clearly had no makeup on. At that moment, he wanted to pull her in and kiss her. Sorry, she said awkwardly, and he realized her eyes were on his bicep. He did the only thing he could think of to take the awkwardness away. He flexed. Check me out, no problem. Letting out a nervous laugh, she gave him a little push. Please. We'll see if you can push me around. He mock stormed over to her and picked her up, putting her over his shoulder. She giggled and fought him. Stop. Thought you said you had brothers who tortured you. I guess they didn't do it right if you can't get out of this. She laughed harder and flailed. He was having too much fun, even though he kind of felt like an idiot. 
seriously, put me down. He had another idea. With her hoisted over his shoulder, he took off, heading toward the beach. Let's wash this oil off. She shrieked and laughed. No, stop. He went in like he was running the field for a touchdown, taking her all the way into the ocean and then thrusting her off of him. She yelled and splashed in the water. Coming up, she glared at him, but couldn't cover the laugh bubbling from her lips. Dang, she was glorious with all the water dripping off of her. She shoved him, which didn't matter. He didn't move, but gave her a cocky smile. That's how a quarterback gets it done. She laughed again and bent, splashing him. A huge splash. All he could do was stare at her, and she stopped splashing. The air between them sizzled with tension. For a few moments, they both stood there, staring into each other's eyes. Scar didn't know how this had happened, but he was into this girl, really into her. He needed to take a step back, though. She had just broken up with her boyfriend, and she was so young. Narrowing her eyes, she put her chin into the air. Are you going to kiss me, or just brag over there? The nerve of this girl taunting him made him laugh. He'd been holding back because he didn't want to go too fast for her. He could still tell he shouldn't go too fast. Actually, he didn't want to. Cocking an eyebrow, he said, The question is, are you going to kiss me? A spark of fire lit in her eyes. He realized a challenge was exactly what this girl wanted. She stood right outside of kissing reach, staring up at him. His heart raced. Every part of him felt alive, awake, ready for anything. He could smell something fruity wafting off her. A lemon scent, probably. She closed the gap between them and gently put a hand on his face, leaning up. Unable to not do anything else, he gave in to this snaking an arm around her waist and pulled her closer. But he didn't kiss her. He waited. Moving her hand behind his head, she gently brought his face down to hers. Their lips met. Hers were soft and tasted like mint gum. Her other hand gripped his t-shirt. Every part of him reacted to her. He had to force himself to keep the kiss sweet and tender because she was like sweet sorbet ice cream on a hot day that you tasted and then shoved the whole thing inside your mouth. The brain freeze wasn't worth it, though. No, he didn't want any sort of brain freeze with this woman. She tugged back and her face clouded. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I did that. He wasn't letting her off the hook. I can he pulled her closer, kissing her again, wanting to claim her. She gave in, and he felt his world shift. Yes, he was being that cheesy. The feel of her body against his was incredible, like the perfect mission completed, like the perfect pass to the end zone. Finally, she pulled back, staring into his eyes. Her breath tickled his throat. You're leaving, and I'm staying. It was funny at this moment that Scar wanted to blurt, I'll stay. Just like that. Of course he didn't, because she was right. He was just here temporarily. You're right. I'm leaving. Tugging free of him, she gave him a slow smile and turned and started walking out of the ocean. I have to get cleaned up and get to class. He followed slowly, feeling like an idiot. Didn't he have meetings this morning? Lunch with his brother later? Except he was here, and he didn't want this to end. He tromped after her faster, not quite catching up to her. Wait, when? She hurried across the street and waved at him. Call me for pillow talk. And she rushed up the stairs of her townhome and disappeared. Chapter 12 what was Shayla doing? Kissing a hot former Navy SEAL? A pro football player? Who was she? Not to mention the fact he was only here temporarily. She sat in her English class and listened to the professor discussing the requirements for their last paper, focusing on the timeless virtues of the Odyssey. Their last paper was picking a character in the book and doing an in-depth study on why the character's flaws outweighed their strengths 
and how that was important in the hero story genre. Her thoughts kept going back to Scar, to the soft kiss, to his hard muscles that held her, to the way he'd insisted on fixing her oil filter. When she'd come out to go to class, her car had been lifted off the jack, and all the tools were neatly placed right next to her passenger side door. A gentleman. It felt weird to have a near stranger taking care of her. How he just came and helped her was crazy. Once again, she was distracted by thoughts of how his muscles felt against his shirt. Her boyfriend Jason had been everything to her, but she couldn't remember feeling all this chemistry between them. Had they ever had that? She didn't know. For heaven's sake, she'd kissed him for the first time in eighth grade, so she didn't remember feeling this. She thought of Scar, of the power in his body, the toughness in his eyes. She wanted to know more about him. It dawned on her that she really didn't know him at all. She wanted to know so much more. How had it happened that she'd been thrown together with this jerk of a guy from the diner? Good thing he'd ordered the wrong eggs. She smiled, thinking of telling him this. After her class, she went to the library and tried to get the paper going. After two hours, she decided she couldn't finish it. She was three pages into a ten-page paper, and she couldn't focus on anything but Scar. Walking quickly across campus, she looked forward to pillow talk tonight. Truly, she would love to have more time to talk to him and get to know him, but it was pointless, right? The underlying feeling she had was that he wasn't in San Diego for long. Taking a turn down an alley, she felt that weird feeling hit her in the center of her chest. It stunned her for a second. Then she sped up her walk, turning it into a jog. She had to get to the end of the alley. There weren't any other people here. She sped up even more, but halted when she saw a guy who seemed to be locking a door. He was jiggling the doorknob with some keys. She was almost past when the guy turned and their eyes connected. It was the guy from the night at the sports bar. The creeper from the diner. The one who had grabbed her before Scar had stopped it. He narrowed his eyes. Turning around, she jetted back the way she had come. Gotta meet my boyfriend, she yelled out, feeling erratic and stupid. She kicked it up a notch. She didn't stop, just got to the end of the alley, turned and booked it back toward the library. The feeling of fight or flight was so strong, she didn't want to look back. When she got to the library, she turned. No one there. Her heart hammered wildly as she rushed up the steps and went inside, making for the third floor where she'd found a good place to study quietly. When she got there, she sucked in a few breaths, telling herself it meant nothing. He hadn't been following her. He'd been coming out of a door in the alley. Still, she couldn't convince herself it was a coincidence. Without knowing why she did it, she texted Scar. Just saw the weirdo from the other night at the sports bar. Not even two seconds later, he texted back. Are you okay? She breathed in and out slowly. Yes. Where are you? She could envision him, agitated with his muscles flexing. It made her feel better to have someone to tell, even though she didn't want to be a weakling. Why had she told him? At the community library on campus, I'm fine. After a couple of seconds, he replied, I'm coming. She felt like an idiot, but knowing he was on his way did help her feel calmer. Only 20 minutes later, she saw Scar coming through the library. She stood every part of her feeling lighter. When he saw her, he pulled her in for a hug. I'm sorry, it was probably nothing, she said, feeling stupid. He stared into her eyes. What happened? She related to him what happened. Scar looked like he wanted to rip someone's head off. She knew he could do it, too. Where was he? Gathering up her stuff and her courage, she took him back to the door where she had seen the guy. Scar looked around, kicking the debris in the alley, looking like a cop. Actually, like a Navy SEAL on a mission. Swerving his eyes back to her, he asked, do you have any idea what his name is or what he does? No, I shouldn't have even brought you here. He stepped closer and took her hand. I'm glad you did. Regret washed over her. Scar, you're not staying in San Diego. 
I'm here right now. He pulled her into him, hugging her. She was lost in the scent of his cologne. It smelled like the ocean, which would sound utterly ridiculous if she said it out loud. Not to mention the fact that she and Jason had only been broken up a month ago, and it had not been her decision. Releasing her, he asked, What time are you done here? It annoyed her that he appeared to care about her so much. It bugged her even more that she liked it. I've already taken up your day with my oil filter and now this. He winked at her. I've got it handled. She sighed. I should finish my last paper. It's due in two days. Can you be done for today? He asked, looking so sincere. She wanted to say yes, but it unnerved her that she felt so attracted to him. She knew she didn't want to get too close to him. Hadn't she had enough heartbreak? I should stay and get a couple of more pages done. He hesitated and looked at her lips, then back to her eyes. Her heart pounded and she thought he might kiss her, but he pulled his hand back, tapping on his phone. I have a couple of things to handle too. I'll call you later for pillow talk. It felt personal the way he said it and the way his eyes twinkled. Okay. She pulled away, hauling her backpack over her shoulder and rushing away. Wait. She looked up and once again was taken aback by her attraction to him. His blonde hair fell into his eyes. His tan skin and the scar on his face made him look like amazing. He was beautiful. I'll walk you back, he said. When they got to the library, she turned and was about to wave goodbye when his arm slipped around her waist and pulled her in. His lips kind of slammed into hers. It caught her off guard and she laughed against his lips. His hands were firm on her back, pulling her closer. He took her by surprise again, deepening the kiss. It was like one of those moments in a movie when the girl goes weak in the knees and puts up her foot in complete... What? Bliss? All sorts of warmth rushed through her at the way this man held her like he already owned her. Just as quickly, he pulled back and gave her a peck on the cheek, his sharp eyes already evaluating her reaction. Shayla couldn't help but laugh. I told you we can't do this. I heard you, he smirked. She shook her head, unable to deny the power of this attraction between them. Scar sighed. Are you going to eat at some point tonight? Can I take you out? She didn't know what to do. No, I don't. She trailed off. He kept her hand inside of his. Look, the truth is that I'm dying for a home-cooked meal. Would you mind if I bought a couple of things and made dinner for us at your house? What? She was confused. He wanted to cook for her. I try to eat clean, and it's hard when you're going out every meal, so it would be a favor to me. His puppy eyes blinked dramatically. She laughed, unable to say no. Picking up her keys, she pulled the house one off. Fine, cook, but I'm doing the dishes. Don't even try to argue. He didn't respond right away. She thought he might kiss her again, but he only cocked an eyebrow as he took her key. Can you be home at seven? Okay, she put up a hand. I don't have a lot of food, sorry. A grin spread across his face. No problem. See you in a bit. Chapter 13 Scar stood in Shayla's townhome, breathing in the smell of scallop sautéing. The protein noodles were warm and ready, waiting with the broccoli he'd cut and cooked. It was one of the easy dinners he would serve with a low-carb sauce. It was delicious, if he did say so himself. After leaving Shayla at the school, he'd concocted a plan. Not only did he want to cook for her, but he wanted to show her San Diego. She said her class was done in two days. If she had a couple of days free, he'd fill them to the brim with her bucket list. His mind flitted to kissing Shayla. How amazing it felt holding her in his arms. He wouldn't deny the fact he liked that she'd texted him when she was afraid. It made him feel needed. 
It was in his nature to help people. When they acknowledged they wanted him to help, it was deeply satisfying. He thought about how he could possibly stay in San Diego. What if he stayed to run the new gym? There were a lot of vets between the naval bases in the area. The vets were here in droves because of the beach. Could he stay? Run this program full time? Supervise the others? Granted, he would have to float the idea by the Kincaids, but it could work. There was also football to consider. Could he quit? If someone would have told him a week ago that he would be thinking about quitting, he would have told them no way. Everything had changed in just a few days. Shaking his head, he tried to focus on making dinner. He had made a salad and noodles as well. When he'd stopped at Vaughn's, he'd thought about her food situation, so he'd decided to stock her up, whether she liked it or not. This girl needed help. He thought of what he knew about her. Her parents weren't happy she was living the dream, and they didn't have money. He was proud of the fact she was doing what she wanted. He wasn't happy with the fact she had poor security, and she obviously didn't have skills to defend herself. He had taken measures to fix the security but they had to deal with the fighting skills still. He wandered over to the bucket list wall and looked at the list. With the pencil in his fingers, he boldly did something he probably shouldn't do. He added things. Just three. Biking around Mission Beach. Yes, that was a must as long as she had the list. Lunch at Dana Landing Deli. A whale-watching tour on a cruise ship. He thought of his brother and wondered what he would say when he asked to borrow the ship. Probably fall over dead. Hearing her pull up, he felt nervous, which was odd. After being a SEAL, then playing professional football, he didn't get nervous anymore. He had taught himself a long time ago how to be calm in every situation, but this woman had done things to him in such a short time. He didn't think he liked it. Yet here he was, waiting with dinner for her. Who was he? When she walked inside the house, her face was agog. What? She stared down at the new lock. You did all this? Not knowing if that made her happy or mad, he stepped toward her, deciding to face whatever her reaction would be. I changed the door locks and window locks. He pointed to a camera in the keyhole. I installed this so you can know who is at the door before you open it. I also put cameras on both sides of the house that we can hook to an app on your phone. Looking dumbfounded, she held his eyes for a second, then turned and saw the dinner on the table. She blinked. Her bottom lip trembled. Why did you do this? He couldn't stop himself from pulling her into him. She tensed as if trying to stop him, but let him hug her. He loved the feel of her and her lemon scent. He put his chin over her head. It felt like her head fit perfectly into the hollow between his chin and chest. She didn't stay long before pulling back, searching his eyes. I don't understand why you did all this. The intensity of his feelings was so powerful, it took his breath away. I wanted to. I don't want you to worry someone is going to get in. I want you to feel safe here. I wanted to make you dinner, and you didn't have much food, so I hope you don't mind. I bought a few extras. A tear trickled down her cheek. Looking at her, he knew he had already fallen hard for this girl. Her innocence and purity, the way she cried simply because he cooked for her and changed her locks. He thought of the last woman he'd dated. She had been so ungrateful. She hadn't cared about any gesture he made, not even when he bought her a car. He could well imagine how she would have reacted to him changing the oil and making dinner. Putting down her backpack, Shayla went to the cupboards, inspected the contents, and shook her head. Why? Thinking about how he'd actually been whistling in the store earlier as he'd bought all the provisions, he decided he liked the look on her face. Maybe he even needed the way she was looking at him like he was really Superman and had saved the world. He spread his hands. 
because I can help. She turned back to him and sniffed. Thank you. He wanted to go to her and hug her again, but he felt he should wait. I have a confession. Oh no, here it comes. She is still with the boyfriend. Please no. I asked God the morning I met you to help me. To help me get money for food and to make a friend. She sniffed. I guess he never fails us. He was torn. On one hand, he liked the idea of being the answer to her prayers. On the other, he really didn't like the word friend. Not after the kisses they'd shared. But he would be patient. It wasn't his shtick to be patient. But he guessed God seemed to be teaching him patience time and again. He thought of his injury in the Navy and then of getting picked up by the Titans as practice quarterback. He was almost there, but not quite. He didn't want the almost anymore. He grinned. Should we eat? Letting out a light laugh, she nodded and then wiped beneath her eyes. It smells great. After saying grace and dishing up, she looked at him and smiled, not eating. He held a bite of scallops almost to his lips. Eat. Still smiling, she picked up her spoon and scooped some up. They took a bite at the same time. Elation washed over her face, and she moaned as she savored the taste. She chewed and swallowed. Oh my gosh, this is so good. He swallowed and smiled at her. I am to please. She pointed at him with her fork. I never would have guessed that about you the day I met you. Scar Walker, these are the best scallops I have ever had. She took another bite, and her face positively glowed with delight. He narrowed his eyes at her. Is this the first time you've ever had scallops? He knew the Midwest didn't get scallops easily, and they weren't cheap. She laughed. Is it that obvious? She took another bite, and her eyes sparkled. They continued eating the meal, with her ooing and dying over every bite, which positively tickled him. Finally, she pushed the plate away and put her hands to her stomach. So full, so good. Thank you. He copied the gesture and just watched her. She looked so relaxed and happy. He thought about how she would look after every new experience. He pitched his plan slowly, focusing on a soft presentation so he didn't scare her away. I was wondering if we could talk about something, something that I know you probably won't want to let me do. A look of confusion, then shock, crossed her face. She got up to leave. I don't think it's the right time to talk about what I think you're talking about. Wait, no. Alarm jolted him to his feet. Not that. I'm sorry if I gave off the impression. I'm not, I haven't, I've never. I mean, that's kind of what Jason was so mad about. He felt like I never would do that with him, and how could he come with me or marry me unless we had? What was she talking about? Scar ran a hand through his hair. Was she saying that she'd never? Her cheeks were aflame as she turned away from him, totally nervous. I'm sorry. This had just gotten more extreme than a reality show. Shayla, listen, first, I wasn't talking about having sex with you. I wouldn't ask something like that after doing something for you. That would never be an exchange type of thing for me. He was getting this whole thing wrong. I mean, I wouldn't anyway. Whirling back, her cheeks went even deeper red. I didn't think... She swept her hand up and down in the air. This got weird, and that's on me. Sorry. She wandered away to the front room, looking out the window at the ocean. You're just so much older and good-looking and sophisticated, and you probably have had lots of... She trailed off. Inhaling deeply, he knew this was the time to straighten this all out, but he had to be careful about it. She was different than the women he'd hung out with. That's what he liked about her. Shayla, listen, you, I didn't, you think I'm good looking? Dang, he really did sound like a teenage boy looking for a compliment. Turning back to him, she gave him a shy smile. 
Don't act like you're not. He couldn't stop himself from moving to her, wrapping his arms around her waist and pulling her close. He smelled her hair. I'm not that much older. He felt like he was pleading with her. She let out a light laugh and turned in his arms. Unable to resist, he kissed her, lightly brushing his lips to hers. Keep it light, keep it innocent, keep it together, man. She kept her arms around his shoulders. I don't even think it's the years. It's just, you've seen a lot of life. He couldn't deny she was right. He had seen a lot of life compared to her. Is that good or bad? She gave him an innocent look. You tell me. He shrugged, thinking about some of the horrible, some of the awesome. Both. Shayla frowned a little. She gazed out at the street, saying nothing. He thought of going on the bike ride all over the island with her the other night. Then he thought of today, how he'd rushed with her into the ocean and they'd splashed around. Yes, they'd kissed, but it was more than that. Fun, he finally said. Fun? She turned to him, looking at him with suspicion in her eyes. I realize that I'm kind of a cynical guy. Her body relaxed a little. That's an interesting word for you. He grinned, liking that she'd relaxed. You see, you have this bucket list for San Diego. You have your last paper due the day after tomorrow. I was thinking if you wanted, I could rearrange my schedule and we can do your list. She looked confused again. Together, he said slowly. Why would you want to do that? He wanted to say, because you're the first woman I've met in forever who makes me want to talk to her until all hours of the night and who I deeply respect and with whom I could easily fall in love, that I think I have fallen in love with. Instead, he said, because it's been a long time since I've just had fun, since I've done something like the bike ride the other night, since I got to see San Diego through someone else's eyes. I liked it. I want more of that. Searching his face for a bit, she narrowed her eyes. Scar, I told you, I just got out of a relationship, and I admit, I googled you. She pulled back. You're kind of a... You've been on a lot of dates. Scar knew exactly what she was talking about. In fact, part of him felt ashamed of it. I've dated a lot of women, he said reluctantly. I haven't been serious with any of them. That's okay, that's just not what I want. I would never want you to get those signals from me. In this moment, he admired her more than any woman he could remember dating. She was sweet and innocent, but also firm about her standards. Firm enough to get her here, even though she was obviously running on fumes for money. From one soldier to another, who had given up a lot of his dreams in his life. He suddenly got her. He nodded and put up his hands. I promise, I'll be a total gentleman. She hedged. I... Come on. I even added three things in pencil to your list. Frowning, she rushed to the list on the wall and inspected what he'd added. You'll love those, I promise. The bike ride around Mission Bay is awesome. The deli you can't miss, and... He swallowed. My family owns the tour company. What? She asked incredulously. Your family? He shrugged and looked away, wondering if telling her was a good idea. My brother's been hounding me forever to come back and take part ownership. I don't want to do that. We should do the tour. It's cool. I'm pretty sure I can get you the private tour. Thinking all this might make her happy, he thought it a lock. Of course she would say yes. To his surprise, she shook her head. I can't. I'm sorry, I really appreciate all of this, but I can't. Grabbing her hand, he said, why not? I'm just gonna say it. Her face clouded with embarrassment. What? Scar, let me be clear. I have money saved. 
Money I scrimped for the last three years that will maybe get me through two years at San Diego State. And that's crossing my fingers I'll get some scholarship money. But I don't have money for all of this fun. I wish I did. Unfortunately, after fixing the tire and buying a new one, I don't have extra money. I probably need to pick up extra shifts at the diner the rest of the summer. No. He took her hand again, but let it go when she looked down at their hands together. Please, let this be something we do and remember for the rest of our lives. I'm thinking we could do most of this in five days. Five awesome days full of experiences around San Diego. Please, just let me pay. I won't go fancy over the top. Let me pay because I can. He put his hand up. I don't have many expenses. I don't live at the Hotel del Coronado most of the time. I have a modest home in Dallas, but the foundation is paying for my expenses while I travel. Shaking her head, she let out a cough. No, no way. I wasn't raised like that. There's no way I could do that. She turned to the kitchen. Look at what you've already bought. Look at the extra food. Plus, you did my oil filter and came to the school, which was stupid. Scar swallowed his frustration, forcing himself to not push. Well, how about just Tory Pines tomorrow? I saw that on your list, and I know the best trail. It's ten bucks, so let me give you the tour. Cocking an eyebrow, she narrowed her eyes. I know it costs ten bucks. I just haven't had a minute to drive up there and haven't known... Then tomorrow morning, eight sharp. He grinned and started for the door, not accepting no. Wait, I... He put up a hand and turned to her, knowing this would be the only way to get what he wanted. It was funny how much he really did want this. It would be rude to tell a guest who just made you dinner and bought you groceries no. She hedged. Great. Wait, she said, making him pause with his hand on the doorknob. I actually just realized I don't have to work in the morning, but I'll only go if you agree this isn't a date. I can't be kissing you. I'm not that girl. I mean, what's wrong with kissing me? She blushed. Nothing. I just don't want this to be some fling. The way she said it, like he was Dracula and she was some innocent he would suck the blood out of and toss away, made him wince. I don't think of you that way. She sighed, running a hand through her hair. I just feel a bit like my head is spinning at the moment. Weighing his options, he relented. Friends, then, he said and kept the door open, knowing full well he didn't want just friendship with this woman. He put on a flashy smile, the kind he wore for the media. Eight? A small smile crept onto her lips. Eight, but I have to be back by three so I can finish the paper tomorrow evening. See you then. They said goodnight, and he rushed down the steps of the townhome and put both fists into the air like the Titans had just driven a fourth quarter touchdown through the Denver storm. Yeah! He heard the crowds yelling in his mind. Chapter 14 Shayla lay in her bed once again not sleeping, just looking at the ocean. After Scar had left, she'd just stood there. It was funny how he'd gone down her steps and thrown his hands up in the air and acted like he'd won the championship game or something. It made her stomach flip-flop. Scar seemed so much older than her, so grown up. Not at all like Jason, who had looked so young when he told her he couldn't move away from their small town. Her phone buzzed, and her stomach flipped again, thinking it would be Scar. It was only 10.30, though, kind of early for him. When she turned her phone over, she paused upon seeing the text from Jason. Hey. Her heart thumped. She thought about how she didn't even want to talk to him, which was weird. He'd always been her safe place. How long had she waited and waited and waited for him to call or text or something? How many nights had she wished he was here? She'd loved him, trusted him. Once again, she weighed how she felt around Jason and how she felt around Scar. There was no comparison. The thing was, 
As she'd retraced the details of the months leading up to moving, she realized he'd never been planning on going. He'd never worried about where they would live or what job he would get. Why hadn't she seen it? He texted her again. Shay, talk to me. The very center of her being hurt just thinking of him. At least it wasn't as bad as before. Before, she'd cried and cried and cried, barely able to go through with it all. The silver lining was that she'd made all the plans. She hadn't had to think about it. She'd just had to follow through. It had been hard enough leaving her family. They'd all distanced themselves from her a bit. She'd been alone. Wanting to think about something else, she texted Scar. Tori Pines. She'd done a lot of research on the hiking paths there. It was kind of a ritzier part of San Diego by La Jolla, but open to the public. It would be busy this time of year, but she didn't care. He texted back. Pillow talk time? Warmth settled in her stomach as she pressed his number. He answered on the first ring. Tory Pines, baby. It made her smile to hear him say it like an announcer. I'm excited she admitted. He let out a soft laugh. Obviously you're excited since you texted me and then actually called me. That's a big deal, dream girl. Dream girl? He sighed and she heard a rustle over the phone. It sounded like he was getting into bed. I decided you needed a nickname other than Kansas, and I think it's appropriate. Maybe not that creative, but it kind of defines you, right? The girl who leaves her small town to follow her dreams. Works three years and saves, no less. Remarkable. She snorted. I'm not feeling so remarkable. Could we not talk about leaving my small town? Okay, he said. We could talk about how the dream girl could also mean something to others that say they want to date you. The butterflies that constantly plagued her when she was around him or talking to him flared up. She couldn't help but be flattered. Not that I have bad self-esteem or anything. I'm just saying you could probably have your pick in women. She let out a slow sigh. Strike that. I shouldn't have said that. I think your ego is already inflated. I shall strike it from the record, he said in a British voice. Counselor, let the record show that was properly struck. The girl thinks he's a catch, but we're striking that. She laughed now. He was funny. Feeling herself relax, she closed her eyes. So why did you call Dream Girl? Not wanting to tell him the truth, she simply said, Pillow talk is nice. Ah. She could hear him take in a deep breath. Yes, it is. Then she had a thought. Did you pillow talk with lots of women? As soon as she blurted it out, she wanted to take the question back. He hesitated. No. Well, like I mentioned, I had a girlfriend for six months recently, but she wasn't a pillow talk kind of girl. This took her by surprise. She wanted to ask for more details. Had he lived with her? Had he loved her? No, we didn't live together. Yes, there were other things happening. Again, it was like he could read her thoughts. She squirmed, embarrassed. Obviously, he wasn't a virgin. I wanted to marry her, but I told you about how she didn't like my face. He said it bluntly. The woman you dated was stupid. I really like your face. He roared out a laugh. I will keep that on the record. Thank you. He sighed. It's fine, because life sucks, then you die. That's what my dad used to say. That statement sucks, she said, hating it, but recognizing its truth. For the past month, she'd been feeling bad for herself, thinking that pain was only in her life, no one else's. Yeah, it does. She thought about his life. Once again, she found herself wanting to know more about him. Good night, dream girl. Even though she didn't like the name, she didn't want to fight it. Good night, seal guy. He let out a light laugh. Is that my nickname? I don't know. 
It didn't fit, but she'd picked it off the top of her head. I guess we can work that out tomorrow, too. Okay. Night. Okay. Neither of them hung up. At least, she didn't think he did. Shayla? Yeah? You're supposed to hang up. So are you. She closed her eyes, enjoying the sound of him breathing. Okay. He didn't speak for a bit. Should we just go to bed on the phone? Uh-huh, she said without thinking about it. Then she turned on her side. Okay. She wasn't sure how long she sat on the phone with him, but she didn't remember falling asleep either. Chapter 15 When they arrived at Tory Pines, Scar turned to Shayla grinning and unbelievably happy that she let him bring her here. She was staring out over the parking lot, which gave a clear view of the ocean. It's so beautiful. Even though I live right by the ocean, this just feels so magnificent. The forest on one side, the ocean on the other. He watched her, then turned to look at the ocean through her eyes. It is magnificent. He'd forgotten to look at the beauty of San Diego. How many years ago? Granted, he didn't come to San Diego very often anymore. Wouldn't even be here if it wasn't for his project. But it was awesome. She stared out. The waves were crashing in hard. The tide sprang against the large rocks on the beach. There weren't too many people out yet, and he wanted to get up on the path before the crowds came. Come on. He opened his door and ran around to open hers. Smiling, she opened it at the same time that he arrived. Well, I guess you're a gentleman, even though this isn't really a date, right? Friends? Of course. He shut the door and went to the back of the car to retrieve the backpack he'd packed for the day. I always open the door, just so we're clear. Plus, this was really a date. At least it was to him. They started up the path, pausing every few minutes, when she said, Oh my gosh, I have to take a picture of this tree. Other times it was, Look at the view from over here. Finally, they fell into an easy rhythm, and he started to do what she had done. Look at every little thing and admire it. He found himself loving her fresh perspective more and more. Thinking she would like the flowers ahead, he told her to give him her phone. You're going to want a picture of the magnolia tree up ahead. Her eyes widened. What? And so close. I can stand right next to it without trespassing onto someone's yard. She handed over her camera and ran to the tree, reaching up to let the leaves tickle her fingers. Don't pick anything. There's actually a fine for that in California. He waved a finger at her. Really? She stuck out her lower lip and focused on the magnolia leaves looking totally, completely kissable at the moment. Boy, did he want to kiss her. After he took a picture of her, she asked, Will you be in a selfie with me? Pausing only for a second, he turned, hoping all the satisfaction he felt wouldn't show on his face and leave him transparent to her. Okay, let's get together. They positioned themselves in the camera and smiled. He found himself really liking this. He snapped the photo and gave the phone back, and they started up the rest of the path. It only took them about an hour to hike to the view he wanted to show her. Oh my gosh, she said again, sounding so very Midwestern and touristy. He stared at her, his heart expanding in his chest. He thought again how attractive those freckles on her nose were, how her red hair was beautiful. She'd worn a large hat and sunglasses, her fairness and need to cover herself from the sun made him smile. What? She turned and observed him. He shook his head and stared at the view. Nothing. No, what were you thinking? Instead of bearing his heart, he pushed a strand of hair out of her face. I was just thinking that you naive tourists are all the same. She scoffed. Really? You don't find this beautiful? Nope. He lied, gesturing to the ocean. Just nature. 
She shoved him and he reflexively pulled her close. They were close enough to kiss again. For heaven's sake, he was a Navy SEAL. He was trained to resist all kinds of torture to prevent the leak of American secrets. He could resist this one girl. She stared at him. Tell me more about you. What? His thoughts scattered like Yahtzee dice. Tell me about Scar Walker, Navy SEAL and professional athlete. You grew up in San Diego. Tell me the San Diego part. She gave him a smile. Imagine I'm doing your autobiography. He was flattered. Okay, but first, are you hungry? I brought sandwiches. Letting out a sigh, she said, No, I didn't want you paying for anything. Calm yourself, self-reliant master. It's just sandwiches from the gift shop at the hotel, and waters and two bags of chips. Reluctantly, he released her and pulled his pack off, taking out the sandwiches and handing one to her. She inspected it, even smelling it, which he found kind of funny. It's probably 15 bucks for this sandwich. How would you know that? He frowned, reluctant to admit she was right on the money. She let out a light laugh. Hotel del Coronado has been... I sometimes take breaks and go meander through all of the shops and pretend I'm staying there. Obviously, I couldn't afford it, but it's fun to pretend. He grinned, loving and hating this moment because once again, he thought about how good she was, how she'd worked so hard to be here. She pointed at him. What are you thinking? Nothing. No, you were definitely upset or something. He laughed and found himself saying, I just feel guilty because I've been so cynical about being in San Diego. Sure, I like Hotel del Coronado, but this is... My dream, she filled in. Yeah. She grinned back at him. It felt so pure and real and so different than with any other woman he'd dated. She said, You're living a dream and you didn't even know it. Unable to resist, he said softly, Being with you today feels more like the dream. She was looking at the view, but she caught his eyes and he saw her blush. Scar, don't do that. Waving a hand, he focused. Okay, let's eat. Then I can tell you my idea to show you the rest of the sights. No, she objected. I told you I'm not having you pay for them and I can't afford them. Giving her a wave, he said, open the sandwich and listen to my plan. Hesitantly, she unwrapped it. He was already wolfing his down. The protein shake he'd drunk before coming was not enough to fill him after his morning workout and the hike so far. Coyly, she took a bite of the sandwich, and he had an idea. He took out his phone and snapped her picture. No, she said, giggling. Yes, I must capture all of it, even the Coronado sandwich. Well, then you get in it. She leaned in and held his shoulder. Her scent hit him, the lemon and some other clean smell he couldn't pinpoint. It was a rush. They smiled as he took the picture, he loved the fact she was draped over his shoulder. She pulled back. Text those to me, please. He nodded. It was strange how affected he was by her. Okay, tell me the plan. Still bossy, just like the day when you brought me the wrong eggs. Looking aghast, she glared at him. You ordered the wrong eggs. Loving the feisty, he shook his head. No way, Kansas, no way. She pushed him, giving him the opening to pull her into his arms. Their breath mixed. Fire flashed in her eyes. Admit you ordered the wrong eggs. Cocking an eyebrow, he kept her close, and she didn't resist. I will for a kiss. You wish. He laughed, thinking it was worth a shot. He relented. If I did order the wrong eggs, I'm glad I did. Their eyes held. A small smile played at her lips. Get back to the plan. Okay. He sipped at his water, unable to contain his excitement. What if I kept my out-of-pocket under 50 bucks? Hmm? Come on, I know this place. Grew up here, surfed at the best places. Basically took it all for granted, remember? He pointed to himself. I'm the cynical one. 
She hesitated and he thought he might have her. Her lips pinched together. You can't do the things I want to do for under 50. He sighed. Fine, at least let me plan what we can do for under 50. You hand in your paper tomorrow and we can start in the afternoon. She bit her lip. I actually already told Bob I would work tomorrow afternoon. That's okay, he lied. What about other days? Mornings, afternoons? When do you start another class? She hesitated, letting his tension grow, and then grinned. Not for six weeks. He snapped his fingers. Perfect. I told my guys I'm taking some time off. I'll juggle the project and we'll go out when you aren't working. A small smile played at her lips. Okay, but only the free ones. Under 50, he countered. Listen, it's helping me too. Oh, right, because it's always a favor to you. She winked at him. He laughed. Yeah, I told you, I like helping people. She looked closer to agreeing, but shook her head. Look, I... She broke off, exhaling. It's not that I don't have any money for it. I have a lot of money saved up. How much? He was sure he had a couple million in a portfolio right now, but she wasn't the kind of girl you bragged to. She met his eyes. Forty grand. He let out a low whistle, feeling impressed. Putting up her hands, she shrugged. I worked at a coal mine and waitressed on my days off. I wanted it for my dream. That's cool he said, imagining how much she did have to work to earn that. And he realized why she was telling him. And you don't think I should spend money on you when you have money? She looked caught. Clearing his throat, he looked around, pointing to the ocean line. Did you know if you weren't here, I wouldn't even really look at the ocean line? I wouldn't even be here hiking today. She sighed. So... Come on, I'm already less cynical just hanging out with you. She rolled her eyes. I have money. I'm not letting you spend yours on me. I have plenty of money. Look, this makes me happy. Would you deny me the dream of hanging out with you for a couple of days? She puffed out a breath and shook her head. He squeezed her hand gently. I mean it. She let out a long wail. Fine, you've worn me down. Happy? Elated, he punched the air. She laughed. He pointed at her. Okay, Miss Castle, don't make plans for your off time because that time is mine. Grinning, she gave him a sideways look. How come you make that sound very intimidating? Whatever. Only if you tell me about where you grew up, she teased. That was easy. I grew up in Carlsbad. It's the not-so-ritzy part of San Diego. As you know, my mom left when I was 14, then died of cancer a year later. He shrugged, not liking to think about his mom. I'm sorry. He moved on. Dad ran the San Diego cruises. They do whale watching and other things. My dad was an alcoholic, and my brother and I pretty much ran the company until I graduated. I'm sorry, she said, compassion in her eyes. The side of his lip tugged up. Thanks, but it really doesn't bug me anymore. He sighed, feeling like he was misrepresenting himself. After I joined the Navy, my dad got sober. He and Stephen ran things until he died two years ago. When I came back, I just felt like... She squeezed his hand. Like you missed out. It took him by surprise she would be so attuned to that. He hadn't even realized it until she said it. I don't know. She waited. A bit uncomfortable, he broke from her and turned to face the beach, running his hand through his hair. He hadn't thought about it that way. It hurt you, she said, standing behind him. He couldn't speak. Had it hurt him? Maybe. He felt her hand on his shoulder, giving him the strength to continue. Dad passed just as I was getting discharged from the Navy. My brother really wanted me to stay, but I couldn't. Maybe... He broke off. It's okay, she said. He clenched a hand into a fist, 
not realizing all this emotion would be unearthed inside of him. I missed the best part. I missed the part where my dad was sober. I was mad, I have been mad at Stephen for that. It was crazy to have this epiphany. Her hand slipped into his again. I actually think you might be the dream guy. Gently, she put her hand on his face, tracing the scar. He closed his eyes, savoring her touch. There is so much inside of you. You give so much. You felt guilty for leaving your brother. But you also felt a bit jealous you didn't get to know your father when it was good. He nodded, unable to speak. There's a lot of pain beneath the visible scars. He blinked, his eyes suddenly burning. Now you're giving so much to help the vets who feel the same thing you do. The loss of time, the physical loss, the emotional and mental loss. It was strange to Scar that this woman understood him so well. There was nothing else to do but lean down and gently press his lips to hers. That kiss was purely a thank you for the therapy session. She nodded and he saw tears in her eyes. I can be your therapist. Sucking in a breath, he shook his head. Nah, I don't need a full-time therapist. What he didn't say was that he needed a full-time girlfriend. He kept her hand and took off onto the path. Enough gabbing. Let's keep going. She laughed and let him keep her hand. Under fifty dollars, she said quietly. Turning back, he lifted his eyebrows in question. Wagging her finger at him, she smiled. Only as a favor to you. Scar was walking on air, and he felt like his cheekbones would be sore from all the smiling he was doing. She had agreed to see San Diego with him. Chapter 16 That time is mine. Scar's words echoed in Shayla's brain. She hadn't gotten home until almost nine. After Tori Pines, he'd insisted on taking her to Oceanside Beach so they could observe the surfers because he'd decided it was important for her to see it first. When he dropped her off, he'd insisted on coming into the house and doing a check before he kissed her goodnight. Admittedly, it made her feel better to have him do that, though she hadn't asked for it. She'd taken a shower and had seen three missed calls from her mother. After calling her back, they actually had a decent conversation about life and what her brothers were up to. It had been nice to talk to her mom. She hadn't told her mother about Scar because, well, she just didn't want the third degree. Sitting down on her bed, she began looking at her English assignment. She put on her headphones and pounded out three pages. An hour later, she decided she was starving, so she wandered downstairs to look through her cupboards and find something to eat. She paused there, staring at all the new food and blinked away the tears. It touched her that Scar would do that. Yes, she knew there was an attraction between them. She could feel it. But there was also friendship and goodness. She loved how passionate he was about helping military vets. It was inspiring. As she got out some salsa and chips, which she hadn't had in forever, she heard a noise. Freezing, she took in a long breath and commanded herself to relax, but she couldn't get her heartbeat to slow down. She was fumbling to open the bag of chips when she heard something else right next to the dumpster. Thinking of the cameras he'd installed, she rushed up to her room and grabbed her phone, pulling up the app to see the sides of her house. Someone was huddling on the side of her house by the front door, peeking into the kitchen window. She dropped the phone, her hands trembling. She thought about calling the police. She called Scar instead. Can't stay away from me, dream girl. Her voice caught and the words died in her throat. Shay? He asked, already on high alert. I heard something, and there's someone by the front of the house. He swore, and she heard things moving. I'm coming. Call the police. Hanging up with him, she dialed the number for the police. 
Scar arrived long before they did. Actually, he screamed up in his car about two minutes later. She'd gone down and made sure the door was locked. She sat on her stairs halfway peeking out and jumped when he knocked on the door. Shay, it's me. Running down the rest of the stairs, she flung the door open, but he wasn't looking at her. He was surveying the area like a trained seal. He took off sprinting for the side of the house. Stop, he yelled. Her heart jumped in her throat. She froze in terror. Hating herself, she peeked out to see if someone was knifing her gallant prince. Cop lights appeared, and she saw Scar walk over and talk to them, pointing down the beach. Another officer met her at the door, and she did her best to answer the questions and tell him what she'd seen on the side of the house. Scar walked over and listened, looking official. Then he added to her testimony, showing them where the cameras were and explaining he was a friend of hers and she'd been feeling like she'd been watched for... He paused to look at her. Since last Monday, she said, clasping her hands together to stop her shaking. Twenty minutes later, the police were finished with the reports. She and Scar watched from her small deck as they pulled away. Without a word, he pulled her into his arms. She laid her head on his chest and noticed two things right off. One, she felt so safe with him here. Two, he smelled amazing. She hadn't noticed before, but now she saw he had on flip-flops, shorts, and a t-shirt. Were you working out? She asked him. He kept her close, stroking a hand down her hair. She could feel herself trembling. She knew he probably could too, but she didn't want to acknowledge it. I already did. I had just gotten out of the shower when you called. She tried not to let her mind go to his chiseled chest, even though she was leaning against it and could feel how defined it was. The obvious strength made her feel safer. For a few moments, he just held her. With the sound of the ocean in the background, she finally felt herself relax. The thought struck her that she felt a bit like a child, vulnerable and scared. She felt like her parents had left her all alone and not told her where they were going, like what had happened when she was 12 and she'd come home from a friend's house to find everyone gone. Spill it. Ignoring the fact he was reading her mind, she said, Once when I was 12, I got home and realized my parents weren't there. I went to my parents' room, I got in their bed, and I covered myself up to the chin in their blankets. Why didn't you call them? He asked, still holding her, now rubbing small circles into her back. I did. No one answered. The memory still left her with residual sadness, especially right now. Their phone was dead. He simply held her. I'm sorry. She clung to him, hating herself for it, remembering all of those boundaries she'd set between them and feeling guilty. It's so stupid. Don't feel guilty. She pulled back incredulously. How do you do that? The side of his lip tugged up and his dimple creased. Because I'm kind of getting in your head. He looked so satisfied with himself it made her want to push him away. I'm fine, she protested. Well, maybe I'm not fine. The confession, that he cared so much, seeped into her. It was refreshing. How about you come sleep at my place tonight? He said quietly. I... I'll take the comfy pull-out couch, he said, cutting off her objection. But I'm not gonna get any sleep with you here all by yourself and someone out there. She thought about wanting to be independent and not be afraid, but the truth was, she was afraid. I can't. What about tomorrow night and the next night? She pulled away. This time he let her. Cocking an eyebrow, he didn't miss a beat. You stay at my place again. The beautiful seal is leaving, her mind screamed. She exhaled, realizing she also wanted to protect her heart from another break-in. He took her hand. Just for tonight. You stay tonight, then we reassess tomorrow. 
He looked around her place. I can add more security measures, but I think both of us would sleep better if you came with me. Still shaken, she found herself letting him persuade her. Fine, just for tonight. Unlike before, when he'd fist bumped or acted like he'd gotten a touchdown, he simply nodded. Pack your stuff. His lip quirked up. You can check staying at Hotel del Coronado off your bucket list. The idea did excite her, even though it was hardly under the best of circumstances. Thank you, she said and felt her lip tremble. I don't know what I would have done if you weren't here. She thought about how she would be terrified and alone, and probably going home to Kansas. Hey, he shook his head and pulled her in. I'm glad I'm here too, but you're going to be okay, dream girl. You are. Chapter 17 Would Scar be lying if he said he didn't like the fact that Shayla was lying on his bed at the hotel, staring out the window right now? Yes, he would be lying, and he didn't know if anyone could make him tell that lie, not even the U.S. government. As they walked into the hotel, it had amused him how awestruck she looked as they entered the old-fashioned elevator. She'd grinned from ear to ear, and all the worry and pain from earlier had evaporated. By the time they got to his room, she was acting normal. She'd done a pretty thorough job of inspecting it. After she looked at everything, she asked if she could use the bathroom. Treat my room as yours, he'd said and tried to be silly about it. The truth was, what he wanted to do was go to the police station and grill them about every perp out there. He wanted to get a pack of his SEAL buddies together and form a perimeter, twist arms and rip off heads until they found the loser who was doing this. Although him leaving right now would not help her. At the moment she needed him. He felt humbled by that. No one had needed him in a long time. Not like this. Of course, she wasn't the needy type, so it was hard for her which was so dang sexy. Holding up a glass of water, he held it out to her. I thought you might be thirsty. Thank you. She took a drink and gave it back. You don't have to treat me like a kid. I can get water for myself. He tisked his tongue and sat on the edge of the bed next to her, putting the water on the side table and trying to relax. What if I just want to be nice? In case you haven't heard, I'm a nice guy. She laughed and lay back into the pillows. You are a nice guy. I owe you so much. No, he didn't want her to feel that way. I'm really glad I can help in whatever small way is possible. Turning onto her side, she smiled up at him. I want to ask you something, but I know we're friends, and I know this may send mixed signals. Now he was definitely liking this. Whatever she thought, he couldn't help hoping for more, so everything was a signal to him. What? She cringed. No, never mind. No tell. He touched her nose softly. Closing her eyes, she shook her head. No, you go in there and let's go to sleep. Not leaving. He crossed his arms. Out with it, Castle. Shayla sighed. Fine. Flicking open her eyes, she said, would you stay in here, but not in the bed? Not waiting for her to continue, he ran back to the couch, grabbed a blanket and pillow, and threw himself and them on the floor. Done. She giggled and peered over the bed at him. No, sorry, I can sleep on the floor. Not gonna happen. She relented. Okay, but I have to make this up to you sometime. He hopped up, turned out all the lights, and went back thinking there was really nothing he'd rather be doing, which made him smile because he was about to sleep on the floor. They sat in silence as his eyes adjusted to the moonlight. He saw her edge to the end of the bed next to him and drop her arm reaching out her hand. He scooted over and took it. Sorry, I just hate feeling so vulnerable. He smiled loving the feel of her soft hand in his. 
you're cold. He sat up, noting that she was beneath the blankets. He thought about how she was young and so far away from home. Was she in shock? Are you okay, dream girl? Fine, she said, smiling faintly. No, you're not. She sighed. I hate asking this. What? Would you hold me until I fall asleep? The way she asked was so childlike and innocent. Surprisingly, he didn't feel like it was a mixed signal at all. Of course. Doing a silly leap, he flung himself over and landed next to her on the bed. It would be my honor. I don't want you to think, shh, he said, staying on top of the blankets. I'll stay on top of the blankets and I'll just hold you like this. He snuggled up against her, holding her in his arms. It felt heavenly, being here with her, smelling her. Dang it, he knew he was gone. At this moment, he realized he wanted this. Someday, he wanted to be beneath the covers with her. Marriage? Was he thinking that? He thought about how he knew that's what she would demand of him if he wanted her. Amazingly, he was willing to give it. It was weird. He felt her relax. She let out a slow breath. Thank you. He hugged her tighter for a moment, then put his head right next to her hair. Man, this was cozy. Forcing himself to not go to the place where he was thinking things he shouldn't. He focused on being here and protecting her. He focused on the fact that they had more days for him to show her around. He focused on the fact that he was going to do something about her current situation. He didn't like her feeling so defenseless. Pillow talk, she said softly. He smiled. Pillow talk would be much more enjoyable here with her than over the phone. You want me to start? More about Scar Walker, the autobiographical book. He smiled. Okay. She said softly, I want to meet your brother, and I want to go on a whale-watching tour. Every part of him tensed at thinking of her meeting his brother. Please, she said softly. He relaxed, thinking to himself that he didn't know if he could deny the woman in his arms anything. He was already like soft putty, and the relationship had barely started. Fine. Stephen would rub it in his face, but Scar would do it for her. More pillow talk, he ordered, hating the fact he wasn't in the mood to sleep after thinking of his brother. She sighed. Okay. Your turn. For what? Tell me something interesting. What? Tell me something you wouldn't tell another soul. Even as he said it, he felt the intimacy of the request. She didn't answer for a long time. In fact, he thought she might have fallen asleep. Then she said, I have all these feelings for you, so different than I had for Jason. She sniffed. It's, hey, hey. He ran his hand down her hair. Was she crying? She scoffed. I thought I'd marry Jason. I don't know if I've let go of that dream or not. I mean, being with you has helped. A lot. With a pang, he realized he might be the rebound. He really didn't want to be a rebound. Not with her. Not with all the things he'd been feeling about her. I killed the mood, didn't I? She asked. I guess we are both good at being conversation killers. She laughed, turning in his arms. He pulled back from her and rolled onto his back. I guess I'm not so much the dream girl anymore. All sorts of thoughts were going through his mind. He filtered it down to the most important. He wanted to spend the next four days with this woman, even if there was nothing after that. Oh, you are, he said quickly. He heard her sigh. I know that's... I'm not staying in San Diego, so it's a moot point. Don't worry about it. He could hear it in his voice. 
disappointment. She scooted toward the edge of the bed. I think I should just waitress tomorrow. Then you can decide if you really want to take the needy girl around to cool spots in San Diego. He turned on his side, propping his head up to look at her. Nope, you've already agreed. You work tomorrow and finish the paper. Then you're mine. She leaned back into the bed, not saying a word. Scar was painfully aware that he liked this girl a little more than she liked him, and he would spend days with her while liking her more. When he left, he would miss her. It still wasn't a bad option. He would take it. What are you thinking? She asked. Assessing risks. She didn't reply. He decided to explain. In the military and on the field, you have to assess risks with every move you make. Now I'm doing the same, and I've decided that it's worth being your friend, dream girl. Or even just a rebound guy. She laughed. You have? As you've said, I'm leaving. You're focused and driven and going to get everything you want out of life. You really think that? I know that. Go to sleep, he said encouragingly. At first, he could tell she wasn't asleep. Eventually, he felt her relax, and her breathing deepened. He closed his eyes and drifted off into dreams about the beautiful woman lying in his arms. Chapter 18 the next morning, Shayla took orders and got food and thought about the man she'd left sleeping. Her heart clenched. She couldn't believe what an amazing person Scar was. Everything was changing inside of her, but she couldn't say Scar wasn't right about possibly being a rebound after Jason. She had loved Jason and had dreamed of a future with him. She stared out at the ocean and folded silverware into napkins on autopilot. Even with all the homesickness, even with the stalking, she did love being in San Diego. Lately, she loved sharing adventures with Scar. He would be gone in a few weeks. What would she be to him? She thought about the chemistry between them, the palpable chemistry. Bob came over to her and sat, folding silverware with her, so, talk about the guy who helped you with your car. Jerking her gaze to Bob's eyes, she smiled. It's nothing. He shook his head. Hey, you'd have to be deaf, dumb, and blind not to see the way you two flirt when he's in here. She knew she was turning bright red. Dang, she hated being so pale. Bob laughed. You got it bad for him. No, it's nothing, she insisted. Yes, it definitely is. She hesitated, but she could confide in Bob. She didn't really have a ton of people here. I broke up with my boyfriend just before I came here. I'm worried it's too fast. Bob hesitated, put down the silverware and turned to her. I'm almost 60. My wife and I moved here and started this business together and it's been great. He cleared his throat. We moved from a small town in Nebraska. What? Bob pointed at her. Carpe diem. She frowned. The movie? That's right. Dead Poet Society. Seize the day. Seize the day. His eyes widened. Do what you want. What you love. Of course, be good, but you are. So have some fun. Go with the military guy and do exciting things. Have fun. Letting out a light laugh, she thought about his words. Carpe diem. Yes, she needed to do that. She was here. She was living the dream. She should enjoy it. For so long, she'd dreamt about Jason showing up unexpectedly and wanting her back. Now she could see a different future. About ten minutes before her shift would end at four, Scar walked in. Shayla's heart sped up. Their eyes met. A brilliant smile lit up his face. Hey. 
He got to her and shoved his hands in his jean pockets. He looked a bit awkward, which was funny, because he would probably be the picture of cool if she had to put his picture by a word in the dictionary. Hey. She wondered if she sounded awkward too. After finishing up organizing the receipts, she took off her apron and put it by the cash register. I'm just getting off. He nodded, then tapped his forehead. Mind like a steel trap. She grinned and began walking out. He kept pace with her. I can't believe I slept through you leaving this morning. It's a skill I have. Growing up on a farm, you just tell your body when to wake up and you train your body to do it. You sound like a seal. She considered what she knew of seal training. No way. He laughed. So you need to finish the paper? Yeah, but I'm almost done. Would you mind changing into workout clothes before you go to the library? I'll pick you up after. The intensity in his eyes made her insides flutter nervously. Okay, you want to put me through sparring? I'm not too coordinated, just so you know. Scrunching up his face, he shook his head. Not exactly, but I do want you to meet some buddies of mine. Excitement and wonder filled her. She was starting to accept these feelings were a part of hanging out with Scar Walker. It was kind of like that all the time. Okay. He opened the door for her and held it. Great. Oh, pack a change of clothes for dinner, too. We'll be at a gym so you can change there. Before she could protest, he added, This dinner doesn't cost anything, so don't worry about it. She gazed into his deep blue eyes, and her heart rate accelerated. He leaned in and kissed her softly on the cheek. You look beautiful today, dream girl. Just thought you should know. After finishing her paper at the library, and then rushing over and handing it in to her English teacher, Shayla felt great, proud. She'd finished her first college class. Five minutes later, Scar pulled up. She hopped into his Mustang, but her excitement cooled to nervousness as they pulled up to a gym in downtown San Diego. He ran around the car and opened her door, holding his own gym bag. The guy I'm introducing you to is a vet, too. He's trained in hand-to-hand -hand combat. As they entered, she noticed it wasn't one of those fancy gyms, but rather a boxing gym. It looked about 30 years old and a lot of the furniture in the entryway looked worn and retro. Scar opened the door for her and didn't slow down as they passed the front desk, taking her lightly by her bicep and nodding to the receptionist. She's with me. The guy grunted and went back to his phone. Her heart raced. He's going to teach me how to fight? He didn't respond, just kept taking her back through the maze of hallways until they opened up into a boxing room with a ring and assorted gym equipment. He let go of her arm, took her bag off her shoulder, and hung both their bags on some nearby hooks. That's exactly what he's going to do. Confused, she saw a guy coming toward them. You could teach me, right? I can. I thought about just doing it myself. Then I realized we have a guy who trains women in special forces combat. And like it or not... Women have different strengths and weaknesses than men. He knows how to capitalize on those strengths, so I called in the favor. They finally reached the guy. The look on his face gave her chills. He looked even meaner than Scar would be when confronting her stalker. He was about an inch shorter than Scar and leaner, but his body was still completely ripped. At the moment, he wore tennis shoes, gym shorts, and a black tank top. His facial hair was neatly trimmed into a goatee. Scar shook his hand. Jim, this is Shayla. Shayla, Jim. Jim cocked an eyebrow at her. His voice was gruff. I hear you've had someone stalking you. It was hard to face the fact that it was true. Yes. She almost said sir, feeling a bit nervous. He looked her over from top to bottom. It wasn't the kind of look a man gives a woman when they are checking them out, though. No. This look, Shayla realized, was assessing her strengths and weaknesses. Jerking a thumb to the sparring ring, he said, Let's get in the ring. The mats are softer up there. Once again, her heart fluttered and she felt uncertain. Meeting Scar's gaze, she saw the determination in his eyes, and she managed to nod. Okay. 
She wanted to feel more competent, wanted to know how to fight. They climbed into the ring and he put out his hand. I'm Jim Murray, by the way. The side of his mouth tilted up. We're starting right away. I'm going to grab you, and I want you to do what you would do if it were really happening. She prepped herself and agreed. He moved like he was walking past her. Suddenly, he grabbed her around the middle in a hold that felt horribly tight. Ouch, she said, trying to get free with her arms. It reminded her of the other night with the stalker guy. He let her scramble for a minute before letting her go. What was wrong with that? He asked, moving in front of her. She shook her head, feeling a bit out of sorts. Jim pointed to Scar. You attack me like I attacked her. Scar did as requested, coming up behind him and grabbing him around the middle. Shayla noticed how he practically loomed over Jim. Jim held her gaze. Now, Shayla, watch. She watched as he dropped his hips and turned at the same time, describing it while he was doing it. Scar let him loose, and Jim was at his crotch, a hand about to punch him. Scar pulled back. Hey. Jim turned back to her, giving her an utterly delighted expression. She laughed. Getting up, Jim moved to her face, invading her personal boundaries. What's the first thing you thought when I was about to hurt our friend Scar where it counts? He jerked another thumb towards Scar. I... What? I thought I didn't know if I could do that. His eyes hardened. There was a flutter deep in her gut. Your mentality when you go into a confrontation with someone who is trying to take away your God-given right to freedom is that you will destroy this enemy. She could smell coffee and cigarettes on his breath, and she could feel an intensity like she'd never felt. It ignited something primal in her, and she nodded. If you can get your mind right, that no matter what the enemy will not get you, that there is always another way to hurt the enemy, then you will be okay. Even if they capture you and torture you, you will be thinking of a way to get out. Her skin crawled at the idea of this man being tortured and captured and fighting his way to freedom. Okay. Jim paced like a drill sergeant, matching Scar's determined, fierce expression. You drop your hips, you go for the crotch, and if you get the crotch, you punch or squeeze like hell. She agreed. He pointed right beneath his chin. You are always looking for the most vulnerable place on a man. The jugular, he pointed to his eyes. The eyes, his hand grabbed the back of her bicep. Your elbow is also a great weapon. Use whatever weapon you have. Your car keys are good sharp weapons you can use to stab him. Anywhere soft, his crotch, he said, indicating Scar. He turned Scar around and jabbed right above his lower back. His kidney. If you can get that key in there, it will stop him. For a bit. He turned Scar back around and let him go, his eyes hard again. You have to get your game here. He pointed to his temple. Your head has to be in it. And you have to believe you are crazier than him. You have to yell. You have to get angry. You have to be that bratty younger brother who is taking down his older brother for the first time and is fighting with everything he has and with nothing to lose. He knows if he loses, his brother will kill him. Shayla laughed nervously. For a fleeting moment, Jim smiled. Let's begin. For the next hour, Jim went over scenario after scenario for how someone could attack her and how she would use the weakest part of him to get leverage. Your legs are your friend. He grabbed her hips. Kick me. What? Kick me, he roared. She kicked on impulse. He swiveled and turned. Again, he commanded. So she did. He explained the greatest way to utilize her leverage with her hips and how to even kick high at the crotch first, but the jugular was always second choice. Without thinking, she did it, nailing it. Jim stumbled, but he seemed proud rather than angry. He and Scar looked at each other, impressed grins on their faces. Scar turned back to her. That's it, Kansas. You're getting it. 
This encouraged her more than she thought mere words could. For another hour, they practiced the best way to kick, and some punches, and where to land them. By the end, she was sweaty as well as mentally and physically exhausted. She was also more confident in her ability to fend off an attacker. Thank you, she told Jim. He gave her an encouraging nod. You got this, Shayla. You're far more powerful than you know, and you just proved that you have some skills. Practice with my man, Scar. She smiled. I will. Thank you. Jim turned to Scar, giving him a fake one-two punch in the air. Scar dodged and easily put him in a headlock. Jim laughed as he quickly escaped. For a few minutes, they went through some complicated sparring moves together. It amazed and delighted her to watch them. Before she knew it, a couple of guys from around the gym had gathered and were all yelling out to them, cheering them on. The intensity kicked up a notch. Shayla found herself cheering for Scar because, surprisingly, Jim was a contender. Admittedly, she didn't know how they were judging this fight. In the end, the match was over when Scar had Jim pinned to the floor and the guys shouted out the count until three. Scar pushed himself to his feet and helped Jim up. Jim pounded him on the back and Scar put his arm around his shoulders. Another guy from the gym playfully punched Scar in the shoulder. Scar cursed him good-naturedly and they started talking. Jim walked over to her and smiled. So you're dating my man here. He jerked a thumb to Scar. Shayla didn't know what Scar had told him. Uh, yeah. Jim looked her up and down, not in a seductive way, but rather in a speculative way. Don't mess with him. What? She wasn't sure she heard him correctly. Jim moved closer, leaning in. Scar has given a lot to us vets, and we would not look kindly to a woman ripping his heart out. I don't plan on it, she said, a bit taken off guard. Jim snorted. Hey, I'm not being rude, but I was one of the guys he saved. He trailed off and nervously cast his eyes to Scar. Scar wasn't paying any attention to them. A group of men were gathered around him, and they were all laughing. Jim turned back to her. He's one of the good guys. He picked up his bag of stuff and moved toward the dressing rooms, hollering back. Nice to meet you, Shayla. Shayla's heart raced. Again, she wondered what Scar had been through. Clearly, he'd saved lives. As she watched him spar with another guy in the ring, she could tell he loved these guys, loved being here. She continued to look around the room and noticed some of the guys had missing limbs. One man coming in at that exact moment had no legs. The guy without legs yelled out to Scar, insulting him and cheering for the other guy. Scar flipped him off and all of the men whooped with laughter. The guy with no legs came over and started talking to everyone. Scar put a hand on his shoulder. She could tell he was asking him a question. Shayla had to admit, seeing him in his element and how he helped so many, she might be falling in love. Chapter 19 Later that night, as Scar pulled up to Dana Landing, where his brother docked the cruise ship, he was happy they'd come. It had been a tricky conversation earlier in the day with his brother, but he was happy he'd set it up. Truthfully, he was happy he and his brother were getting along. He'd had a chance to talk to Carrie earlier, and she sounded happy. His brother had confided in him he would be asking her to marry him soon. Scar thought about the fact that he kind of wanted to ask Shayla the same thing Stephen was about to ask Carrie, which was weird. It would be way too soon for her. They sat in the car for a second. Shayla said, I told you that you can't spend more than $50. Ignoring her, he got out and went to her side of the car and opened the door, unable to stop himself from being more than happy to bring her here. Calm yourself, woman. You told me you wanted to meet my brother. He took her hand, walking next to her out of the parking lot and toward the dock. She looked at their hands, then back to him, and he got a whiff of her fresh lemon scent. She'd showered and had done little else in terms of her appearance, 
wearing simple jeans and a red scoop top with black flip-flops. You're seriously taking me to meet him right now? He nodded, nervous butterflies swimming in his stomach. I'm a man of action. She laughed. The sun was just starting to set in the sky. Looking at the gorgeous colors, Scar knew it would be perfect tonight. It's going to be great. Stephen was waiting next to a small cruiser. He stepped out onto the dock, and his eyes swept up and down Shayla. Scar was almost sure he would make some snarky comment, but instead he put his hand out. Well, it's nice to meet you again, Shayla. This time, hopefully, Brandon won't send the eggs back. She grinned. Of course his brother would use his Christian name. That's what his mother would have done. His brother was a lot like her. Whether that was good or bad, Scar hadn't decided yet. Not missing a beat, Shayla shook his hand. Nice to see you, Stephen. I've heard good things about you. Shaking her hand, Stephen looked surprised. That's good, I suppose. He dropped her hand and turned back to Scar, cocking an eyebrow. It's all queued up for you. Thanks, man. Stephen fist bumped him. I'm glad you came, he said as he moved away from them down the dock. He hollered, hope to see you again, Shayla. Maybe you can get Scar to come over and meet his new nephew in a couple of months. Scar laughed. See you, Stephen. Thanks. Neither he nor Shayla spoke for a couple of seconds. Then she blew out a breath. Well, a new nephew? Taking the opportunity to stare into her eyes, deep green ones, beautiful and shimmering with flecks of gold. His mouth went dry. Yeah, uh, he told me at the diner that day. I'm happy for him. She smiled. I'm happy for you. You'll make a great uncle. He shrugged and turned to the boat. You ready? She shook her head. You're tricky, Scarwalker. Taking me out on a dinner cruise would cost a lot. Wagging his finger at her, he smiled. I didn't pay. She sighed and searched his face. You paid in other ways, didn't you? He didn't want to confirm or deny what he'd exchanged. Let's go. Gruffly, he took her hand again and led her onto the cruiser, automatically starting the tour. The one he'd done for tourists as a teenager. This is Dana Landing, hometown of the famous landing points for many boats in the San Diego Bay. This beach we are connected to is Mission Beach. He pulled her past what would normally seat tons of passengers, but this evening it stood empty. We're heading to the captain's seats. Is your brother losing money by having us on here tonight? Nope. He didn't need to explain the details to her. The simple truth was enough. This made her frown at him. How could he not be? He ignored her and took her to the cabin where the steering wheel for the boat was. He pointed to a seat. Sit and enjoy the sunset from one of the most famous places in San Diego. Taking care, he pulled the throttle and felt the boat move away from the dock. It was crazy how it all came back to him so quickly. He got on the radio and signaled they were leaving the bay. Next, he flipped on the music, knowing it would be the station their father had always put on. Country. He liked country, so that was good. Looking around, Shayla didn't let him off the hook. He had known she wouldn't. It was part of the reason he liked her. How much does a cruise like this cost? Stop, woman. I'm part owner, and I haven't used it in two years. He flashed her a grin. This seemed to calm her down and she quietly gazed out at the sights. For the first time in many years, more than he could remember, he was seeing the bay as if for the first time. He pointed. There's SeaWorld, and there's the ritzy part of Mission Bay, Hotel Catamaran, Hyatt Regency, expensive houses. He scoffed because now the houses weren't as far out of reach as they had been before. She turned to him. What's so funny? How did he explain? When I was growing up, part of the reason San Diego felt frustrating was because we were the poor kids. We got to come out on the boat with dad and meet all these fancy tourists. We learned how to do the tours, and they would ask us where good places to eat were. I remember my dad would tell them all these fancy restaurants around here that we had never gone to. He thought of his father. 
realizing the toll it must have taken on his dad. It had never occurred to him how hard it must have been. What? I'm just having an epiphany about my father. About what it must have been like for him to be around these rich people and just be trying to put food on the table. He mortgaged everything for this boat. Part of the reason my mom left was she was so frustrated with his dream. She measured him with her eyes. You felt responsible. I was responsible until I graduated. Then I left, left my brother to manage it all. Regret pressed down on his shoulders. After a few moments, she said, you could have sold the business when your father passed, right? Scar nodded. I told him to. She took Scar's hand. He liked the fact that she'd initiated contact. Maybe he likes it. That was a different take on things. Scar figured maybe Stephen did like it. Maybe he wasn't keeping it out of guilt or something. Sitting in companionable silence, they enjoyed the ocean. Scar realized he did love it out here, more than he'd remembered. Shayla studied the sky. You joined the Navy because that was your way out. You thought, I've been on the water my whole life and I can do that. He was humbled by her wisdom, by the way she understood so perfectly. His heart pounded in his chest. He'd never talked about this with anyone else, certainly not with any other woman. He focused on the route out to the ocean. Usually when I come to San Diego, I'm reminded of all the ways I failed my brother. She didn't look at him right away, but when she did, she shook her head. No, I don't believe that. He let out a laugh. It's better this trip, but it's been rough in the past. Nah, Navy SEAL Brandon Walker. She said his real name in a way that he liked. He was taking care of everything, I'm sure. I'm betting your brother loves this business in a way you don't. I don't know. I'd bet that big bag of Cheetos you put in my pantry. She nudged him with her shoulder and smiled. The Cheetos surprised me, by the way, because you definitely don't look like you eat Cheetos. He grinned. He loved Cheetos, but it was true that he hardly ever ate them. I'm also betting those Cheetos that you sent money to help. When he didn't deny it, she let it go and looked out, ooing and dying over the scenery. Every part of him felt on edge. He was lost in her smell and the intimacy of sharing his innermost fears and concerns. She reached out and touched the wheel. I've always wanted to captain a ship. It felt so natural when he pulled her in front of him, putting her hands on the wheel and laying his on top of hers. For the next 20 minutes, she drove out to the ocean. He maneuvered them to a place a lot of commercial ships didn't go. It was a place his dad had always taken people. He was sure his brother still took chartered guests here when they wanted privacy. The salt smell had intensified, and the breeze felt amazing. She didn't move, and neither did he. Instead of keeping his hands on top of hers, he put his around her waist and pulled her back against him. Not knowing if she would deny him, he felt her relax back into him. He stared out. The ocean felt expansive, like they could be the only two people on Earth. The sun was setting soft and golden, and he figured they had another good 20 to 30 minutes before it went all the way down. They stood like that for a few minutes. Her head fit perfectly into that space beneath his chin. It was one of the most serene moments of his life. A kind, smart, and beautiful woman. A stunning sunset. He pushed away all the thoughts in his head that told him he would be leaving soon. When he'd first returned to San Diego, it had felt like the time here would be a prison sentence. Now it felt like there couldn't be enough time. Are you hungry? He asked, whispering in her ear. He so wanted to kiss her neck, but he didn't want to push any boundaries and ruin the moment. She nodded, starving. Letting her go, he slid his hand down her arm and took her hand, 
tugging her out away from the wheel and dropping the anchor. Good. At the front of the boat, the table had been elegantly set up. There was shrimp on ice and some pasta, and an exquisite sauce he knew his brother only gave to the best customers. What? She let go of his hand and gestured to the table. But he put up a finger and gestured to the chair. Sit, I'll explain. Moving behind her, he pulled the chair out for her. She sat and shook her head, narrowing her eyes. You are not following the agreement. Not true. He sat across from her. When she hesitated, he prompted her. Eat. I, can we say grace? Once again, it felt like this girl, this innocent, prayer-saying girl, was just too amazing. Of course. She put her hands together and closed her eyes. Dear God, thank you for this day, for Scar and his generosity, and for this amazing boat ride and food. Please bless my family and Scar's brother. Amen. Warmth spread through him. He was stunned by her goodness. She put her napkin on her lap and took a piece of shrimp, like she hadn't just squeezed his heart with her simple prayer for him and his family. Explain how this was free. Matching her smile and feeling proud of himself and his cleverness, he decided to let her in on the secret. Well, when Dad died, he left me half the business, but I've never taken a share of it. When I asked Stephen if we could do a boat ride tonight, I offered to pay for all of this, but he wouldn't allow it. In fact, I think it made him happy I was finally getting something from the business. He quirked a smile. Hmm... Again, you have been sending him money, right? He didn't confirm or deny this. She sputtered a laugh and shook her head. The only reason he was ever mad at you was because he loves you and he felt ignored. The only reason you were mad was because you were punishing yourself. He hadn't really seen it that way. But she'd hit the nail on the head. To distract himself, he turned and looked at the last bit of the sun going down. Isn't that pretty? She hummed in contentment. Yes. Turning back to her, he thought about how much he loved this moment. He loved being the host of San Diego. Without thinking, he put his hand on the table and held it out. She furrowed her brow and he wasn't sure she would take it. He kind of thought she might because all her body language showed she was interested in him. But he didn't want to push. Look, Kansas, I don't want to push. If you still love that guy, or if you don't want this because I'm leaving, I get it, I... He trailed off. He'd used far too many words already. Slowly, she put her hand in his. I told you my parents weren't happy I was leaving. But when Jason broke my heart, I cried in my father's arms, and he told me that I could look at this as a beginning. A beginning to a great life. Tears bubbled in her eyes and he was stunned by her beauty, inside and out. That's what made her so different and precious. So maybe this, whatever is happening with us, is just a part of that beginning. His heart raced in his chest, because he wanted a chance with this woman more than he'd ever wanted anything. I like beginnings. I think we just don't put pressure on it. We just let it be a few days of fun. He saw the opening in the defense and he planned to take it. Okay. He liked the feel of her hand, so he forced himself not to rush this play. Let's just have fun. He thought of all the things he wanted to do with her, all the things he could do for free. She laughed. Why do you have that mischievous grin on your face? He shook his head. No reason. This is just going to be the best four days of your life, Shayla Castle. A Navy SEAL promise? She bit back a smile. He winked at her. The best of your life. Chapter 20 When they got back to her place, it was late. Shayla had insisted she would stay at her town home. Scar cleared his throat as he walked her to the door. Okay, so I've installed even more cameras and an alarm system. She was stupefied. What? He gently took her phone from her. This morning while you were working. 
Gratitude and disbelief washed over her. He'd been with her all afternoon and night, and now she found out he'd spent his morning working on her house. I thought you were supposed to be working on your vet's project. I put a trusted friend in charge for the next couple of days. Actually, it's Jim. I'll be checking in with him, though, so it's cool. He punched in her code and installed a new app. This gives you all the camera views, he explained as he walked her through it. Humbled and, as usual, amazed when she was with Scar, she paid close attention to what he was doing. He pulled up another camera and cursed. Sorry. He looked up. It's not working. He put her phone back in her hand and walked into her house and rushed up the stairs. Let me check the top camera. She followed him, putting her gym bag down by the laundry room in the kitchen and following him up the stairs. When she got up there, he was half hanging out the window. Scar? She called. This camera seems to have malfunctioned. As she went to the other window, she saw him twisting and turning the electronics. Dang it. It was nice to have him here putting up a security system. She pulled back and tapped on the new app to some of the lower cameras working on the side of the house, but the app froze. He pulled himself back inside the window and looked at her on the phone. Is it working? No. Without asking, he took it out of her hands and began messing with it. She would have complained about his brashness, but she could see that laser-like Navy SEAL focus and knew it was for her benefit. She looked over his shoulder. Crap. He pulled out his phone and texted his friend. Moving to the bed, she sat and reasoned she hadn't had a security system before two days ago. It was strange how she felt vulnerable because it wasn't working. Once he'd sent the text, Scar crossed his arms and shook his head. What? You're not staying here tonight. He sounded final, like her father when he'd decided something. She sputtered out a laugh. That's your decision how? His face didn't change. Because you need to get some sleep. We're getting up and hitting Oceanside early to surf. We are? Her heart leapt. She'd wanted to surf for a long time. His lip twitched. Calm yourself, Castle. You have to agree to stay back at the Hotel del Coronado with me first. Sighing, she thought about it. She hated to go stay with him in his hotel room. She didn't want to rely on him so completely. He cocked an eyebrow. Hey, you have my word I won't do anything. I'll be a perfect gentleman. She frowned at him, her heart kicking up a notch again. He laughed. I can tell you're not certain you can control yourself around me. Glaring, she smacked him on the shoulder. Hey, he said in mock pain. Shoot, Castle, I'm a seal. I won't even kiss you. You couldn't even bet me to do that. Oh, really? She knew she could, and probably would now that the gauntlet had been thrown down. Annoyed at herself, she turned away. It's silly. I'm staying here. The truth was, she was scared after seeing that guy last night. She realized she hadn't thought about it much today. Well, she had, but her thoughts had been so full of scar that everything else faded into the background. It felt like every part of her mind had been saturated with scar and the self-defense lessons and the boat ride. Come with me. He sounded hopeful. Reluctantly, she stood. I hate this. His arms wrapped around her, pulling him into her. One more night. Tomorrow, I'll get it all worked out, I promise, but just come. I'll sleep on the floor for real tonight. She laughed, knowing that he wouldn't let her sleep on the floor and not liking it. She wasn't entirely sure what was happening between them, but it felt like there was no stopping it. Fine, let me pack a bag. A buzz sounded and Scar pulled his cell phone out of his pocket. He looked at the message. Dang it. She was at the edge of the hallway and turned back. What's wrong? He looked immensely annoyed. Nothing. I was supposed to send Jim some numbers to give to the architects and he's still in a meeting. He needs those numbers now. She could tell he was anxious about these numbers. If you don't mind, go to the hotel and get the numbers and send them to Jim then come back for me. Scar hesitated, then nodded. Sorry. It's fine. Okay. He took off, hollering over his shoulder. I'll be back soon. Shayla went to her room and packed a bag, thinking about how amazing Scar was, 
about how amazing it had been to just be with him, hang out with him, how she felt more confident around him. Then she heard the squeaking of the screen door opening. Her heart rate kicked up a notch, and she instinctively knew someone was there. Scar, she called out, dropping the shirt she was folding and moving to the hall. Still nothing. She was acutely aware that someone was there. All thoughts of what Jim had told her earlier fell through her mind. No one had the right to take her freedom. She walked down the hallway and there he was. The guy from the alley at the school, from the sports bar. What are you doing? She asked, her voice actually sounding more relaxed than she felt. His eyes narrowed. I wanted to tell you I wouldn't have hurt you at the sports bar the other night. I just wanted to talk to you before he threw me off of you. He jerked his thumb toward the door. Every part of her felt frozen. Fear trickled in sweat down the lower part of her back. Get out, please. Even to herself, her request felt weak. Why had she said please? The guy cocked an eyebrow, then turned and shut the front door, locking it. I just need a few minutes with you. A sneer filled his face. To talk. Adrenaline punched through her. Instinctively, she knew she would have to fight, and thankfully, she just had a lesson. She dashed for the kitchen, thinking of the knives in the drawer for a weapon. The guy was fast, already on her, his arms around her body, just like the move Jim had thrown at her earlier. I've been watching you for weeks, and I'm not letting you go now. So she reacted. She did the self-defense move, dropped her hips, and turned and punched the guy in the crotch as hard as she could. Yelping out, the guy was momentarily disabled. His hands pulled off of her, reaching for his groin. Seizing the opportunity, she ran. She got to the front door and unlocked it, thrusting it open, pushing the screen door open. Every part of her felt on hyperspeed. Help! She yelled, running down the deck stairs. As she took the last step, his body smacked into hers, and she was down on the front lawn. The weight of him took her breath away, but she was reacting, turning, squirming, and flailing with punches and kicks. He cursed and tried to use more of his weight on her to hold her. Just hold still and we'll get this over with. He was grabbing for the button on the front of his pants, undoing his fly. More fear rushed into her, but instead of shutting her down, it made her think quicker. She used her body weight to kick both knees up and hit them against his butt. He lost balance and she did it again, harder. He flew over her. Scrambling, she got up, but instead of turning to run, she went at him, kicking him hard in the side while he was still trying to get his footing. The guy took the hit and turned shocked eyes on her. She didn't stop, kicking him again. Leave me alone, she yelled. This time he was thrown all the way off balance and flat onto his face. Tires squealed and she heard a door shut. Shayla! The guy tried to get up but Shayla reacted, kicking him hard in the side another time. But the guy was up, taking off into a run. Scar cursed and took off after him, getting him right as the guy hit the main road. A neighbor she didn't know was rushing out of the house next to her. Are you okay? It was an older lady. She broke into sobs, relief that Scar had gotten the guy and terrified at what might have happened. The woman pulled out a phone and called the police. She walked towards Scar who was still on top of the guy, pushing the guy's face into the street. She couldn't hear what he was saying, but his intensity was enough to make her stop crying. Scar got to his feet, keeping his foot on the guy's back. Stay down, you dog. He turned to Shayla, and compassion filled his face. He pointed to her home. Wait back there, honey. It's okay. The older lady was next to her, carefully putting an arm around her, glancing at Scar. Come on, let's go wait back here. A few minutes later, the police arrived. She was in a daze as she identified the guy as the one who had assaulted her the other night and that she'd seen the other day at the college. As the police took the guy away, she stood in Scar's arms and watched the police lights fade. It felt like the most natural thing in the world to be here in his arms. Staring down at her, he gently pushed a tendril of hair out of her face. His face cracked into a smile. I saw those kicks. Jim's gonna be so proud of you. Relief and happiness washed through her and she let out a relieved laugh. You guys should take all the credit you taught me. He scoffed. 
Whatever, you were fierce back there. She held to him, loving the smell of his cologne and the hardness of his chest. Angst wove back into her. I don't understand guys like that. He pressed his lips to her head and sighed. I don't either. The only thing I've learned in life is that sometimes people make no sense. She nodded. You don't seem scared. He gently ran a hand on her hair. Leaning up, she brushed her lips to his and warmth rushed through her. I don't think I could ever be scared in Scar Walker's arms. He searched her eyes and grinned. I'm going to kiss you one more time just to celebrate. Then I'm going to go thank your next door neighbor for calling the police. She blinked back tears, thinking of the lady. Yes, we need to do that. I need to take her cookies. He grinned and leaned in for the kiss. Good idea, Kansas. Their lips met, and she felt lost in this man. Then she realized it wasn't just about falling for him. It was about never wanting to let him go. They walked into the hotel together, hand in hand. Scar suddenly detoured to the front desk. I need to switch rooms. I need a room with two queen beds. Shayla frowned. That was thoughtful. She worried about the cost difference, but truthfully, she wanted to be near him at the moment, in his arms, feeling protected. Um, okay. The receptionist looked between them and then obviously made a decision not to ask questions. They got the room changed and went to Scar's old room to gather up his things to take to the new room. When they got there, she was speechless. The room was even bigger and more gorgeous. More accurately, it was a suite, not a room. Her thoughts went wild and she couldn't stop smiling, thinking about her childhood friend and her dream to stay here. Now Shayla was staying for a second night. She felt like a princess. You shouldn't have spent this kind of money. Scar shook his head. I wanted to. She stared into his eyes. I feel bad because I kind of just want you to hold me. His arms were swiftly around her, encompassing her his lips on her head. Are you okay, dream girl? She nodded and let the strength of him fill her, saturate her, calm her. After a couple of minutes, she pulled away from him, feeling exhausted. Get ready for bed. He gave her a nudge to the bathroom, then pillow talk. After getting settled, she put on pajama pants and a t-shirt and brushed her teeth. It was almost midnight. She sat on one bed, Scar came out of the bathroom in a different pair of shorts and t-shirt, looking so hot she could hardly stand it. Ready? Yep. He turned off the light. She got on her knees. I'm praying for a sec. She felt like she had to tell him so he wouldn't talk to her and think she was ignoring him. After praying for her family and expressing gratitude for all her blessings, including Scar, she thanked God for protecting her for sending Scar and Jim to help her have the skills to defend herself, for the neighbor lady. She climbed into bed and wiped the tears off her face. Are you okay? He asked softly. Yes, pillow talk, please? He let out a soft chuckle, and she heard him turn on his side and face her. She did the same, not feeling sleepy at all. Her eyes adjusted to the moonlight coming in, and she could see how muscular he was. You start he said softly. She thought about all she'd learned about him and all the questions she still had, which felt endless. She just wanted to know more about him. No, you go first. He let out a sigh. Hmm. She peered at him through the shadowy room. Her heart sped up a notch as it always seemed to do around him. It was funny. He was like an addiction. You're kind of a larger than life type of guy saving me around every corner. After a moment, he jumped out of bed. You're too far away. What are you doing? I'm going to push our beds together. He started moving the alarm clock and yanked the phone cord out of the wall. This made her laugh and actually made her happy. Okay. He grunted as he picked up the little table between their beds. Well, we can't sleep in the same bed, so I'm thinking we just push the beds together. Sounds good. Shayla relaxed even more, watching in the moonlight as he picked up one last lamp and moved it, all his muscles flexing. Usually she didn't stare so intently at him, 
because he could see her and it would be awkward, but now she unabashedly watched his muscles work. He pushed his bed to hers, then jumped in and scooted to her. There, now I can hold you. She giggled and scooted to him. When he reached out and tickled her beneath the chin, she laughingly squirmed away. She batted at him and snuck a tickle under his chin, feeling unexpectedly less tired. He said, oh no. Quickly, he pulled her to him and held her to stop her from trying to get away. Finally, she stopped, heaving in a breath, and noticed he was breathing heavily too. He pulled her closer. She let him, loving being against him. He'd worn a tank top and so had she. Their arms were skin to skin. It felt so intimate and she liked it. A lot. You haven't even taken credit for saving me again tonight. He pulled her closer, snugly fitting his head above her chin. Well, you clearly took care of yourself. No, if you wouldn't have shown up, I don't know what would have happened. She shivered, thinking of how strange the guy was. For a second, Scar didn't respond. Then he said, I think it was God who helped you. His voice was wistful. You do? She felt him nod. Actually, I know it was. I was in mid-conversation with Jim, and I had the distinct impression I needed to get back to you. Stunned, she instantly felt like she wanted to cry. Hey, he kissed her forehead and brushed a hand on her hair. It's a good thing, she sniffed. I know, I'm grateful, I'm just a bit overwhelmed. They were both silent for a few seconds. She whispered, how often would you get impressions? Hesitating briefly, he responded, every time I needed to. For a second, she thought of all he'd gone through and held him tighter. So you believe in God? He let out a light chuckle. Of course I do. To see the things I've seen. To go into the situations I've been in and come out alive. I know the big guy was standing over my shoulders sometimes. I felt him so distinctly. His voice got quieter. I felt angels. Sometimes I would actually hear my mother's voice. Leaning back, she stared at him as her eyes adjusted. You're pretty amazing. He let out a laugh. I'm just glad you're safe. His fingers combed her hair. You're so beautiful, dream girl. She pushed his chest, but he wouldn't let go. Back to dream girl? She asked, unable to stop herself from thinking about kissing him again. Hesitating for what felt like forever, he stared at her. Ask me to kiss you, Kansas. I think we're past this. Her heart raced. He sighed, but didn't let up on the intensity. I am a former Navy SEAL, trained not to reveal the country's secrets. I keep my word. I know it was an extreme case for kissing back there, but I'm not going to take advantage of that. You need to ask me to kiss you if you want me to. Not trusting herself. She gently touched his face, tracing the scar down his cheek. An idea hit her. If you really tell me what happened with the scar, I'll let you have a kiss. Relaxing, he shoved onto his side and scooted back to his bed, pulling her hands to drag her with him. I did tell you. What are you doing? She asked. I promised you I would be a perfect gentleman, so I figure the crack is no man's land. She laughed as she was still right by him at the edge of their beds. Story, the real one, she said, and gently reached out and touched his face again. Then you might get a kiss. Closing his eyes, he sighed. Woman, you're not playing fair with this kiss blackmail thing. She hummed. I don't think it is blackmail so much as negotiation. She couldn't believe how much she longed for his lips at the moment. Scrunching up his face, he leaned back and pressed a hand to his head. I'm trying to think how to explain it without revealing details. A thought occurred to her. You said you were on a pirate ship. What does that mean? It's hard to explain. His breath washed over her face. She could smell Colgate or mouthwash. Whatever it was, he smelled amazing. 
He held her hands with one hand and used the other to stroke her hair. Every part of her was on high alert. What are you thinking, Castle? It made her smile. I thought I was a dream girl. You are. His voice was soft. Gently, he reached out and pushed his fingers through her hair. Everything inside of her wanted to kiss him, wanted so many things. What are you thinking? She asked quietly. He sighed. Would it freak you out if I told you I would give you pretty much anything you asked for? It was humbling to know he really would. Really, she was more freaked out by how much she was falling for him. She tried to refocus him. Tell me about what happened. He sighed, kept her close, but looked away. During that time we were on the pirate ship. It was one of those harsh moments of war. When war moves in, it's like a fog of confusion and there's gunfire and yelling. Well, that night, friendly fire hit one of our own. His eyes shifted to hers. I don't know if I'm the one who hit him or not. And he died. Shayla's heart sank in understanding. Sure, everyone knew military guys had seen death. But this one, one of their own, could have been his fault. Of course he was tortured over it. That's why you keep the scar. He blinked and let out a breath, disentangling himself and rolling onto his back. He pushed his fingers into his eyes. Sorry, I... She did something she shouldn't do. She crossed enemy lines and rested her head on his shoulder, putting her hand on his chest. I shouldn't have made you tell me that. For a moment, neither of them spoke. Eventually, he took her hand. I'm glad I told you, he swallowed. You're right, that's part of the reason I don't have the scar fixed. It happened that same night, and I want to remember that night. I want to remember my friend. I want to remember to always be on alert and take what is mine seriously. I want... To atone. He hesitated. What? She propped herself on her elbow. You want to pay for what you did. Kind of. He searched her eyes. I've never thought of it like that, but maybe. Gently, she touched his face, realizing this man was so much more than she had ever thought, so much more than anyone knew. I want you to kiss me. Scar hesitated, which surprised her. As her heart kicked into high gear, she hastily added, But kissing is all I can give you. I'm sorry. Turning onto his elbow, he pulled back and faced her. She matched his position. Carefully, he ran his hand down her arm. I want you to know I like that you care about what God thinks you should do with your life. You pray over food. You wait until marriage for sex. You have standards. It's refreshing. That he thought this way made her feel gooey and happy inside, but she had to admit she was so lost in his touch right now that her mind felt confused. However, her heart didn't. Her heart shouted, kiss the man. Scar gently touched her face. How about we make a deal that I know your standards and I'll be considerate? I won't even kiss you unless we have, like, a code word for kissing to let me know you want to. This intrigued her. A code word? He scrunched up his face. Hey, I'm all about code words. She smiled. What code word should we use? Hmm. He kissed her cheek and then softly trailed kisses around her face. She felt herself give in to him, relishing him kissing her, holding her. She felt so safe and cherished. Something obscure, something you wouldn't say unless it was an emergency. Something that isn't in normal conversation. He breathed on her neck. Her mind thought of different words. Jungle Jim, she said. He laughed. Ah, I like it. He kissed her neck again. She waited for some ideas from him, but only received neck kisses. Sharks? She figured that they were near the ocean, so while that would not be a normal word, it wouldn't be out of place either. Hmm. He didn't sound convinced. What? 
She pulled back, staring at his face. He kept his hand on her hair, and then his lips quirked up. Hey, he said softly, his smile widening. Hey? She laughed because it was the most normal word ever, and they said it all the time. That's the code word? His grin widened. Yeah. Hey. He kissed her cheek again, gently, then pulled back. An obscure word only used when we want to kiss. She laughed harder and pushed him in the chest, but he kept her close. They just stared at each other. She smiled. Hey. Instantly, his lips settled on hers. The world shifted. She pulled him closer and got lost in his lips, in his smell, in every good thing this man was and all the pain he'd been through. He deepened the kiss, and once again she thought about how it had never been this way with Jason. She broke the kiss and snuggled into his chest. I like code words. He laughed and held her tighter. Me too. And Scar? Yeah. Thanks. For everything. It was amazing to her how close she felt to this man. He grinned. It was a favor to me. Of course it was. She mumbled against his lips. Chapter 21 Scar wasn't sure what time he'd woken up the next morning. Sunlight was filtering into the room, and his hand was still interlaced with hers even though both of them had snuggled into their separate pillows. Not wanting to unwind his fingers from hers, he took this opportunity to look at her. Her red hair fell in gentle waves around her face, all messy and a bit ratty. Her pale skin and freckles made him smile. Her skin was perfect, and he resisted the urge to reach over and move the hair on her cheek. Loving this freedom, he had to really unabashedly study her. His eyes trailed her neck and down to the tank top she wore. She wasn't overly curvy, just perfect. A yoga body, he decided. He thought of the guy last night, and the same desire to kill the guy pulsed through him. He hated freaks like that, who thought they could just do whatever they wanted to whatever woman they wanted to torture. Sucking in a breath, he refocused on her, his thoughts drifted to always wanting to protect her, to be there for her. Marriage. It hit the center of his chest. Was he really thinking that? He sighed and knew he was, which was so weird and not him. His brother would laugh his butt off. His eyes trailed lower from her lips down to her legs. She wore shorts and her legs were long and lean down to her feet. He suddenly realized her toenails had pink glitter polish on them. It was strange, but he thought about how he'd never really noticed that before, even though she'd been in flip-flops last night. It made him smile. He liked the sparkles. She was girlish in a sweet, innocent way. The way she'd kicked that guy last night had proven she learned quickly. He thought about the fact that he would keep teaching her ways to defend and protect herself. He liked the idea of that. Checking the time on his watch, he realized they needed to get up. It was past 6.30, and they needed to get on the road to Oceanside by 7, especially considering traffic. He squeezed her hand a bit, finally allowing himself to push the hair out of her face. Time to get up, sleepyhead. Her eyes popped open, and she sat up. Oh my gosh. He laughed and put a gentle hand on her hand. Do you still want to go today? She blinked and nodded, a smile stretching across her face. Yeah. Great. He winked at her and got up. We have to leave in 30 minutes, so let's grab some breakfast quickly and go. No need for a shower. We're going to the ocean. A bit later, when he came out of the bathroom, she was standing at the window, staring out. He moved next to her unable to resist putting an arm around her waist and pulling her into him. Loving that she relaxed against him like she belonged there, he stroked a hand down her arm and laced his fingers with hers. She sighed. It's so beautiful. 
Sometimes I just feel like I'm in a movie or something, like this can't be my life. Taking notice of the ocean and the surfers out there already, he smiled, thinking she'd changed the way he looked at San Diego. Yeah, it's beautiful. She looked up at him and frowned. Are you talking about the ocean or me? He kissed her cheek. Both. She laughed. Hey, he said, asking it like a question. Hey. The way she looked a bit shy in the morning light drove him mad for her, as if he wasn't mad enough. He took her into a kiss and deepened it, wishing he hadn't promised himself or her he would obey boundaries. She laughed through the kiss. How did we happen? He was wondering the same thing. I don't know, but I'm glad we did. The eyes held. He thought he would never get tired of gazing into hers. Her lip turned up. Hey. He laughed, already seeking her lips. Hey. As they drove to Oceanside, Scar was anxious for her to see what they were doing before surfing. When he took a turn for the airport hangar, she sputtered. Wait, the beach exit is up further. I know, he said, smiling at her. Okay, so where are we going? You'll see, he grinned. She let out a happy laugh and smacked his arm, which she had a habit of doing when she was excited. He liked her touching him in any way. What's going on? She asked again. He pulled off the exit and turned right. The airport hangar wasn't far. As they parked, she was almost yipping like a chihuahua because she was so excited. Scar, tell me, she begged again. It made him smile as he opened her door and took her hand to walk toward the gate. He spotted his friend already waiting for them. You'll see. She did a little jump and he laughed, thinking how young she seemed. She was. The reality of that age difference hit him in the gut. He wasn't sure if her parents would like him or not since he was roughly seven years older than her. Well, hopefully they would work it out. Scar knuckle-bumped his friend through the gate. Lollipop, this is Kansas. Kansas, Lollipop. Lollipop turned to her and opened the gate. You already got a nickname from the lieutenant, I see. The gate opened, and she and Scar walked through. She narrowed her eyes at both of them. I guess you served together. Scar smiled and jerked a thumb at Lollipop. Joe Saunders, but Lollipop to me. Lollipop waved them forward, and they fell into step with him. He turned to Shayla. You don't even have to tell me where you got your nickname. Lieutenant here isn't that creative. She laughed. Scar could tell she felt comfortable, but she still gave him a crazy look like she was about to explode. What are we doing? Lollipop raised an eyebrow at Scar. You haven't told her? Scar loved this. They got to the tarmac where a helicopter awaited. Helicopter ride over Oceanside. He presented the copter to her like Bob Barker would show a special piece of gold jewelry. Her hand flew to her mouth. Oh my gosh. She stared at the helicopter, tears swimming in her eyes. No way. She shook her head back and forth, then grabbed his arm and jerked him closer, murmuring, way more than $50. He shook his head and turned to Lollipop, who was busy doing a safety check. Nope, not for friends. An amazed look, filled with gratitude and humility, washed over her face. She blinked and wiped at her nose as she sniffed. Scar. Scar knew, as his heart froze, that he wanted to see that look of love and hero worship on her face for the rest of his life. He grinned and pulled her roughly into a hug. You're fine, Kansas. She hugged him but blinked and pulled away. He could see she was getting herself under control as Lollipop moved back to them. Lollipop took in the scene and gave Scar a look like, what the? Scar shook his head and let her go, keeping her hand. We're ready for the big tour. Lollipop went over safety concerns and directions with the headphones and how you had to speak into the microphone. He explained they were on a special frequency so no one could hear them talk, even though they would hear some air traffic. She shook her head. I cannot believe you did this. It's only a 20-minute ride, Scar said. It's not like I gave you the moon. No, she said. This is over the moon. 
As they got in, Scar insisted she sit in front. This was for her. He'd been in plenty of helicopters. Lollipop took them up and headed straight for the ocean. She turned back and grinned at Scar. I had no idea the freeway was so close. He nodded, loving her excitement. The helicopter got to the ocean, and he saw her pull out her phone and start recording. Lollipop was the perfect tour guide, explaining all the tourist spots. Over there is where the best whale watching is. He took them back toward the coastline and pointed. There is Camp Pendleton. He looked back at Scar. That's where Scar and I did some of our training. Scar thought of the waterlogged days and endless nights they'd spent on the beach doing drills, all to push them to their limit and test their mental stability. Hell week with Lollipop had been brutal. Lollipop turned to him. Bet you're glad you're with a pretty girl today and not doing drills. Scar laughed. Ah, uh, yeah. She kept the camera on and turned to record him. He is my hero. He talked his buddy into giving us a tour. Scar waved at the camera and pointed back to the ocean, trying to distract her from recording him. Hero? Hmm, he didn't like that word. He pointed. There's the house that was in the movie Top Gun. Distracted, she turned, still recording. Lollipop continued. Yep, Top Gun was recorded at Pendleton. That's the famous house of the girlfriend. Lollipop pointed farther down. That's the street the famous motorcycle scene from the movie was filmed on. She kept recording and turned to look back at Scar. Unable to resist, he pulled his own phone out and snapped a picture of her in the headgear, gazing out. She looked ecstatic. Seeing through her eyes, he shared the joy of the moment. It was awesome. Lollipop continued down the coastline. There's Oceanside Beach, best surfing anywhere in Cali. He smiled at her. I hear you're giving it a shot today. Shayla shifted in her seat. I'm nervous. Lollipop winked at her. Don't be. Lieutenant's a great teacher. He taught me. Scar nodded. Lollipop pointed to the pier. If you go on that pier, you'll run into rubies. It's a great diner. Have Scar take you. Scar didn't want to tell Lollipop he had plans for that already. It wasn't long before Lollipop turned around and headed back. Shayla asked Lollipop questions about himself and found out he was from Louisville, Kentucky. They shared some Midwestern jokes for the rest of the return. After they landed and waited for the helicopter blades to stop, Scar asked Lollipop to take some pics of them in front of the helicopter. When Scar ran over to give him the phone and position him, Lollipop said, she's a keeper. Scar turned, surprised he'd said that. You think? Never seen you look so whipped before. Scar slugged him in the arm. Lollipop just laughed. As Scar posed with Shayla for the picture, he thought about how he would remember this day forever. Chapter 22 To say that Shayla was in a daze by the time they parked at Oceanside would be like saying a Category 5 hurricane was just a little breeze. She was overwhelmed that he'd taken her on a helicopter, and now they were going surfing. He opened her door for her, and she grinned up at him, knowing she'd never felt this way for any other man she'd ever dated. Not that she'd dated that much, but Jason from back home felt like an amateurish boy compared to Scar. Wanting to see if he remembered the joke, she said, Hey. His lips settled on hers, and he pulled her closer to him. She laughed, guessing he'd gotten it. As he placed his hands on her cheeks and trailed kisses down her jawbone and back to her lips, she knew she was gone. This man, everything about him felt breathtaking and invincible. Everything was excitement, and there was the way he took care of her. Not that she ever felt like she needed to be taken care of, but he made her feel cherished. Her mother often said, Your father cherishes me. She'd thought it was kind of stupid. But at this moment, that's exactly how she felt. Scar pulled back. He searched her face and grinned, sending her stomach fluttering. She thought about how handsome he was with his blue eyes and his blonde hair, which looked like it had gotten blonder since they'd been together. You cannot not tell me what you are thinking. He kept her locked in his arms. Embarrassed, she tried to get out. He wouldn't let her. No way. 
She sighed and quit fighting. The only place to look was those beautiful blue eyes. It's going to sound stupid. I like stupid. It was funny, coming from this man who had been through war and had the scar to prove it. He seemed so sure of himself, yet he was holding her like he would hold something very valuable. She relented and reached up, gently tracing the scar on his face. He relaxed his grip, closed his eyes, and groaned. You cannot touch me like that woman and expect me not to kiss you again. She let him kiss her. This time it was light and sweet. He kept her close. Tell me what you're thinking. My mother has always said my father cherished her, treated her with kindness and love. I could see that he did. My brothers and I would tease that he went about doing nice things for my mom too much, leaving her little flowers in season on the table for her and cheesy things like that. Scar lifted his eyebrows. I was just feeling that same way about you a second ago. You open doors for me. You plan amazing things for me and kiss me like you mean it. It was stupid, but it made her almost tear up to say this. He squeezed her. I do mean it. She blinked. Exactly. You take me on helicopter rides and you're gonna teach me to surf, all so I can live my dreams. Holding her gaze for a second, he leaned down and kissed the tears forming in her eyes. Shh, you're just going to have to get used to it. This made her smile, and they held each other for a few more minutes. Abruptly, he let her go, keeping her hand as he pulled the door shut. Because I'm thinking I might have to relocate to San Diego. Her heart leapt. What? A million thoughts flitted through her mind. What? She jumped next to him as she walked. He laughed. It's not final, but I'm thinking about it. He tapped his head. Elation swept through her. He could be here. He could do things with her all the time. He laughed. Focus, Kansas. Today we're teaching you how to surf, and I'm all business. She got serious. What about football? You clearly love it. He hesitated. Then he let out a breath and stopped walking. She stopped with him. You can't give that up. A troubled expression darkened his face and he looked toward the ocean. She could feel the conflict inside of him. I love the game. I love everything about playing professionally. He turned back to her. But when I was a seal, it felt like more than a job. More than something I did for a living. It was a calling. It was something. He broke off and rubbed a hand over his face. I guess it felt like God wanted me to do it. Chills washed over her, and she felt herself open up even more to him. He'd been directed by God. I was so dang confused when I took a bullet and got discharged, because it felt like God had given me mixed signals. He put a hand over his chest and smiled at her. Sounds funny, doesn't it? She put her hand over his. Not at all. He let out another breath. What I have going on with the vets, it feels like maybe I was meant to do this the whole time. She could see this. She thought of seeing him interacting with the guys at the gym. I love the vets. I love the idea of sparring for vets around the country, helping thousands of vets. You saw the other night at the gym, it doesn't matter what problems any of us have. When we're together, we feel better. His brow furrowed. I've been trying to figure out a way to spend more of my time doing what matters, and... His lip quirked up. Maybe there's this girl who might be worth putting down roots for. Crazy, hyper-energy pulsed through her. Would he come here for her? It was overwhelming, but was it right? Gently tugging her, he went across the street to a surf shop and stopped, pulling her close to him and peering into her eyes. Hey. This made her laugh. Hey. They kissed again. So many thoughts whirled around her mind. She focused on the kiss, because the way he kissed her pulled her out of her confused thoughts. She was getting used to the feel of the softness of his lips and the smell of his cologne. But she wondered if she would ever be used to the pull this man had on her. Once again, her knees went weak, 
and she felt herself leaning into him. In response, he held her closer. Pulling back, she was breathless and laughing. Focus, Lieutenant, he sighed. Okay. So I was going to pull in a favor because I know the guy, so I could get by with him letting us use all the stuff for free. However, when I called him two days ago, he mentioned his wife is about to have a baby, so I need a pass on the spending money part right now, because we need boards and wetsuits, but I want to help the guy out. When she started to protest, he put up a hand. I have money, Kansas. I wish you would stop making this such an issue. It bothered her to have him spending what would probably be at least 200 on this excursion. How about, in exchange, I'll let you cook dinner tonight? She rolled her eyes. With the food you bought me. He cocked an eyebrow. The food was outside of this deal. Glaring at him, she sighed, thinking she could cook him a fantastic dinner with all the things in her pantry. I'm not happy about this. Hey he said, and waited. She shook her head. No. Gently, he reached out and touched the end of her nose. You stay here so you don't have to witness the money spent, even though you should know I do cherish you, and I would, I will, continue to spend money on you. Not for this deal, she said, knowing it was futile. He rolled his eyes. Fine. Fine. Letting go of her hand, he stepped into the surf shop. She thought about how she'd just let him do whatever he wanted, and she wasn't even really mad at him because he was kind, thinking about how his friend could use the money. Dang him. Twenty minutes later, Shayla was wearing a wetsuit, and she and Scar were standing on Oceanside Beach. The waves rolled in and out enticingly. There were other surfers scattered along the shoreline, she noticed most of them were male, but there were a couple of women. Even though it was early, there were two families setting up umbrellas and kids running around. The smell of hot dogs wafted through the air. Once in a while, a homeless person would walk along the pier carrying a backpack. They both stood on the surfboards. Scar pointed to the board. Put your dominant leg in back. Listening intently, she put her right leg in back. Now, transfer your weight to your back leg and kind of sit into it. Keep your stomach tight and use your core. He pointed to the ocean. The best thing about learning to surf at Oceanside is the waves crest closer to the shore. That's why it's the best for surfers, especially for beginners. In other places like Coronado Beach or Hawaii, the surfing demands a lot of strength to get out far enough to catch a good wave. Here, you can get up pretty easily because I'm just a puny girl, she said it sarcastically. He grinned back at her. I didn't say that. She rolled her eyes. But, yeah, she laughed. There's the egomaniac I love. He froze. You love? It's just a saying. As she peered into his eyes, she wondered. He held her gaze for a long moment before going back to teaching her. Okay, the basics of getting up. He dropped to a push-up position on the board. Come down here. Taking a second to get down on her knees, one at a time, she grimaced at him. Show off. He laughed as he straddled the board. When you first climb onto your board, you're going to straddle it like so. Then you'll kneel on the board. Then you'll put your left leg out front and balance on your right knee. Good. He put his hands out. Use your hands for balance, but remember that balance comes from your belly button, from contracting those muscles. She mimicked his stance and focused on her core. Okay? When I say up, you'll go here. He pushed himself up to the classic surfing position you always see in the movies or on television, and she followed suit. Good. His hands rested on her waist. You get your hips to the side, but you look down the front of the board. It always amazed her that his touch could send fire through her. For once, he was clearly not in that flirty mindset. He was in teaching mode. He pulled his hands away and looked at her stance. Good, now back to your straddle position. Let's go through the moves a couple of times so they are fresh when you're in the water. They went through it ten times, until Shayla was mostly sure she had it down. Finally, he said with a smile on his face, 
You ready for this, Kansas? Yes, she said, excitement bubbling inside her. They picked up the boards. Hers was big and heavy, but she could handle it. They reached the water, lay on the boards, and started paddling out. It quickly became apparent that he was a much faster swimmer than she was. Not too far out, he asked. Would you care if I hooked you to me and pulled you out for a bit? You could do it, but it'll just go faster this way, and it's simple for me. Fine. Even though she didn't want to accept too much help, she did want to get to the actual surfing part. Okay. He nodded, moving in front of her. Once again, she admired his strength and power. He scooted back on his surfboard and connected the rubber sole of his rubber shoe to her board and then took off. Just like that, she felt like she was on a ride. He was gliding so smoothly through the water. Amazing, she muttered. What's that? Purposely, she said. Hey, he chuckled. You better mean that, hey, because I'll collect when we're out there. She laughed, loving the idea of him collecting here in this setting. They stopped a bit further out, and he pulled her into him, kissing her and holding both of the boards. This man took her breath away. Pulling back, he shook out his wet hair, looking glorious. You ready, Kansas? Yeah. First, I'm going to get you going. Then I'll come in after you. Okay. Straddle your board. She did as she was told. Okay, get on your knees and put your left foot forward. It was harder than it looked. She felt like a toddler walking for the first time. He watched the waves. Okay, this one, get ready. Up. She obeyed his order and felt him give her a firm push with the wave. She couldn't believe it. She was doing it, gliding on the water toward the shore. She thought of all the times she'd imagined it and decided this blew her expectations away. The salt water sprayed in her face, the sun shone down on her, and she watched the kids laughing on the shore. She was surfing. The waves slowed, and she realized she didn't know what to do, so she just fell into the water. He was laughing when she emerged. She turned to him, putting a fist into the air. I did it! He punched the air as well. Kansas! he shouted. She walked to the shore in triumph and exhaustion, relishing the sand between her toes. As she rested, she watched Scar straddle his board, noting how he paddled with the water and then popped up like he was born to do it. He didn't just glide to shore. He did fancy swirls and a little turn, which impressed her and prompted her to cheer for him. He met her eyes and put both fists up. She mimicked him, laughing. When he got closer, he got off the board easily, without the flopping thing she'd done, and motioned for her to come back. Come on, Kansas, don't get out of the water, let's go again. After a few waves, she felt like she was getting the hang of surfing. Scar had as much passion for it as he seemed to have for everything in life. Every time she went out, he pulled her toward him and said, Hey. Every time she said it back, they kissed as much as they surfed, and time seemed to stand still. She felt lost and found all at once. Chapter 23 Driving away from Oceanside late in the afternoon, Scar held Shayla's hand. It was as pruny as his, and he couldn't quit smiling. His cheek muscles would be sore the next day from all the smiling he'd done. How long had it been since that happened? He turned and saw her closing her eyes and leaning into the side of the car. Are you tired? He asked, knowing that surfing took it out of you. Even he was tired, but he was more accustomed to working out all day. I'm exhausted, but that was incredible. Scar, thank you. She'd thanked him like a million times, and he wanted her to stop. He squeezed her hand. No, thank you, he said as he pulled onto the interstate and headed toward La Jolla. They were both starving. It was just... He trailed off, loving that he'd been able to be part of this. I need to tell you that you may think I'm doing this for you, but woman, can't you see that I love every minute of this? She turned to him, smiling. Really? Yeah. You've made me see this place through your eyes, and it's pretty awesome. I'd forgotten how awesome. She laughed and squeezed his hand. Scar wanted to tell her he'd never felt this way about another woman. How could he say that? He knew she liked him, 
She was obviously attracted to him. She was so young. He wasn't going to ruin a chance to let her fall in love with him slowly, which was funny because he'd never in his life wanted to take the slow path. He'd found it with her, though. Right now, he wanted it all to last as long as it could. It still stunned him. Seeing him take the La Jolla exit, she asked, Where are we going? I want to show you one more thing today. This set off a trigger, a halfway delirious laugh. Scar, I won't lie. I want to see whatever you want to show me, but I'm starving. He grinned. So am I, and we'll fix that. No, she pulled her hand away. I want to cook. He reached and took it back. You promised, she pouted adorably. You will. I'm a machine, I'll be hungry in three hours, and it's only four o'clock. So suck it up, Kansas. You have to spend the rest of the day with me and feed me later, too. This made her smile. Fine. Neither of them spoke as he wound through the streets, heading to one of his favorite sushi restaurants. At least it had been. He hoped it was still there. He smiled, thinking that it wasn't an uncomfortable silence. Shayla looked around a little before she laid her head to the side and rested. All he could think about were plans for the future. He felt like he really could give up the Titans. His mind raced as he thought of the way he loved being the point person on the sparring program. Maybe he could head up the one here and go open more gyms around the country. It would take a bit of travel, but he could do it. Liking that they could be comfortable with silence, he finally pulled up to the restaurant. He was thrilled to see Shiku was still in business. Oh no, she said, looking from the restaurant and back to him. I'm sorry, I hate sushi. He frowned. No, I can't, it's disgusting. True to form, he didn't accept no. He parked and said, you try it, then we'll leave if you can't eat it. She looked worried. That's a waste of money. I don't care. Really, I don't think it's a good idea, she insisted. He went around and opened her door. Kansas, I took you on a helicopter and surfing today. This is all I'm asking from you. She rolled her eyes. Oh, another favor to you. He put his hand out. Please. Taking his hand, she climbed out. Hey. She frowned at him and shook her head. No. Dang, no kiss. He would take the win with the sushi. He was grateful she would try new things. They walked in and a hostess sat them. What would you like? Scar asked after they'd sat and were staring at the menu. I have no idea. He loved that she was about to experience great food. Do you care if I order a couple of things? Nope. He ordered the California roll, the salmon roll, and four others. After the server left, she looked around, looking skeptical. This ain't the farm. It made him laugh, and she smiled at him. Once again, he thought of how he liked just being with this woman. Tell me about the farm, he said, leaning forward. She sighed. Surprisingly, I've missed it since I've been here. But the past couple of years, it's just been a lot of work. He tried to see this girl on a farm. What did you do? Everything. Tractor driving, mucking out stalls, feeding chickens, milking cows, all of it. She was tough. Farm work had taught her toughness. He thought about the cleat-chasing women he'd dated. What are you thinking about? She asked. Schooling his expression, he shook his head. No point in telling her that all he could think about was going to the farm and asking her father if he could marry her. Talk, she said insistently. Saved by the food, he thought, as their server put the dishes on the table. Systematically, he put a bit of every roll onto both of their plates and showed her how to eat with chopsticks. She stared blankly at the food. Putting a bite of salmon roll into his mouth, he nodded at her. Finally, she picked up some California roll and took a mini bite. He waited. Come on, Kansas, you can do better than that. She chewed then took another bite and flashed a smile. Success. It's good. What should I try next? He pointed at the salmon roll and laughed, falling deeper and deeper in love with this woman. 
When Scar pulled up to her townhome around 6.30, he could tell she was tired, but he didn't want to leave. She started to open the car door, but paused. Not to be pushy, but are you opening my door, or is this one of those times I can get the door for myself? I'm opening the door. Smiling, he got out and opened her door for her. Hey. Grinning, she leaned into him. Hey. His hands were on her waist, and he pulled her closer. She giggled and pulled back. This code word business is pretty tricky. He kissed her again and pulled back. Top secret. With a laugh, she reached for her bag, and they walked hand in hand to her house. They got to the door, and he looked around, checking his phone. I got a text a while back that new cameras have been installed. He took her phone. Let's get the app downloaded. She opened the door and held it. You're coming, right? Happy that she expected him to come, he walked in with her. I didn't know if you wanted some time alone or something. For a second, she looked confused. If you need time, you can... I mean, thank you for the helicopter ride and the surfing. She smiled widely. And for the sushi. Her cheeks turned red when he took her hand and pulled her into the crook of his arm. I'm just going to get this all set up, but I'd love to hang out with you. She let his hand go and moved to the washer and dryer by the kitchen. Okay, I'm going to do some laundry. He went to one of the bar stools and sat, liking how normal all this felt, them being together. It took longer than he wanted to get it all working properly. In the meantime, she washed dishes, cleaned up the living room, and changed her laundry. Without being blatant about it, he watched as she went about doing her tasks. The natural way she did what had to be done was such a stark contrast to the prima donnas he'd dated, the ones who were always hovering around with fake nails, fake lips, fake everything. When she finished, she nuzzled up to his back, putting her chin on his shoulder and looking at what he was doing. How's it coming? He swiped at the buttons. Good, almost got it. I'm going to take a quick shower she said, moving to the stairs. His hand jerked across the phone, and he struggled to keep his mind on the task at hand. Okay. When the security system was finally working as expected, he still heard the shower running. Needing some air, he went to the porch. He stood there and watched the ocean, liking her view of the boardwalk, perfect for people watching. He thought of the other things he'd seen on her San Diego bucket list. They could go surf again tomorrow if she was up for it. He'd enjoyed it a lot. They could go to Point Loma Lighthouse. Honestly, he'd thought all the tourists were stupid going there, but now he saw it with different eyes. Her eyes. Chills rushed through him again, and he thought about how much he was changing. They could go to SeaWorld, which he had thought was even more stupid than Point Loma, but she hadn't gone there yet. She couldn't afford it. She didn't take things for granted. Or they could bike around Mission Boardwalk. She would love that, and he would love seeing her on a bike again. Then they could go eat at the deli at Dana Point. Those were the best sandwiches. It made him so happy to think about all the things they could do together. The screen door creaked open. Turning, he saw her standing there in sweats and a t-shirt. Her hair was wet and slicked back. Dang, how did this girl get more and more beautiful? Hesitating for a second, she seemed to be deciding something. She grinned. Hey. Fire burned in him, and he laughed, opening his arms for her. Their lips met, and he smelled the source of all the lemony smells. It must be her shampoo. Loving it, he detoured from her lips, kissing her cheek and getting to her neck, inhaling deeply. Then they were making out on her front porch. The sound of rollerblades and children walking the boardwalk faded into the background. She giggled as he kissed the spot under her ear on her neck, and loving her giggle, he kissed it again. She pulled away from him, searching his eyes. He smiled down at her, feeling like his heart would burst. You like the code word, but I think you might be using it when you don't need to. She narrowed her eyes. He realized he was an idiot lecturing her about the code word. Not that I'm complaining, he said quickly, holding her tighter. She laughed. Fine, I'll be more selective with it. No, 
He pulled her back to him, kissing her again. I'm an idiot. She giggled some more and kissed him back. He held her in his arms. I have plans for tomorrow. I'm so excited, she gushed. Would you care if I grabbed a shower too? She nodded. Are you going back to the hotel? Yeah, want to come? I don't need to. They caught the guy. Letting out a sigh, he said, I hate leaving you. You go, I'll be fine. He didn't want today to be over. She squeezed his hand. You're coming back for your sandwich, right? Chapter 24 If someone had told Shayla a week ago that she'd be holding a single candle between two peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, waiting for a former Navy SEAL, she would have told them they were insane. Yet here she was. She stood at the window, watching the ocean and the almost sunset. Since she was on the lookout for his car, she was surprised to see him riding up on a bike, one of the resort bikes. It made her laugh. She walked to the front door. He was so breathtakingly beautiful. He wore jeans and a black Under Armour t-shirt that fit in all the right places to show his properly formed amazing muscles. Dang, the man was attractive. His blonde hair and striking blue eyes didn't hurt. She pushed open the screen door as he pulled the bike up to the porch. A bike? He turned to her and gave her a dopey grin. Hey. She laughed. Hey. He swooped her into his arms and kissed her. The smell of the ocean and mint mouthwash made her heart race even more. She'd never experienced falling in love like this before. She tried to let him go, but he wouldn't let go of her. She laughed. I have our sandwiches, she said. His eyes looked intense, and he leaned in, nuzzling right below her ear. You taste better than a sandwich. She shivered and held his broad shoulders, loving the feel of him against her too much. Worry flitted through her mind at how much she liked him physically. Scar. Undeterred, he pulled her into him and kissed her cheek before letting go. Then he kept her hand and turned for the door, seeming to sense her concern. Don't worry, seal, remember? Master of the mission. Unable to stop herself from smiling, she passed him as he held the door. Taking in the sandwiches and the candles, Scar gazed at her in faux amazement. Honey, you cooked. She nodded. I can cook a better meal, but you suggested sandwiches. I'll take a rain check on a home-cooked meal, Kansas. But what if we took our sandwiches and some blankets and ate on the beach? She liked this idea. Strike that, she loved the idea of eating on the beach at sunset. So she agreed. Ten minutes later, she was snuggled in his arms. The ocean crashed in front of them. The moon shone bright overhead. Scar and Shayla sat on one blanket, and another was draped over both of their shoulders. They ate their sandwiches and drank from bottles of water. The whole day ran through her mind, and she couldn't believe it. She was finally doing the things she'd always dreamed of, and it was better than she'd ever imagined with him. What are you thinking? He finished a drink of water and tossed the bottle onto the sand. Feeling herself relax, she leaned into his chest, and he propped his head on top of hers. It was amazing how perfectly she fit there. I was thinking how wonderful this day with you was. He squeezed her and patted her hair. It was a good day. The sun was setting, and there was a bit of a breeze, but not one they needed a blanket for. Being here in his arms, just like this, felt perfect. She was overwhelmed with gratitude to God. Tears filled her eyes, but she didn't want to turn into a blubbering mess. Can I tell you something? He asked. She hesitated, sensing the gravity of her words. Of course. I didn't tell you one thing about the night I got the scar. His admission took her by surprise. Okay. She turned in his arms and repositioned so she could see his face. He frowned. The night my team was captured. She blinked and thought of what he was sharing with her, something he'd probably never shared according to him. You were captured? 
He waved his hand in dismissal like this was a side detail. Yeah, anyway, their ship took us to an embankment. It was dark. My face was bleeding. The guys I was with, one of them was moaning from his injuries. Another was crying. There was nothing I could do about it. And I remember thinking, why the hell am I here? And what am I doing this for? Uneasy, she breathed. And? I think this moment right here with you is the answer I've been waiting for. A thrill ran up her spine, and she turned and looked up at him. Tears were in his eyes. One was falling down his cheek. She was stunned that he'd shared that with her. Moments like this when a man holds a woman bathed in moonlight, the world feels right somehow. That's how it feels with you, Shay. It just feels better. It makes everything I went through feel worth it. Without saying anything, she leaned up and brushed her lips across his. They tasted like peanut butter. He deepened the kiss, and she wondered if there would ever be a more perfect moment in her whole life than right now. No one said the code word. He grinned. She rolled her eyes. Maybe we should skip the code word. He laughed and kissed her again. Chapter 25 Scar and Shayla headed back to her townhome, the blanket draped over both of them. He loved the feeling that he could protect her right here, that nothing could go wrong with her right by his side. He wasn't sure what she would do when they got to the townhome, all he knew was he didn't want to leave her for the night. It was stupid. Security was up to par, but man, he didn't want to leave. They walked up the stairs, and he opened the screen door for her. She punched in the new code on the lock. Thank you so much for having all the security put in. Nodding, he loitered on the porch. For a moment, neither of them spoke a word. Then she sighed. Well, I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Every part of him wanted to keep seeing her tonight, but he agreed. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you. Then she grinned. Hey. He broke into a laugh and crossed the doorway. Hey. He pulled her into a kiss, keeping it light and sweet. He ended it by kissing both of her cheeks and holding her close to him. Slow, he reminded himself. This was not a girl to take things fast with. Pulling back, she nodded. See you in the morning. With an insane amount of self-control, he pulled back and moved out of the doorway, pulling the door shut behind him. He took the bike he'd rented off the porch and hopped on. It was dark, but the moon lit up the sky and there were lights on the boardwalk back to the hotel. He biked by a few random people, couples, and some military runners. It was strange to him that even though he should be tired from all they'd done together, he only felt awake and alive. He decided right then what he would do. He would follow the same trail that they'd taken the other day, and he would push out a bike ride around the island. Going hard and fast, he took off. It felt awesome. He was soaring, flying. He crossed the street by the hotel and went down the other boardwalk along the other side of the island. The breeze was cool and perfect. He thought about how the air in San Diego felt so different from Texas. San Diego actually cooled down at night, and the breeze was heavenly. Once more, he thought about how he could be in San Diego full time, how he could relocate. Was he willing to give up football? As he pushed around the rest of the island for the next hour, he liked the idea of being in San Diego liked the idea of doing the vet sparring full-time, running the gym, expanding with other gyms, maybe even doing tours with his brother. Most importantly, he could be with her, every day, eventually every night, too. With her, married to her. Getting back to his room, he took another shower because he was gross and saw it was only 10.30, as he got all his clothes together for the laundry, he made a list of all the things they would do the next day. He couldn't stop smiling as he thought of the pillow talk they would have when he called her in just a bit. 
Then he got a text. Thinking it was her, he was going to reply, Already miss me? But it wasn't. It was from Anthony Kincaid. Bro and Dad want to chat about project. Sending the jet for you at 8 a.m. tomorrow. Annoyance rippled through him. He did notice the irony of this situation, because he liked being on the Kincaid team. He liked the power they could wield with their charitable forces and the vision he had with this program. However, at the moment, he felt like he'd been summoned by the king, and he did not like that. He texted back. Okay. What else could he do? Plus, a small part of him thought this might be an opportunity to talk to them about relocating here. They also had to talk about football. Sure, they could replace him, but they were a team. He would miss them. He grinned, thinking they wouldn't miss his trash talking. Thinking about it made him smile. You don't try to compete in trash talking with an ex-Navy SEAL. You just don't. His phone rang and he smiled as he answered. You just can't get enough, Kansas. She hesitated. You know, I guess I don't mind my other nickname so much. He laughed and felt something stir in his breast at how much he wanted this woman, how completely he wanted her. You got it, dream girl. A chuckle rang over the line. I miss you. She sounded vulnerable. He wanted to offer her to come stay, but he didn't want to do anything he would regret. And he did understand the need for boundaries, guidelines, and discipline. It was what had gotten him this far in his career. I miss you too. He didn't want to tell her this, but he had to. I was just summoned to Mount Olympus by the Kincaids. Oh, the guys that run your charity? Yes. Okay. She sounded uncertain. I hate to do this to you, but I have to leave at eight in the morning. With time changes, I think I can be back by dinner. Will you go out to dinner with me? Well, I did have plans with this hot former Navy SEAL all day, but... He liked the fact she called him hot. Oh, really? Just how hot is this guy? He asked, smiling, hating that he was fishing for compliments. She skittered out a laugh. The downside to him is that he's cocky and arrogant, the good thing is that he's brave and extremely funny and outrageously sexy. Man, did he want to pull her in for a kiss right now. Mm-hmm, keep going. She laughed. I think my favorite thing about him is he makes me feel smart and important and like I can do anything. Like I should follow my dreams because they might be important too. His heart raced. He wanted to ask her to marry him right now, which was crazy, but by now the idea had grown too big to ignore. He would get a ring tomorrow, and when he got back, he would ask her to marry him. So you'll make that home-cooked meal for me? Say, seven? I would love to. His heart somersaulted. He turned off the lights in the room and lay across the two pushed-together queen beds. Are you in bed? He asked. Yes, you? I am just now lying down. She sighed. There were so many favorites about this day, but one of the best was waking up with your hand in mine. Another shot of warmth to his chest. Mine too. I loved watching you surf, though. You're a gorgeous, dream girl. She didn't say anything for a minute. And you're not bad yourself. Your flattery overwhelms me. She let out a sigh. What do you want me to say? You kind of have an amazing body. Liking her blatant compliment more than he should, he grinned. Uh, yeah, that's good, say that. She laughed. And your tattoos, even though I don't know what they mean, are pretty awesome. The trident. What? On my shoulder, I have the Navy Seal trident. It is an eagle holding a gun, a trident, and an anchor. The pendant is one officers get when they've accomplished the buds training to become a seal. Come to think of it, he normally didn't discuss his tattoos with anyone, not even the woman he'd dated last year. You're pretty amazing, she sniffed. I cannot believe this day. I cannot believe I met you, that we... Fell in love, he finished for her. He couldn't believe he said it, but then again he could. It was her. 
Maybe he was wearing rose-colored glasses, but he wanted to wake up next to her for the rest of his life. Yeah, she said quietly. Which is so strange, because it feels so different from anything I've ever felt. Scar's mind flashed to her old boyfriend. It was stupid, but he wanted to deck this fictitious guy he'd never met. He had to be fictitious, because everything between him and Shay felt so real. Scar? she asked. Sorry, yes, it's different for me too, dream girl. His voice was soft, and he thought about how he'd never seen this coming. She sighed. I saw some of your past girlfriends on the internet tonight. What? He didn't like thinking she was looking at pictures of his dates with other women. It's, well, some of those girls had it all. He knew what she was thinking. They looked like they had it all because it was all fake. I, he tried to explain. That's not my type, he defended himself. Hmm, she said. He hated that he wasn't there to talk to her about this in person. I, his heart raced at what he was about to confess. I went for a bike ride tonight. Tonight? Yeah, of course you did, Rambo. He smiled. She exhaled. My legs are shaky and my upper body strength is wasted, but you go for a bike ride. He grinned even wider, not hating how she was complimenting him on his manliness. Of course, she would never say it that way. My point is that when I was on that ride, all I could think of was how the past couple of days have felt so real to me. That you, being with you, has felt more real than any part of my life ever has. He swallowed, feeling the emotion swell up. I want a life with you, Shay. I do. I know this might be too fast. I've been wanting to say it, but I haven't wanted to scare you off. You're so much younger than me and so innocent. But I want to tell you. He trailed. Just say what you want to say. She spoke softly, and it sounded like a challenge. I'm in love with you, Shay. The words tumbled out before he could take them back. His heart thumped madly, but he didn't care. It was true. She took an audible breath, then said, I think I'm in love with you, too. At that moment, he didn't care if it was jockish or competitive. He made a fist and tugged it into his side like he would if the Titans scored a touchdown in a close game. Yes! he said aloud. That made her giggle. Then she sniffed. Are you crying? He sat up in bed. No, she said quickly. Yes. He couldn't stop himself from jumping up and putting on his tennis shoes. I'm sorry, Shay, but I have to come see you. He ended the call and took off out the door and down the stairs, not bothering with going to the parking lot to get his car. He flat out ran to her house guessing he probably made it just as quickly as if he'd been driving. There she was, standing on the porch, laughing and dressed in pajama bottoms and a tank top with a blanket draped around her. Hey. Hey. Feeling ecstatic, he pulled her to him and kissed her, knowing he wanted her to be the last woman he ever kissed. Chapter 26 the next morning, Shay woke up, and he was gone. He'd stayed on top of the covers next to her in bed. They'd fallen asleep talking and dreaming about a life together in San Diego, where he would run his sparring for vets. She'd seen his vision as he laid it out, and as he traced his fingers over her hands and spooned up against her back. He'd whispered about all the new adventures he would show her around San Diego, He'd told her of places he wanted to go all over the world. The best part was that she'd seen the vision too. Even though it overwhelmed her, the thing she was the most sure of was him by her side, hand in hand as they started a life together. Knowing that he would probably wake and leave to catch his plane, she hadn't expected to wake up at almost nine o'clock in the morning. She laughed and rolled out of bed happy to see a rose on the chair by the bed and a note that said, hike to Point Loma today, and we'll talk about it tonight. How had he gotten a rose? She smiled even wider as she smelled it. 
She buzzed around her townhome excitedly, getting everything in order, taking a shower, pulling out chicken for the crock pot. She got out some chili powder and salsa and thought she'd make chicken fajitas for dinner, letting the chicken saute all day. It would be heavenly, and she wanted that for Scar. He'd told her he would be back by seven, and that left the whole day for her. Taking her time, she packed a light lunch. Shayla paused next to her bucket list wall, reviewing all the things she'd put there. Then she came to one on the list. Mary Jason on the beach. She pulled it off the wall, crumpled it up, and tossed it in the trash. It amazed her how easily it came off the wall and went into the garbage without regret. Sure, it had been over a month now, and she had had time. For so long, he'd been part of her dreams. She hummed with a sense of accomplishment as she drove to Point Loma. It was on a naval base that was also a state park, and she was amazed to see all the barracks for soldiers and the graveyard. She paid $10 to get in and smiled, thinking that Scar would have insisted on paying. Actually, he probably would have somehow talked the guy into getting in free. Her thoughts were flooded with Scar. He was a man among men, a larger-than-life guy. When she'd first met him, all those qualities kind of bugged her. He was sassy about life and was confident that he could do everything and handle anything. She thought of the night she'd been grabbed by that creep. Scar had been there, pulling him off and slamming his fist into the guy's jaw. He was a man of action, and it just increased her attraction to him. He was raw and real, and she could see him captured and imagine the blood on his face from the scar and feel the fight and drive and desire it took to battle his way out. As she parked and got out of her car, her heart hammered inside of her chest at the beauty of San Diego Harbor. She walked along the trail to the lighthouse that faced the beach as the waves crashed into rocks. It was so picturesque. She hated that she found herself crying again. She was here, finally. Why hadn't she done this before Scar? She could have hiked to Point Loma Lighthouse. It was only $10. Sure, she'd been getting settled, starting school, and working a new job, but she could have done this one night. It was like all her dreams had been on hold. She had been afraid of the next step, afraid she couldn't even keep the ground she'd won until she'd met Scar. He made her feel brave, more confident, more like him. Getting to the lighthouse, she flitted in and out of the small crowd. She went into the old home and climbed up the circular stairs, which didn't go all the way to the top. It disappointed her that the room was closed off. She headed back down and went into the tiny museum, which housed a replica of the lighthouse. It was beautiful. Its multifaceted light made her think of her own life, how she'd lost her light when Jason had broken her heart. Some of it had shut off. She'd kept going, and more light had come into her life. She left the museum feeling so much gratitude. She walked to the monument of one of the first sailors from Spain into San Diego Harbor, Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo. There stood a huge stone statue of the man. It made her smile to see his face, because she thought of how Scar had the same determination that this man had obviously had. The statue had captured that ferocity. Moving around it, she stared out into the bay and was overwhelmed with how a people had tamed all of the trees and bushes into the civilization it was now. California was majestic, even if her father said the taxes were horrible. There was so much beauty here. She roamed around back up to the lighthouse and followed the shoreline. She stopped and ate her lunch, surprised that it was already 2.30. Time sure could fly by. She drove back to her place about 30 minutes away and prepared some rice and beans and homemade tortillas out of flour. It made her happy to think of her and Scar eating this food at her little table. She would light a candle again. She heard the text message alert on her phone. Dinner plan still good for seven? She texted back. Yes. He texted back with an emoji thumbs up feeling almost at a loss for what she would do until he arrived, she went up to her room and decided to lie down for a few moments. A loud banging on the door startled her awake. She jumped up, grabbing her phone and finding that it was almost seven. 
Oh my gosh. She'd wanted to be ready and have nice hair and makeup. She didn't know how she'd slept for so long. Rushing down the stairs, she couldn't wait to see Scar and tell him, hey, and indulge in his lips. She flung the door back, a smile on her lips, but froze when she saw something she had stopped imagining and even wishing for. Jason. He stood there, wearing wranglers, cowboy boots, a belt buckle, and a five-gallon hat. He looked completely out of place. Hey, he said. What are you doing here? She grasped at the doorframe to steady herself, feeling like she was in an upside-down world. His lips were tight. I missed you. The words tugged at her heartstrings. For four weeks, she'd imagined him showing up just in this way. Shay, he took his hat off. I have to confess, I actually came here a couple of days ago and wimped out. Well, actually, I parked down the street and I walked around the island and on the boardwalk. I was trying to decide if I could really move here. Her heart thudded in her chest. I came back to your place and I was going to talk to you, but the next thing I knew, the lights were on and this guy was chasing me down and the cops were there. Taking a closer look at him, she could see he wasn't shaven and didn't look very clean. I'm so confused, she said. His lip twisted up. Then I thought I would just go home. So I did. I drove clear back to Salt Lake City. Then I turned back because I had to tell you I came. I had to tell you I love you. Her heart hammered as she thought of the bravery this took on Jason's part. To come and then leave and then come back. She knew him as her best friend far before they had promised each other their hearts. He took a step forward and gently put up a hand and pushed a stray hair out of her face, the way he'd done their whole lives. I love you, Shayla Ann Castle. Scar didn't know her middle name. They hadn't known each other that long. Why should he know it? She didn't know his. What was his? I've loved you for darn near forever. He kept his hand on her cheek. Shayla didn't know what to say. She had loved this boy her whole life, but she also knew that the feelings she had for Scar were real. Scary and unexpected, but the person she was with him, wait. While she was struggling to sort out her feelings, Jason had moved in to kiss her. Before she could utter a single protest, his lips touched hers. It was Jason, a boy she'd been kissing since she was 14, a boy who had been a part of every moment of her life. It felt so wrong. Scar's face swam to the surface of her thoughts and she jerked away. Shayla? His hand dropped from her face and reached for hers. She let him take her hand and closed her eyes to collect herself. Jason, the man she'd pledged her heart to in the middle of fireworks on the 4th of July in ninth grade. He was back. Did she want him back? I love you, Shay. I want to marry you, and we can live here if that's what you want. Chapter 27 Scar decided it was just easier to run the short distance from the hotel to her town home. So that's what he'd done when he was dropped off at the hotel by an Uber driver. He put his laptop in his room, then took off for Shay's house. A million thoughts ran through his mind. The meeting with the Kincaids, though untimely, had been amazing. They had committed to three more facilities, Denver, Seattle, and West Virginia. He had told them his plans for quitting the Titans and staying in San Diego. Boy, had they given him grief. But Anthony had said something that had touched him. You're a guy that plays with his whole heart. The vets are lucky to get you full time. Everything about today had been amazing. The best part was that he felt completely clear about what he wanted. This was his job, his foundation. He thought of the thousands of vets it would help and how they would help him. It was stupid, and he knew she would hate how much he'd spent for the ring, but he'd stopped at a jewelry shop and bought a one-carat princess cut. It was showy enough, but not too showy. He knew she wouldn't want too showy. It was all so unreal to him, 
that in less than two weeks he'd fallen so hard for this woman and that he was going to do it. He was going to ask her a question he'd never asked another woman, to spend the rest of her life with him. He meant it. He wanted every day with her. Sprinting for the last part, he turned off of the boardwalk and began crossing the street to her town home. He saw something he'd never expected. His heart turned to ice when he saw her kissing another man, holding his hand. After freezing for a split second, he couldn't stop himself. Hey, he yelled, wanting to grab the guy and rip him off of her. Chapter 28 The sound of Scar's voice broke the spell of Jason. Shayla's heart skipped a beat as she turned to see Scar coming toward them like he would slay the dragon and fight off the opposing forces if necessary. What the? Jason looked back and undoubtedly was a bit intimidated by the former Navy SEAL trudging toward them with the ferocity of a lion. What the? Scar stopped in her yard, broaching the deck. Scar? She said, touching her mouth where Jason had just kissed her. It would have been slightly amusing to her to see a scene like this in a romantic comedy movie. It would have been hilarious if it weren't her life. She moved away from Jason out onto the deck. This is Jason, she said, all her thoughts scrambling. This... She turned to Jason's scary-looking face, a face she'd seen him wear during wrestling season before a match. She wanted to veer him away from this opponent, because it would not go well for Jason. Scar way outmatched him. Scar's eyes flashed back and forth between them. You're the ex-boyfriend? Yeah, I am. Jason's jaw tightened and he glared at Scar. Who are you? Shayla fumbled to explain to Scar. He just showed up and... Her mouth felt dry. She felt like she was in front of judge and jury. She turned to Jason. Jason, would you please just... She didn't know what to do. There were still some things to sort out. Go in my house for a second. I need to talk to Scar. Jason flicked his glare to her. Shay, he demanded. Scar's glare was on him. Wait a second, he said, seeming to be processing his profile. This was the guy who ran the other night. He pointed an accusing finger at Jason. You were running. You were chasing me? Jason asked just as harshly, pointing back at Scar. Jerk? Why don't you come down here and tell me about it? Scar's voice bordered on thundering as he took a step forward. She put up both hands like she was blocking her brothers from a fight. Stop, she looked at Jason. Go inside, please. I want to talk to you about everything, but I need to talk to Scar first. Sucking in a ragged breath, she saw the most ferocious look on Jason's face. But he nodded, giving Scar a triumphant look. I will go into your house, he said like he was throwing it in Scar's face. He shut the door, and Shayla turned to Scar. Already his eyes were on hers. They were intense, fiery, every bit the seal she knew he was. She felt herself start to tremble. Scar, I didn't know he would show up here. Uh-huh, he said, the cynicism back in full force. So the boyfriend shows up and I find you in a lip lock? He sputtered. Really, Shay? It took her off guard that he called her Shay instead of using one of her nicknames. It felt impersonal, especially after everything that had been happening between them the past couple of days. Look, she said, her mind racing. Give me a chance to talk to Jason. I need to sort some things out. He scoffed. Right. That means my time is done. Thank you for your service. He said it like an officer would thank a soldier. Scar. She couldn't believe he was acting so rashly. I spent most of my day making dinner for you. I went up to Point Loma and missed you. All I wanted was for you to get back here, okay? Because... Did she have to say it? She couldn't stop herself. I've fallen in love with you. Now his face hardened even more, and his lips twitched back to the sardonic smile. So you fall in love with me, then kiss your boyfriend when he shows up. Every part of her wanted to deny that she'd kissed Jason, but she had. I did not kiss him, and it's not that simple. Isn't it? 
his face fell, looking ragged and vulnerable. Are you really in love with me or not? Is it him or me? The words were quiet and sharp. Her mind raced. She needed to talk to Jason. He had been the one for her whole life. This thing with Scar felt huge, life-changing, but she just needed a minute. Shaking his head at the silence, he shook his head and grunted. Awesome. I know how to pick him. She felt shell-shocked and out of sorts. You're comparing me to one of those big-boobed bimbos that have everything fake about them? She raised her voice. Really, Scar? He shook his head and then swallowed and looked away from her, squeezing his eyes closed. He tugged a box out of his pocket. Her heart hammered inside her chest. She didn't know what was happening. He couldn't be doing this. Closing the gap between them, he popped open the lid. I came here tonight to start something new with you. His eyes looked vulnerable and stormy and confused, exactly the way she felt. He frowned, holding the ring suspended in the box in the air. So I'm... He broke off, then sucked in a breath. I can't believe I'm doing this, but... He dropped to his knee. Her hands reflexively went to her mouth and tears were in her eyes. Will you marry me? He blinked. I don't know what's going on, but I do know that the only thing I care about is you and me. I'm throwing caution to the wind. I'm trusting and having faith. I love you, Kansas. I want it all with you. Our dreams, our hopes, a future. In San Diego, right now. I want to start. I want it right now with you. A thrill ran up her spine and she reached for the ring with shaky fingers. I want... Scar. Her hand flattened. As she thought of Jason, uncertainty dampened her mood. I... Tears fell down her cheeks. I... She thought of how she'd always seen herself married to Jason. Of how she'd only known Scar for such a short time. At her silence, his face drained of all emotion. He stood, pulling the ring back and pushing it into his pocket. He shook his head. Scar, it's not... I can't just... Would you give me a minute? Oh, she was not explaining this well at all. He scowled at her. Carpe diem, he said simply. I wasn't doing that until I met you, so thank you for that. He barked out a laugh. Man. Wanting to fix all this, but not knowing how, she just stood there. His eyes met hers. You fell in love with me, you know? It made her half laugh his cockiness, his arrogance, but it was true. I know. It was undeniable, so why deny it? She had fallen in love with him. For a second, he hesitated. Then he gently took her hand, and she marveled at his warmth, the way her body felt on fire when she was next to him, how it came to life. Hey, he said. She blinked and tears fell down her cheeks. This felt like the end. She hated it. She couldn't stop herself. Hey. His lips were on hers, and she felt his desire and his pain and all of her own feelings wrapped up in this kiss, in this time, in this moment. It ended before she wanted it to. Pulling back, he cocked an eyebrow at her. Thank you for giving me back San Diego. I needed that. He looked down. Goodbye. Then he left. Chapter 29 It had been two days. Two days since he'd left Shayla to go back to her boyfriend. Two days since he'd checked out of the Hotel del Coronado and just crashed at the gym. Two days of soul-searching. He'd thrown himself into the vet project and worked long nights. At night, he would go through the limited pictures he'd taken of her on his phone. He'd wanted to delete them, but he found himself unable to do it yet. Now he stood on his brother's cruise ship, staring off the bow. He'd made the paperwork official and would force his brother to sign if he had to. The boat was Stevens. It was funny to Scar that his brother had been right in the end. 
San Diego was home. He was staying, even though he was heartbroken. He'd been consumed with Shayla, with the days they'd spent together, with the knowledge her old boyfriend was in town, with the dreams he'd lost when she hadn't answered his question. He clutched the bar that ran across the bow of the ship. He thought he could bend the metal if he tried hard enough. Here you are. His brother's voice pierced his thoughts. Been looking for you. It was early, and the sun shone from behind his brother, making him squint. They looked alike, more than he cared to admit. But his brother didn't have the scar on his face. I'm here for paperwork you should have signed a long time ago. He held up a file with the paperwork to make the cruise ship officially Stevens. He wouldn't take no for an answer. His brother frowned at him. Scar, we need to talk. The business is yours. You've been running it, so just sign them. Scar held the folder out to him. Stephen glared at him and crossed his arms. Are you leaving? Actually, I'm staying. His brother's eyebrows shot up. Really? I've decided to work on the Sparring for Vets project full time. Stephen looked him up and down. What about the girl? Scar shrugged, but the feel of the ring in his pocket was still there. Nope, was all he said. His brother narrowed his eyes, seeming unconvinced. What happened? What was not going to happen was this conversation. Suffice it to say, it was a mistake. Scar shook his head, sinking back into the brooding thoughts. Stephen scoffed. Look, I don't know what happened. Clearly she did something that hurt you. You're one of the bravest, strongest people I know. So if you think it's time to walk away, I am not going to argue with you. Heck, you know I am the first person to want you to stop putting yourself in harm's way, but... She's here. His heart raced. What? Stephen rushed on. She says it was all a misunderstanding, and she looks as miserable as you, so I figured... Jolting out of his cynical calm, Scar's heart jumped. What? Guess she couldn't find you the past two days? His brother shook his head. Did you do one of your disappearing acts? I told her to wait while I checked the boat. He thought of how he'd blocked her number. He didn't need any Hail Mary pillow talk in the middle of the night if she felt bad. He was done. She'd made her decision. His brother's face softened. I liked this girl. She was here. She was here? She was here? He started for the dock, feeling like someone else was controlling his limbs. Wait. Stephen's hand was on his shoulder. Bro, remember, don't let pride get in the way. After letting that sink in, Stephen said, I admit, I have a lot of my own pride. It's a walker trait. Don't lose her because of your stupid pride. Scar was only focused on one thing. She's here. He couldn't believe it. Scar, his brother called out again. One last thing. He stopped, noticing his brother had finally called him Scar. Stephen was next to him, reaching out, pulling him into his arms. They hugged briefly. It felt good to make that connection again. His brother let him go and asked, You love her? A million emotions clashed within him. I don't know, I thought so, but it's complicated. His brother shook his head. Love is simple. You love each other, you forgive each other. That's how it works. Wash, rinse, repeat. Scar smiled and felt so grateful for his brother. I'm sorry, Stephen, for my pride. Both of them hugged again before Stephen pushed him. Go to her, you idiot. Scar took off, but slowed to a stop when he saw her coming down the dock. Her red hair was pulled back in the ponytail, and there were strands haphazardly hanging out, just like when he'd met her. When he saw her face, the distress and the relief on it perfectly reflected his feelings. With a cry, she rushed toward him. She held her hands out to her sides, tucking in her bottom lip as if saying, I couldn't stay away from you. Dang it if he didn't feel like this was the end of some sappy romance novel. 
Scar would read any number of cheesy romance stories if he got to end up with his dream girl. He ran to her, stopping a few feet shy and knowing tears of his own were running down his face. She shook her head, her eyes bloodshot. You never gave me enough time to answer you. A grin swept over his face. Hey. She closed the gap between them and smiled. Hey. They kissed. He was drinking from her and she from him, and it felt perfectly right. Like the world, his world and everything in it had been restored to perfect working order. She pulled back and got serious. I told Jason I realized he was a dream I'd had for a long time, but my dreams had outgrown him. His heart stopped. They have, he said with certainty. Carefully, she put her hand on his face, tracing his scar. You call me your dream girl, but you're my dream guy. I want you. I know it's crazy and I know it's fast, but it might be the only dream I know is real. For a second, he felt like he couldn't breathe. Hearing her say that meant everything to him. He reached out, taking her hand. He held it and got down on his knee again. He couldn't believe he was doing this, but if he knew anything, it was that this woman was the only woman he would do it for. Marry me. She put her hand to her mouth and tears were in her eyes. Marry me and let's start it all together. She laughed. I was hoping you'd ask again. Yes. He stood and slipped the ring onto her finger. Hey, she said, falling into him. Hey. He pressed his lips to hers, picking her up and spinning her around. Finally, he put her down and she gazed into his eyes. His heart felt like it would burst. I'm glad you messed up my eggs. She shoved him, but he kept her close. He kissed her lightly on the lips. And I want to keep living dream after dream with you the rest of our lives. She smiled back. Me too. Epilogue Scar stood on the beach at Coronado Island and waited for his bride. His brother leaned over, nudging his shoulder. Dude, don't worry, she'll probably come. Elbowing his brother, there was faint laughter next to Stephen. Anthony Kincaid leaned toward them, a wide grin on his face. Trash talking appears to be an inherited trait in your family. Scar grimaced at Anthony, then turned back to the big red carpet that went from the tent to the place they'd set up for the ceremony. Even though he'd never admit how much it meant to him that most of the Titans had joined him for this ceremony, and most of the guys at the Sparring for Vets program had come too, it did mean a lot. He felt immensely happy. He tugged at the monkey suit collar and couldn't wait for this to be over. To most people, he and Shayla had had what would be considered a short engagement. Only four months, but it felt like a lifetime to him. He couldn't wait for the wedding night. She came out of the tent on her father's arm. Quickly, his thoughts were scattered and all he could think about was her. She had done this whole wedding very traditionally starting with he and her going to Kansas and him asking for her hand in marriage from her father. It had been rough. Her parents were skeptical of him just because he wasn't from their town, but it multiplied by tens for the fact he was older and had played professional football. Good thing the military thing actually had been in his favor. They all seemed to admire that, so that had been a bonus. The music changed and he watched her be escorted down the aisle. Her fire-red hair flowed beautifully down her shoulders in soft curls. She had an off-the-shoulder wedding dress that hugged her hips, then flared out. She hadn't let him see it, and he wasn't disappointed. Man, his heart raced, and he wondered for the umpteenth time how he'd ever gotten this woman. Emotion struck the center of his chest, and he blinked. He could not cry right now. He thought about the life they would lead together. All the things he wanted to do with her, show her, give her, all her dreams. She and her father stopped in front of him. Her father paused, handing her hand to him. He took it nodding. Her father nodded back and then pulled Shayla in, kissing her on the cheek. I'm proud of you, baby.
Shayla had tears in her eyes, and Scar could see what it meant to her to have her father's approval, not just of this wedding, but of being here in San Diego. It made Scar so happy for her. His eyes met hers and everything around them faded away. The whole thing felt like it was just them. The preacher started into the vows and both of them just smiled at each other. He saw her, that day surfing at Oceanside for the first time, her fist in the air laughing and grinning from ear to ear. Every dream, every day, for a lifetime. That's what he wanted with this woman. Forever. At the end of the ceremony, the preacher told them they were married, and he turned to her grinning. He'd thought about this moment so many times, how he would say it, how she would respond. Hey, he said, his heart thudding inside his chest. She laughed, blinking back tears. Hey. Then they fell into each other's arms and kissed. The best kiss of their lives. This has been The Dream Groom, Texas Titan Romances. Written by Taylor Hart. Narrated by James Foey. Copyright 2018 by Taylor Hart. Production copyright by Taylor Hart.